You're gonna you're gonna let and him. And I don't leave? do OnlyFans. How, how nice of you to let him leave. It is nice. <laughs> yeah, it's very. You kind have a of choice, you. Oh, Andrew. Would go. you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, my name is Andrew Wilson. I'm the host of The Crucible. It's the fastest growing debate channel, in my knowledge, anywhere on the internet. Political satirist, um, political analyst, and I'm a blood sport debater. Um, I often come on whatever podcast to talk to various people, oftentimes challenging worldviews. So I appreciate uh, Brian having me on. I was scheduled for tonight. I'm here a little bit late because I had some family business to attend to. Welcome. Leading Welcome. women and such. What's up, Andrew? What's up? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> But yeah, I think like the big misconception with like people or women hating on other women for being housewives, it's like they think that because you're a housewife that you can't do anything and that you're stuck yeah, and, and they that you can't leave the house and that they belittle you so much. And yeah. I feel like I'm doing the most important work by creating the next generation and and I wanted to be a teacher for the same reason. Like you're helping mold the minds of the next generation and you really can't do anything more powerful than that yeah i agree you could by not having them mm. i mean I dis hard disagree. that's like idiocracy have you ever seen that movie yes okay <laughs> hard disagree. all the smart people stop having children and all the dumb people have more and more children i mean that's that's, that's literally what's happening been right the now. united states of america for the past 50 years. I mean, that is true. Statistically, the higher educated are having children later in life or less so at all. But um, I'm pretty educated. I consider myself a major nerd. I named my kid Sagan after Carl Sagan, who is a physicist. And I spend a lot of my free time literally just reading things about psychology and statistics and philosophy. And when they roast my dating profile later, you'll see that, you know, that intellect is the most important thing to me. So, yeah, I mean, I. And I think it's my duty to have more children. And mm -hmm. you, you don't think we're overpopulated? You don't think the world's overpopulated? Mm -hmm. Sure, I do. And there's a debate on that. Like you know, like Elon yeah, Musk why, thinks we're, why bring more children into the world, and then all the children that aren't being taken care of right now? What well, about all a, those? There's a lot of people who are choosing not to have children anymore, to the point that it makes economists worried. So. Mm -hmm. Hmm. More population um, means more money. We need for to the Nick. Could you pull up the view count really quick, guys? If you're watching. We have almost 10,000 people total watching. If you guys can, if you're watching on YouTube, drop us a like, please. Hit the like button. Uh, it helps out in the algorithm. And if you're watching over there on Twitch, Nick, if you can bring it to Twitch really quickly, guys, go to twitch.tv slash whatever. Drop us a follow. Ooh, that was a fuck up. All right. Um, drop us a follow, guys, and a prime sub if you have one. And I know we got a prime like two minutes ago, but... Um, Nick is telling me that it's bugged or something like we're the, the, I don't know so could somebody just like test out a prime sub really quick <laughs> and just see if like a prime sub is going to come through guys if you're new on Twitch we're not doing any ads on Twitch for the month of June so uh, guys drop us a follow and a prime sub if you have one I'm just testing out uh, doing this no ad thing over there on Twitch because the ad experience on Twitch is just kind of annoying at least compared to you there at Tart Tartellin Tart Ellen Tartel is it Tartellin Tart Elon I don't know King Pews thank you for the prime Ezra thank you for the prime Tasco thank you for the prime Kiwi Dutchman thank you for the prime Jake Swan thank you for the prime subs appreciate it guys Biscuits of Rage thank you for the prime dude good name man thank you thank you guys appreciate it thank you boys thank you you can hide that Nick all right drop a like guys uh, Andrew introduced himself yes all right my Caucasian <laughs> welcome Andrew welcome welcome so we're just getting through some of the pre-show notes for some of the guests we have uh, let's see still here on Alyssa you said that you disagree on the OnlyFans stuff but we already talked about the OnlyFans stuff so but you said most men don't care about OnlyFans and it doesn't hinder a woman from finding a partner hearing some of the arguments I made did you do you have a change of opinion or I mean I still have the same opinion just because like I said earlier like we're all literally the combination of billions of dependent variables that are based on our own unique nature and nurture we can't like broadly say anything but I so, agree with a lot of the things that you said so if I say if I can admit and this is actually my my belief that there is some degree of cope when it comes to, oh, these OnlyFans women, they're just gonna be forever 
alone, they're going to be lonely, they're going to have cats, they're never going to find a man. If I can admit that that's bullshit, are you able to admit that the, by virtue of woman having an OnlyFans or being a sex worker, that she's going to close the door on a lot of men? Sure, yeah, absolutely. A lot of men are not going to be okay with it. And I would even say, like, and then... The, Again, I'm a libertarian, so I don't give a fuck what other adults do, as long as it doesn't harm anyone. But I wouldn't want to be with a man who was supportive of it. Who was, you wouldn't want to be a man who's supportive of? Only fans, yeah. Okay. Well, we already had the conversation, so we won't linger too long on the uh, OS. You're a libertarian? I am. If I was going to categorize it, yes. Like, I have views from both sides, but for the most, like, for myself, I probably have more, like, based views. But I just feel like other people should, as long as it doesn't hurt anybody, do what the fuck you want. So you're a harm reductionist libertarian? Yes. Okay, gotcha. So, I, I mean, I do have to ask then, um, <clears throat> I'm going to try to frame this correctly for the TOS, but if a brother were to have carnal relations with their sister, what would your objection be to that as a libertarian? I feel like it is a harm because when it comes to reproductive issues... They can't reproduce, let's say. I mean, it's against the law. I think they should. That's not so. What? So are we? Are we having a philosophical are... thing? Philosophically, I don't give a fuck. That doesn't have anything to do with me. But within the parameters of our current society and law, then obviously they shouldn't do that. I and mean, I don't fucking condone it. But I mean, whatever. Why not? Why not condone it? If there's no harm, I'm not why, fuck what's my the foul? Brother. I'm not gonna fuck my brother. You yeah, know? I, yeah, I get it. But, so I'm saying for but me, you're I a would... harm reductionist, right? Yeah. So, so if there's no actual harm to reduce, you can't really say anything about right, it. But how can you how bad. can you how can you apply that broadly though? Because you can't say that every brother and sister <laughs> you can apply wouldn't it be broadly able to... right now because people get arrested for doing it because it's considered immoral. Right, but you said in the instance that they can't reproduce. So I can't you can't like broadly apply a standard because most of them would be able to reproduce. Well you can. What if they were same sex? I mean I, I don't give a fuck if a sister wants right, to Right, you don't care, right. So your harm reduction is that you just don't care about what other uh, people things do. Like, uh, like incest. You don't like, care about for probably them, things like uh, necrophilia. You probably don't care about any of those well, things could, because you there's could, no provable you could, harm. You could absolutely say that necrophilia causes harm. Oh, yeah? Tell me how. It causes harm to the family members of the body. What if they have no family members? Or will their body to do it? It it's causes the, harm. The body can't consent to it, so it's... A, no, it's, you can consent to it before you die. It causes harm because yeah, of the if, hey, potential if you, exposure listen, if you to write it. Wait, 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 wait. If you write up a will and you say, I don't care if somebody sleeps with my corpse, corpse then, like, whatever, whatever. Then you don't care, right? I don't care. Yeah, that's why libertarianism is stupid and leads to all sorts of immoral I mean, conclusions. Whatever you say. <laughs> for the most, it's hard to, like, really quantify my political views, but for the most part, I'm in favor of the government being less involved in whatever extent is possible obviously it needs to be involved for certain things but mm -hmm. like i don't give a fuck if gay people want yeah to you don't care it. yeah you don't care you don't care i know you don't Genuinely care about incest don't. you don't care about necrophilia you don't care about anything your harm reduction is values are as immoral and degenerate as you can possibly imagine that's why we're not a libertarian but nation not, we're not a libertarian I'm not the nation one doing all the immoral roads lead to degeneracy mm. That's can you why. can you argue though that uh, necrophilia is harmful because Stacy for Senate donated two hundred dollars in Nevada abortion has been legally protected up until twenty four months. Jesus, Christ. can we admit that at least by twenty four weeks you've had enough time to decide to have an abortion or not? What yeah. say you, ladies? Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Stacy. Appreciate it. What say you, ladies? I think it's crazy to do it that late. Twenty-four months. No, no, twenty-four, any, 24 months. He's twelve. Two years 24 old. Twenty-four weeks. Oh. I said twenty-four. Weeks. Well, it says twenty-four months. So wait. Uh, so it literally says. Oh. Maddie, can you read this? Oh, yeah. I said weeks. Women on the second nowadays part. refuse to accept responsibility for their actions. My wife let me and our two toddlers so that she can, quote unquote, have fun. Modern fe feminism mm -hmm. has ruined the best attributes of a good woman. I agree. Uh, newly single dad. Thank you for the chat, man. Sorry to hear about the breakup of your uh, family there. Uh, fortunate. Uh, she just uh, she wanted to have fun. Wanted to have fun. Perfect That's... justification and pretext for breaking up a marriage with two toddlers. Just a wonderful reason. Uh, sorry to hear that, man, though. Um, and uh, going back to your notes here. So you also disagree on... You don't think fat women are inherently less valuable because everyone's got a type 
and some people's type is fat bitches. One hundred percent. So my cousin will only date fat girls. He that's his type. That's what he likes. He he has curved beautiful okay. skinny women. So like you know, it, it could be your yeah. standard, and it would be my Do you standard. Think it's most men's standard. Sure, but what? there's definitely a good portion of them that. Well, like yeah, there's girls. enough out there, I suppose, if you yeah. have a big enough population. But uh, you you're saying when it comes to this value conversation. Uh, so I don't think we're talking about like their value as a human being. We're talking about their value in the dating and sexual marketplace. Yeah, is that, for sure. what, is and, that what you're talking yeah, about? There are some guys that place value on that. That is what they are sexually okay. attracted to specifically. But, but so le if we're talking about less valuable, more valuable, let's say there's a greater proportion of men who value women who are fit sure. or who are thin. And while there are some men who will value an obese woman, that tends to be less than men who value yeah. thin, fit women. So couldn't you just make the argument then that they are less valuable in the dating marketplace? I guess if we're doing statistics, yes. Like, you, well, but you, then it should, it should be clarified in that way. Like, to most men, they're going to be less valuable. But I'm, you know, there's always going to be. Well, I don't that's think anybody anything. ever really makes the argument that well, no I don't, man. I don't understand. Aren't you a laissez faire? Uh, libertarian <laughs> that that would be your assessment are you a laissez-faire libertarian give me a specific example and what do you believe in the economic model of laissez-faire economics so like anarcho-capitalism something no. like this no well what sort of uh, economic model do you ascribe to I support capitalism okay so capitalism so just take basic capitalism supply and demand right yes do you think that there's more men or less men mm -hmm. de demanding fat women I mean, like, we would have to take a poll, but my as assumption is that there would be less women into it, obviously. Okay. So but I'm just saying we can't, demand, make, we can't make broad so statements wait, If there's less everyone. demand for something in, inside of your economic theory, then it's less valuable, right? Yeah. In, in that Okay, context, so then they're yeah. less valuable. Glad we got that cleared up. <laughs> I mean, fair. Wow. When you, but that's not how it was, like, laid out when I was listening to some of them. It seemed like, like a fat woman is not valuable. But if you can say she's less valuable in the dating market, yeah, I think that's fair. Well, that's, I mean, if we're having a conversation about dating, that is the context. And I, me and Andrew tend to, we tend to make sort of these disclaimers when we're talking about value. We're not talking about your value as a human being, as a person, but we're, we are typically specific, specifically talking about in the dating marketplace. Yeah, but, um even within that, there's still going to be some guys. But, right, that's, but that's the only point that I was making. I don't think we disagree there. Andrew, okay, I'm yeah. sure you'd agree that we don't disagree that there will be men who find obese women attractive. Yeah, okay. right. We're just talking about some basic supply and demand. So just okay, like yeah. any marketplace, the dating marketplace would be a marketplace, right? Just It's no different than an electronics marketplace, a tobacco marketplace, whatever it is. The higher the demand for something, right? Yeah, Usually absolutely. it's more valuable because more people demand it. So this would be the same thing when you're talking about types of women, this type of thing. Yeah, you would fair. agree to that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, nothing I'm not. Else. I'm not ruling. I don't think Listen, I'm not ruled by cognitive then. dissonance. I'm okay with like my view changing. So if you can offer me something that deepens my perspective, I'm absolutely like, I'm not like, no, I'm just going to argue do this you, for the sake of it. Do Sorry. you object to value calls and value judgments when it comes to dating? What do you mean? Like, in regard well, uh, I mean, do you object to a guy who would not want to date a woman who's overweight, for example? No, I think you can have whatever standard you okay. want. And I actually agree with the standard about like m men yeah, or I, women. Your not friend's fucking dying in the bathroom. Not what? <laughs> I'm kidding. She's like dying. Never mind. Go ahead. You no, know, I think it's like one thing that I see argued on here a lot is that they like you guys will say it's fair for a guy not to want a woman that has a high body count and i haven't really seen any good argument against that and i actually agree oh, with really? you guys. let me help you with that I'm no i, that I agree up. that let's it's fine to not want to be with someone who has a high body count for haven't. multiple reasons wait but wait let's go back to supply and demand let's go back to supply and demand do you think that men would prefer just on average to have a woman with a low body count or a high body count i don't think that men care as much as it's no made so out let's to. say for a second that we took you and made a perfect clone of you 
like let's say i don't know you had a twin sister or something like this but however it was that your thought waves and brain patterns work were mapped completely onto another woman which is an exact doppelganger of you okay and a man could choose he fell in love with you and the clone of you had slept with no people and you had slept with a hundred people and it's the same person which one do you think the man would choose i think a large portion would want the girl who knows what the fuck she's doing that part hold on you yeah. think erroneous erroneous <laughs> so do you think that they would prefer the promiscuous you yes this is a topic that's actually debated uh, well online then what you should you do is comments. just look at the camera then and say that you're gonna fuck a ton of dudes because you think it's gonna raise your value to men well i don't give a fuck what anybody views my value as i don't have a high body count and i don't want to yeah, regulate why would it matter my fucking oxytocin receptors experience. by sleeping with a bunch of people aimlessly yeah, wait but wouldn't people love you more if you did wouldn't some men love some you guys more? do prefer women who know what they're doing they don't want to have to train somebody some what? men some oh men are God. possessive and like want someone to themselves and I think that's also fair. And one well, argument that women have against that is like, oh, men only don't want a girl with a high body count because they're insecure. Even if that is the case, like, who cares? Like, they're allowed to well, feel Well, I don't know. It seems, it seems to me that the value of virgins, since there's so few of them in society, has skyrocketed in the dating marketplace and that men are competing over them a lot more than they're competing over women are there, who are highly promiscuous. Is this, has this are been competing? studied? Is this like, are and there actually, statistics yes, on this? If a guy's a virgin, to me, it's on a turn off. Right? On the preferences like, of body that's count. That's disgusting if well, a guy's okay, a virgin. Let me answer no, no, a question. No, no, on men can we switch this virgins? around? Can I, can I, can I, can I, can I, yeah, I, I, we can, but just let us finish our <laughs> argument. We're almost, we're almost done. So, uh, yeah, there has been study for preferences for higher low body count. And men tend to prefer lower body count. Yeah. Okay. That's true. And they do tend to compete a lot more over over women who are virgins they tend to compete a lot more for them so they, they it seems that based on supply and demand there's a lot fewer virgins so the supply of them is down the demand for them is up okay right? but so, so what they can de-virgin them that's no, why what percentage like, I want a virgin so i can take her virginity what percentage of women and that are conventionally anymore, attractive so are right? going to remain virgins <laughs> up until the point of marriage very few very few right yeah. so then that brings in the predicament of reality versus idealism, which is ideally very attractive women. Their round meatball donated $200. Dating marketplace is obviously different than a market for goods. If you want a more complete partner, some level of exploration is necessary. Which is Vigin exactly is bad, but point. so is promiscuity. Virgin is bad. Totally agree. I don't think disagree. I don't Disavow. think virgin. Disavow. Is no, every critical. every single marketplace. She she's a psychologist. She should know this, right? Every single marketplace <laughs> in economics also runs off of psychology. It also runs off of right, consumer yeah. trust. It runs off of how people feel about the product. Successful marketing campaigns target heartstrings has nothing to do with the product at all. So no, Wait, all so what marketplaces are, these studies are essentially and like how the same. recently were they done? What's that? How recent are these studies? I, I have them. Nick, can you get those pulled up, please? I, these, th there's like multiple studies, both of them, please. What's the background on the studies? Were they just random men that they picked up well, off the to, street? I mean, well, I mean we to be fair, we could like pick apart any study. Uh, no, many of these have had a meta-analysis. There Nick, have been, have been a meta-analysis done on these studies. I mean, that's did men, did they up. do it for women too? Like, did they ask women what scroll they thought up, about men up, that were virgins? <laughs> Okay, but this is I not what we're talking about. Uh, well, no, yes. Hold actually, on. we do have some studies on hold that, too. It seems so, to be less important to women than it did to on. men. Nick, a little less zoomed in, please. Okay, scroll down just a bit. So there was a study in 2023 re-examining the link. Hold on. Re-examining the link between premarital sex and divorce. Scroll down. Uh, there was one in this other one. Uh, sowing wild oats, valuable experience, or field full of weeds, personal relationships, and some, I don't know. Uh, there's another one from 2018. Fewer sex partners means a happier marriage. There's 2018 from Wolfing, Wolfinger, Promiscuous America, smart, secular, and somewhat less happy. Yeah. Uh, but this, there's uh, there's 1974 this, premarital sexual behavior. But that's not the topic. Adjustment. The topic is do men? Where are the studies that specifically say that men, men prefer care. women with less body counts as Show opposed to not? Show the next tab, Nick. The next the next one. And I don't discredit that you could be right. I'm, I just haven't seen. There's any a whole data bunch of. Because uh, those well, are I not good examples of that. that. Promiscuity and infidelity. I could just say I'm a virgin. Have well, they given correlation? 2017. 
Okay, so, so listen, if I'm not a I, can, I, can, <laughs> I can agree with all of this, by the way. I am highly aware of the neuroscience behind why having a bunch of sex partners is not good for you. It essentially down regulates your fucking oxy oxytocin receptors and for men dopamine re well both women and men but more so with men the vasopressin and the dopamine so it's not good if you want someone who can actually emotionally connect you're going to find that person less likely because what happens it's is about you, pair bonding you create yeah you create like a neural imprint and then why earlier did you just say that most men would prefer women with no, high no, no, body I'm not saying most. I'm just saying I don't know that it's bond. the case that men care. Like I've heard and I've seen on online debates, a lot of men say they would prefer to be with someone who knows what they're doing, who has a little more experience. I think those I, men are probably I personally, just trying to sleep with I you personally <laughs> think it's having a lot of a high body count is not ideal, like for me, because it's the same why not? issue in men. Because I, I want someone with properly functioning dopamine receptors who's not going to be more prone to risky behavior and that can actually pair bonds and be monogamous because that's what I would want out of a partner also. So why could, would you make the assumption promiscuity that can also the other direction? There's promiscuity can also reflect like mental health issues, not to stigmatize them, but like you have right. higher promiscuity so with it's like proxy BPD for and mental NPD. health issues. That's a re that's another justification for a man not wanting to date somebody. Right. I'm not saying that those reasonings don't exist because I agree. But you're trying to justify, no, well, no, she has a high body count because of mental health, mental no, 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 illness. No, 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 no. I think it's fair for someone not to want to be with someone with a high body count because it could reflect mental health issues because promiscuity, high promiscuity is associated with things like BPD. And we have millions of years of evolutionary biology coded into our DNA geared towards self-preservation. So it's fair to not want to be with someone who has a high body count. You know, count. sex isn't this you're like... More, you're more that's at interesting risk that for you bring STDs. up evolution. You're, how, you're, would you, how would you pre-paternity uh, test make a determination on if a child was yours from a man's perspective? How, how would you do that? How would what? Pre-paternity tests, which are recent, from an evolutionary standpoint, how would you as a man be able to make a determination that a child a woman had was yours? Looks. What do you, what do you, um, oh, okay, so, how, I mean, I guess you How would it. you determine that? You would just look at them and see if they look like you, I suppose. Well, if they were more chaste, right, they had less promiscuity, then this is a woman who you could count on likely yeah. to actually be bearing your child, right? Right. So we, listen. So wouldn't that be wired agree. in as a preference then evolutionarily? It could be, but I think the dating market is vastly different because of second wave feminism leading to hookup Wait, culture. Wait, just to be shit. clear, so when so was I'm, hold on, when was second wave feminism? I don't know the fucking dates. When what within the past century? Yes. Do you think that? Do you think that the evolutionary basis that Andrew's arguing about has been undone in the course of? Less than a hundred years, definitely. To some extent, yes, no, absolutely. You don't. That's not how. Okay, make a poll then. That's not how evolution. <laughs> make a poll. We'll make a poll. Let's ask the what? guests. No, listen. I agree with you guys on this. I'm just saying you can't say that all women, all men, or even the oh majority my, of men not. prefer. A yes, we're not. Well, we're not putting well, anything in a model. You are saying the majority yes, of men prefer. Yes, I would it. say the majority of men. Yeah. And you could be right, but how? Like, where are you drawing this conclusion? Let me ask you a question. If you look up into the sky. Mm -hmm. And I say that the sky is blue. Do I need a study to prove that the sky what is blue? What in the false equivalence is that shit? <laughs> it's God. So you want a study that sh that indicates that no, men just, have been surveyed? Yeah. How about this? If you're gonna, if I ask my chat, well, the burden of proof chat, is on you. So if you're making these points, then yes, you should show a study, not in regards to divorce or any other other shit that you just picked up, pulled up. But if you're gonna say men prefer women who don't know what the fuck they're doing, I'm just saying like you can look online and see men talk do you about think this all you want. Uh, do you, so let's let's dive into this real quick then. Let's find out and we'll test your logic and see if that's true. You're requesting empirical data as the burden of evidence for whether or not uh, this can be demonstrated to you, which I think is fair. But what if we could logically demonstrate it for you? That's also another way in which a thing can be demonstrated to a person that does not require empiricism, correct? It depends on the topic. You can't logic. You, I don't think you can apply that to any argument stance. Well, if you're going to speak on behalf of other men, it needs to be studied. Hang on. Their empiricism itself is just a, a foundational uh, ethos of I believe X. So, like, you would have to justify why we should even use empiricism. But that aside, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, hang on. You would, but I'm just going to grant that maybe we could, as long as you'll grant that I could also logically demonstrate something to you as well. Because you'd have to logically demonstrate why we should use empirical data. 
Uh, I'm just going to grant that we should. But if I can logically demonstrate for you, for instance, that most of the world is religious, most of the world is religious, not some. And most of the religions of the world have some kind of virtue ethic when it comes to sex. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Well, then there must be some preference for promiscuity Does that mean they uphold being it, bad though? from Does the that position of both it? men and women. I mean, you could also argue that someone who is promiscuous is probably more fertile. Like they're, I mean, you could really right. dive into that in, on all kinds of levels. That does not contend with my argument that I just gave you at okay, all. Okay, but so that would most be to of the world that is religious, re right, but that and would most be religions stop. Let me let me make the argument again, okay. and then steel man the argument before you respond to it. Okay. The argument is, if most of the world is religious, most religions have a sexual ethic which is against promiscuity, which they do. Uh, then it seems that people must have some preference against sexual promiscuity. That would be a sound conclusion. I, Can you steel man the argument first and then give me an argument counter to it? I think what you're saying is valid, but I think that not everyone who's religious upholds religious values by far. By far. There we are not outliers. Have, that's, we would, that's a non sequitur. What's the argument? The argument is that until there's actual data saying what men prefer then all of this is just hypothetical bullshit it can't be hypothetical we have empirical data on religion we when was religion empirically formed? that most of the world is religious right. we when know was religion that empirically formed? when was religion formed you have to take into context society at the time that it was formed why do we, we don't have to live do that in, we don't, when we're because talking we don't live about in that modernity. climate anymore we don't live Wait, in that I climate would, anymore that's no 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 that's literally that's a genetic fallacy what are you talking about that's a fallacious form of argumentation. People who Why created would we the religion, have to go to when a religion was formed to make a determination that right this second, most of society is religious. Mo in most societies of the world have some kind of religion they adhere to with sexual ethics which are against promiscuity. Therefore, there must be some preference against promiscuity, unless you can give me a counter argument to that. I'm not saying that there's not a preference. I'm saying, and, and most of the people that would be in favor of women who are more experienced are not gonna be religious to begin with. So there, you're adding all these argument. variables. It's not a counter They're argument. They're kind of cucks, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I don't That's disagree. not a counter yes. argument. Like what's the counter argument to it? Some people might not be religious. I, I know, I'm granting that. That's right, but in, you're right? trying to We're add in a bunch most, of variables of that may not be applicable in today's society. I don't know very many people who have said things along the lines of I prefer a woman who's more experienced that are religious. Most of the people in the world do not live in Western societies. Most do not. Okay, they so are we having a like most, world yeah, debate so are or we're an talking American about, culture We're talking debate. about Muslims and we're talking about Jews and we're talking about okay. Christians and we're talking about all sorts of different religions which exist. There's almost in all of them an ethic against sexual promiscuity. Almost if all of them. If we're talking about there the whole world, then yeah, that's absolutely then fair. There must be some preference against promiscuity, right? Yeah, if we're, if we're talking worldwide, yeah, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. So you... Well, I mean, you don't think that human beings evolved... You don't think that men... The ontological nature of what is a man in a Muslim nation is different than the ontological nature of a man here, right? I mean, they're the same. They're both men. I think so. If, why would they have a preference there? There's okay. Distinct from a preference here, for all of us who are religious seem to have this preference, and most people are religious. There's multiple factors that go into a person's decision making, and religion is not the only thing. There are social aspects, generational aspects, and the, are you arguing that what things are like in Egypt right now are similar to America? Are you saying the culture? No, are there's the going to be a cultural. Of course, there's going to be okay, cultural exactly. distinctions so then, between them, but so the religions the, can be uniform even absent culture. So, for instance, Muslim religion in Africa could be exactly the same religion which is followed in the middle of Qatar. Whatever. Right. Sure. The, the point is, is, though, is, yeah, we can even take into account these cultural considerations. But if most of the world is religious and I've, and you agree that it is and we can empirically demonstrate that you empirically know that that's true, uh, then I don't understand how I haven't given you a good logical demonstration. Because we also that know that seems religion that is most people are the, against promiscuity. There are less and less religious people as time goes on, like you we only can't, in the we West. Can't pretend, okay. So I live in the West. So that's what I'm debating. Yeah, but I already so gave you, I already gave you the, if we're considering the whole world, then absolutely that's fair. But yeah. if we're talking about American culture, I just don't think it's fair to say that most men want a woman who's a virgin or inexperienced. Most people in the United States identify with a religion. Most. Okay. Well, you would, I mean, if yeah, you were, you're talking you about uh, somewhere that, between, then... somewhere between 19 and 30% who self-ID as agnostic or atheist. And even those people will often identify as being culturally Christian. So the thing is, is that if that's true even here, 
the the mo most the majority of people even here and the immigrants which come into the country come in usually with a religious background south america especially they're catholic uh if they're coming in from the east they're muslim um you know or they're uh, there's many other religions okay kind of there's even christian sects that allow polygamy and then there's all there's the different few. sects of paganism that don't there's give a There's very few, about and the West like does that. not allow polygamy. It's 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 not only illegal; it's considered okay. immoral. Okay. And the so Christian Christians gonna... Christian polygamists are not allowed to be polygamists. Okay, maybe not legally, but you want to act no, like no, not Mormons even don't not even spiritually. Yeah. Is it legal in Nevada? No. It's not legal to be a polygamist in Nevada. Okay. Wait. So there's let me, other let me ask religions. You a that let me play ask you a question though. here. Do you think that? Like, do you think that men are thinking, mm, I like her, but I would like her more had she fucked more men before me? No, I don't think it's a matter of that. I just think sometimes guys want a woman who's more experienced, and unfortunately, no. they're not going to find that in a virgin. Okay, that I would mean argue the men, fuck, like, the men that want, first off, let's be real here. Most pussy is good pussy. It's really not hard, all that hard. Sex isn't this complicated procedure especially as a woman for women to be good in bed it really doesn't take much so this idea that the more sexual partners you've had that also actually on that note wouldn't you argue that the woman who's had one sexual partner but she's had sex with that partner a thousand times is going to be more sexually experienced than the woman who slept with a hundred men is. one time each there's Who's so many there's so many variables to this. How experimental is that one couple? If they're doing the same shit every time, then they're not really she's not getting a lot of experience. Okay, you know, the the one of the one of the kind of cheap shots um, that's often used by pure empiricists is this idea of a multifaceted variables making the thing too so complex that we can't actually make any deductions from it uh, or inductions from it. Uh, but the truth is, is that correlates, there's usually primary correlates and then there's kind of non-primary you know, non correlates. We still can look at primary correlates here when we're looking at data, Yeah. right? You, I mean, right. you would agree that that's true. So yes. just, kind of, just kind of waving it off and saying, hey, you know, there's, there's tons and tons of variables. Nobody's going to dispute that there's, there's tons of variables, but there's still going to be prime correlates that we can look at. Okay. And that's what Brian's kind of pointing to is these prime correlates. Yeah, I think that's fair. I'm not. I'm not saying that it's not uh, a lot of men who would prefer to be with a virgin or someone who has a lower body count. I'm just saying, you can't put this broad generalization on everyone because even on social media, you can read through hundreds of comments of men saying the opposite. So I'm just saying objectively until there's like We're not a recent saying that study men, that these men don't exist. But okay. generally speaking, if we're having a converse, we could talk about the dating habits of dwarfs. Is. I guess it would depend I'd be happy on the that we, age look, you want to talk about the to. specific dating habits of dwarves who live in Ecuador. We can talk about it if you want. But if we're speaking about just generalities here, we can arrive at some generalities. Gen generally speaking, men prefer sexual purity in women. I mean, the men in the study. I what just, study? Like, I'm just telling does, you, like, I, among I, our I, age group, I need I don't think not that's even the case. look at a study to make this determination. Everyone's going to have Brian, their own anecdotal experience. Yes, of and course, I'm, there are. And I'm there telling men, you, fine. in our age group, yeah, there's a lot. Of, age group, sure, there's, there's a, a bunch large of portion of men who prefer women who are more experienced. So, no, the, so it's not okay, as relevant to them. Here, let's talk about something more simple then. Do you think it's a majority of men that prefer women with a lot of sexual experience? I mean, I don't know. That's no. the whole point, is that I don't you know. You don't know. Okay, so I, then, I, I wouldn't feel confident in saying yes. So, just to be clear, if a high body count is proxy for promiscuity, do you think a man would prefer to date a woman who hasn't had sex in a year? Or, let's say, date and sleep with? He'd prefer to sleep with a woman who hasn't had sex in a year, or a woman who fucked a guy an hour ago? Well, Which, yeah, for sure. Okay, what about a day ago? I mean, some men don't give a shit, but for the most part, yeah, I think you don't think men you have a, that. a disgust response I think to a woman who's recently fucked another guy. This is what I can tell you from having <laughs> been a dancer when I was younger. Hold on, let me ask you a question. Didn't earlier you said that you wouldn't date a bi guy? Yes. Why? Why? Well, I for multiple reasons. Because he recently had sex with another man, right? Well, that was that was y'all's topic, but yes. Okay. 
Yeah, no, and again, so, my value but, system but why, is very but, similar. But do you, do you have like a kind of a, what was your response to your, your refusal to, to dating a bisexual man? I want a Was man it a disgust interest... response? There's not a disgust. No, didn't you say like I want someone who's attracted who, to me and one, what I am. Who was the one who said it would be gross because he just maybe it was you. I it wasn't me. It was you. <laughs> okay, me. all right. Uh, but you. But I understand that me. perspective. Yeah. Right. So, no, so that like, I absolutely feeling... validate that. I'm just telling you, like from my experience, having done OnlyFans when I was younger, being a dancer when I was younger. Most men don't care as much as y'all would like to pretend. No, they not do. most men. I've never had a where's man. Your, ask. Where's your Where's your study never. for that? I said it was anecdotal experience. Oh, as well then I'm just going to anecdotally sure. dismiss it. And as I was trying to get at the point earlier, is that men probably have a preference for attractive women that happen to not be virgins. Now, what? I was. Because I was She's saying it alluding probably, to the fact that a lot of attractive women are not going to be virgin. Yeah. Valdev donated two hundred dollars. And so, pro Christian atheist here, I can promise you, men will gladly bang a whore. Very, very few men will wed a whore. This show exists to tell women how men think. Listen to what the like, men are saying. You think it's a W? By the way, good to see you back in the chat, Valdev. Like, do you think that's a W for you as a woman? Well, guys still want to fuck me. No, no, no. Where's the ring? Where's the commitment? No, Where's no, no. the title? Okay. I mean, I've been married for 10 years and I was uh, okay. a huge think, whore back yes. in the day. So, sure. if we're talking so there's about outliers. Me specifically, yes. there are outliers. I've already said that I don't do OnlyFans. Men I marry porn stars. want to be with someone who is monogamous. <laughs> I'm not attracted to people stars. with high body counts. I don't have a high here. body count. So if I, if I me, sat here and I denied that women are attracted to tall men, would you look at me like I'm an idiot? No. And I don't. Okay. You no think one is, women don't no one have is a general. You don't. That. You don't think. Hold on. Your Be point. good faith here. Re you really think that women, generally speaking, don't have a preference for tall men? Yes, one hundred percent. Everyone has a preference. Yeah. In the, all the no, so I, they I agree. Do. Different. Yeah, yeah. God. I just think that. What's you, the next topic? I think that you guys <laughs> hope that men yeah, right. view things What's the way the you do, and I would topic? hope that there was more men that view it that Thank way. You. But next. in reality, I just don't think yes. that's the case. I don't yeah, think but I mean, in, in, but in reality, we do think it's the case. So uh, this is the the, the problem when you be, at one I side just, of your mouth bank. I think hang on, there's a problem a with, at see. one side of the mouth you bank on empiricism, and then on the other side of your mouth to make your arguments you bank on anecdotal I, evidence. I just want to know how uh, much I sex see, both of you guys get. I don't see on any a, reason. Uh, why I want to know how much sex you guys both have had in the last. I'm in the middle of talking. Calm down. So I don't I don't know why it is that we should actually believe your arguments if they're just anecdotal. You don't I don't know how many guys have you fucked the past two months? That's a good question. What's your argument? I don't know. I, don't know. I just Andrew, feel like men are angry that uh, don't Andrew, get I don't know if you. Don't I don't know if you heard what like, she said, but she was like, I wonder how many, how much sex you guys have. So how many guys have you fucked the past month? I asked you first. How many? When's the last time you had sex? Answer the question. No, I asked you a question first. I've already told you I don't discuss that sort of stuff. Well, then I don't discuss it either. Okay. All right. Well. So on with. It's fair. Mm -hmm. It's fair. I'll discuss it. I'll answer if you answer. You ready? Okay. Go ahead. Let's hear it. Okay. Wait, she ha no, she hasn't agreed. I, Hold on, she hasn't agreed. Oh, you agreed. haven't agreed? Yeah, we got to make sure we can. Do you, if I'll answer Andrew you discloses, answer. will you disclose? Yes, that's fair. Okay, great. I've had sex with one woman this last year. How many of you have? I said, sex how with? much sex? How much sex have you had? I have sex every day. Ooh, as mm -hmm. it should be. Well, then good. Yeah, how about you? Now answer, please. Every day. I've had sex with one person. And uh, I've had, I don't know, probably six or seven times. In the <laughs> last two sex. months? Was the that last... the question? Mm. Yeah. I'm happy. What about you, Brian? Oh, wait, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't disclose that. I don't even understand the argument. The argument's basically like, <laughs> so like if, you're a man, if you're a man and you have an opinion on this, uh, your opinion's only valid if you've had sexual intercourse. Anyway, all I'm saying is, I, I, I think it probably is the case that maybe there's a little bit more, but I think a study should be done for me to feel confident agreeing to that, just because I've seen, again, and I admit it, it's anecdotal evidence of men portraying one thing and then in reality not mm. giving a fuck. Yeah. I've never had an OnlyFans friend that could not find men. I've never, and, and, and it really be like the most red-pilled dude, like the sissy sub is the most red-pilled person that I know. 
and a lot of the subbers on your on OnlyFans are people's like coach dads or like the ones that are like I'm against OnlyFans. So I just have a hard time accepting without evidence that most men in today's society prefer virgins. But I understand the reasoning for preferring virgins or people that don't have a high body count. I don't dispute that in, in any okay, way. Okay, so look, here's the situation, right? Will a woman who's promiscuous, will a woman who's engaged in sex work be able to find a boyfriend? Yes. Can they find a husband? Yes. But we're having a conversation of what men prefer. So yeah. just because and I don't men they, might prefer I don't one think they thing care. or another, I think they just want to be the hot chick. Yeah. I think most men want to get laid. The and they don't really I'll care. give you. That's look, all. they want to get fucked. I yeah. would prefer. Exactly. Me personally, me personally, if it's between like a girl who's a seven, who's a virgin, and a, I'm talking. Just to be clear, so, talking about her physical appearance here. Jesus right, yeah. Christ, somebody's yeah. gonna clip that shit. <laughs> uh, and then a woman who's like a ten, who slept with a hundred men. I'm, I'd much prefer to date and have a relationship with the girl who's a seven. I feel like the sevens are And I think fucking... that's totally fair. I'm not arguing that at all. Like the, Good for I you. I just think most men don't give like a shit. The tens as much are as definitely... The ten, no, nowadays, the tens are definitely having like a lot of sex. It's yeah, like an, I think and, most men are going to go for but, the tens. And then dating them out. But for sevens and mm -hmm. above... And they're I, still having and I a lot hope of I'm sex. Wrong, by the way, like they're still I having a lot of promiscuous sex. I love to believe sex. that men ha really uphold the values that. Hold on, you're. But just to be clear, like the men you probably are around, you were a stripper. You did OnlyFans. No, no, no. I'm around church men that literally procure. It's not. The What's your denomination? I'm a non-denominational Christian. Okay. Should I pick a denomination? Andrews finds I guess that you funny. could say I'm a Protestant because I'm not a Catholic. Okay. I see how they push for that. You could you, you could All classify right. me as that. Well, we can go in circles on this the whole time. Did you not find the paternity uncertainty argument that Andrew made compelling? Sure. So there's an evolutionary basis. So for example, 100%. so for example, if a woman has ten husbands and she's sleeping with all ten of them prior to DNA testing, who's the father? You don't know. But if a man has ten wives, you know who the father is in all instances and you know who the mother is in all instances yeah. so for this reason I don't discredit that. right this reason for it's an evolutionary reason paternity uncertainty it's one of the biggest L's you can take as a guy to raise a child like to to think that the child's yours where there's paternity fraud to think that the child is yours but it actually isn't you got cheated on you got cucked major L for a guy right but like think about it you just had destiny on here recently that is a great uh, reflection of men these days. I don't think most men give a fuck. Like most men don't even want to have kids. Well, he's most, on men, right. you're thinking, yeah. you're, you're, wait, most men you are cool with a, polygamous what? relationships. Like most men don't have the standard where they're like, he's not religious. That's you think no, no, that no, I know most he's not. men. You think that most went men want to let their wife get fucked by other men? I think a lot of okay, no. maybe not their wife, but I think a lot of men just really don't give a fuck about this anymore. Then why'd you say destiny was a good reflection just, of yeah, the general population? A, a, I mean, there are, a lot of men oh, are that my. way now. There's not a lot of men. Demonstrate it for me. Make a poll. How many people are polygamous? Like, <laughs> not in how this can I demonstrate chat. it for you when I'm not like? No, that's not my question. How many men stats? do you think let other men on purpose bang their chick? I think. There's a lot of people in open relationships these days. Give us a percentage. Days. Let's see how many yeah, videos are on you. That's not a fair videos. question because it hasn't. If you can show me a fucking poll, the United I'll tell you what States it's has. Why do I have to make your point? Do you think for that non-monogamy is on the rise? And do you think that religiousness is going down because both of those things are true mm -hmm. in our country? Yeah, but this this is not you demonstrating for us that you think that guys like Destiny are a reflection of the general public of men. That's it, an insane claim I think it, that I would really like to see you justify some. I'm somehow. telling you, non-monogamy is on the rise in America. Mm -hmm. Religiousness is on the downfall. Getting married mm -hmm. Those is... Marriage is on the downfall. Divorce mm -hmm. is at a crazy rate. Child I think birth. that really reflects that people don't really uphold these morals that were around fucking, you know, even 20 years ago. But look at what's that climate led change. Though. That's not, I know, that's I, I 1, not agree in now. any way, listen, that is in no way, shape or form. I'm going to grant all of those as being true because they, for the most part, all are true. Okay. That still has nothing to do with the claim that most men in the general I, public are letting other men on purpose I'm bang their chicks. That. That's, a, that's most, an outrageous I'm, claim. I don't think, I think for the most part, 
when you consider that religiousness is not as popular, non-monogamy is becoming popular, people don't care as much what the fucking body count is. Am I saying that they shouldn't? I think you should for multiple reasons. Like someone with a high body count reflects danger on multiple levels physically. There is no disease, reason for us to believe pregnancy. that because you're non-religious, that because you're non-religious, you're going to let other men ply your ply your chick. No, There's but no your reason argument, for us to believe that. Your argument was that religious people care about purity, and I don't Whoa. think that's the case either. Typically, yeah, but I think that most men. Why why do you get married even as a secularist? Do you think that it's so that you can share your chick? No, but not everybody supports no, marriage. So how does that right. factor into the debate? Well, most secularists are still in getting fact, you're married. Kind of, no, you're kind of proving my point. Less people are getting married. So if that's yeah, but, not a but good But secularists are still getting married. Okay. So the thing so is, are, is that so secularists are still getting married. Religious people are still getting married. want virgins or people like... I'm not... I just want to see data that's backing the point because what I'm You're saying... You're making the point. That burden's on you, not on us. No, actually, y'all made the point. No, that you make the point that the general public is, is like destiny. It's a good reflection okay, so now you're, of you're, the general you're public. On a side tangent. The general point is that <laughs> well, you Well, you can just most, retract the claim and say you were wrong. You say that most men prefer a woman that has a lower body count. I'm saying show me any data that re reflects that this generation of men give a shit because I don't think they do. I think if it's just to assume, sleep with them, they don't care. Let us assume that yeah. they don't. Okay. Let so us assume. Exactly. Let that's us assume. not what I think they're talking about. I think they're talking about for long-term commitment. But, like, look, she's in a long-term committed relationship. I have multiple friends that are OnlyFans girls, porn stars, dancers, who are all in committed monogamous relationships. So these men obviously don't give a fuck. That but, they're... She, but she's not in a committed monogamous relationship, right? Unless Mostly, I, yeah. I mean, they live together. It's very they, much... It's, it's a mostly, very serious relationship. Yeah, and it is a very serious relationship. It's the most serious one I've ever had. Oh, I, I wasn't doubting the series. I meant about the monogamy, We're though. It's just a little different, you know? It's a little different than what you might think is, like, normal. Well, that just kind of reiterates the point. Like, you can be in a serious relationship and not even expect monogamy, and that's becoming culturally normal. And I don't it's think... It's not it, culturally normal. I, I'm not... You don't think it's culturally normal among our generation? No. It's becoming more it's popular. Not, the younger generation. It's not culturally normal anywhere it's in popular. the United States or in any Western nation that I'm aware of. If you're married or even have a girlfriend that you on purpose allow other men to plow her, that is not a cultural norm. No. Okay, so is the argument... They're ostracized by other men. They're called cucks by other men. They're uh, considered to be less virtuous. They're mocked. They're, they're ridiculed sure. endlessly. Sure. But that let's, sounds I like the opposite of let's a Let's stay on the point. Let's, like, let's stay on the point. That are it reflects that men, men do not care yeah, how many women a person has been with. You can draw circles on the table, and that's good that you're doing it because that's what your arguments are. They're circular. No, you're, you're but trying anyway, to go, go on ahead. these side tangents to distract from the original point. Yeah. If you can show me data that shows that modern American men care about virginity or body count, then I will absolutely concede because I am, I I've am. i already displayed that I'm willing yeah, but, to do that. But the problem, your the argument problem is not strong enough for me to do that on this topic. I don't but it doesn't Here, matter wait, if the argument's can, not strong enough for your skepticism. Empirical data is not in a standard which must be adhered to when you have logical demonstration. So I logically demonstrated to you that there must be some preference for chastity mm. or most of the world wouldn't be religious with chaste religious values. Okay, it and, must and I, be the case that they must value it to some degree. Right, and I gave you that if we were talking about the whole world and then I clarified mm -hmm. that if we're talking about America, I just don't see anything that shows that men really care as much as you're Here, claiming. Let me, I got a question, I got a question. If we were to do some poll, if we were to go into the street and approach 100 men, and we gave them two options and we said, would you prefer to date a woman with a body count of 10 or a body count of 100? Do you think they would lean more towards one or the other? Okay, let's, let's make the question what you said earlier. A 10 who has a higher body count no, or no, a no. 7 that has no, no, a lower? No, 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 no. Well, let's these are, do... These things factor in. Like, I think men care more about how hot a chick is than they do her body count. Okay, so here we go. Personality, individual differences. You can find this study. It was done by KT Sohn. Men's revealed preferences regarding women's promiscuity. Uh, in the abstract, literally right away in the abstract. Now, if you want, I can get into, because I think it's fair if you're doing anything that's empirical that you want to probably understand methodologies, things like this. But men have evolved to exhibit a desire for chastity and sexual fidelity and an abhorrence of promiscuity in long-term mates. Do you have we investigated whether these preferences manifest themselves yeah. even in an unlikely situation like prostitution by observing men's behavior. 
We considered 8,817 8, prostitutes under 45 who worked in uh, Indonesian cities. We measured female promiscuity by experience in prostitution. So if we go ahead without you know going into every uh, detail, essentially in almost every section of this, they preferred less promiscuity. Now, you could say, well, we could adjust because you're comparing them to prostitutes and there's cultural stigma. I can understand that too. We're also talking you can about look America at, specifically. Yeah, you, yeah, you can look at all sorts of, of different uh, variables inside of the study. The variables that matter. Being, yeah, yeah, I would grant that as being totally fair. Okay, so maybe but that's I not the best But I just want to let you know up. that what's interesting about it is that what's cited in the abstract immediately is that men have evolved to exhibit a desire for chastity and sexual fidelity and an abhorrence of promiscuity in long-term mates. Why would that be fundamental in the abstract from people who have an evolutionary view? Why would that be the case? In the evolution, from an evolutionary perspective, it's 100% valid. And for you men believe and women. in evolution, correct? I do. Then what the hell are you talking about? I'm saying that in modern evolution is not the only thing that factors into a person's decision making. Yes, that's you the just primal, said that evolutionarily thing. men have evolved yes. to not like promiscuity, sure, but you're gonna, not convinced that men don't like promiscuity. I'm so super gonna, confused. I'm saying that there's many things that factor into a person's personality and their decision making. There's nurture, there's nature, there's evolutionary biology, there's mm -hmm. generational influences. There's a lot of influences on what makes a person make a decision. Yeah, so but what's going to be the start down to the individual So things, for instance, in sure. nature versus nurture, mm -hmm. we don't really know. It could be 50-50, could be 70-30. Okay, we don't know. Exactly. But when you're talking about nature, Literally when you're talking about point. <laughs> But when you're talking about nature itself, it almost always does come down to nature. You're talking about things like IQ, things like this, 100%, right? yeah. There's only X amount that can be done from nurture, but the thing that's interesting is that even if we take into account, let's say it is a 50-50 between nature and nurture, then your evolutionary biology of promiscuity, the nurture portion of that would also be brought down to the children from the biological parents who were evolved to not like the promiscuity. So you yeah, would have you can, both of those strong like correlates it. there. You cannot like it, but I, what was the question on here, right? Like. The, that if a girl who does only fan is less likely to find a partner and your retort to that is it's because men want someone who's less promiscuous or doesn't have a high body count i think even if that is the case which i'm not saying it is because i don't know i haven't seen anything that convinces me enough that men really care except evolution currently, okay on an evolutionary level for sure absolutely but that's okay, not the so only then on the thing that factors level, into the decision making and well. when it comes to if they're actually going to date an only fans girl i don't see many of them not in relationships or lacking we've already of that. we've already granted you that women the, who do yeah. only fans can get into relationship we're sure. not saying women who do only fans they'll be forever alone they're going to be entirely precluded from ever having a male partner yeah, but i don't think That's they're even less likely argument. to find someone though wait you literally didn't you literally concede i don't know if it was you i'm saying you it's don't fair. you don't it's acknowledge fair. that a woman who's involved in sex work you don't think it closes the door at all for to any men yeah for to some to guys, most but i would argue that's the most whole point. men right that's where we're having the disagreement so most would be I just don't most would be 51 percent or more I don't necessarily think You think 51% so. of men want to date a woman? Let's let's do the I, Even if they don't want to, that doesn't mean that they're not doing it. <laughs> I could say I prefer Okay, I could say I prefer a guy who doesn't have a high body count. And then I meet someone and I fall in love with them and I'm like, "You know what? As long as you're monogamous with me, I can look past it." And I think yeah, that happens you. a lot for I just have one sure. last one last question, right? Because I just want to, I just want to uh, tell you on the other end of the study. Now, to be completely fair to you, I'm looking this up on the fly because you're asking for empirical data, right? Um, so, I mean, you have every right to question it. But one thing here, the results that were derived from this particular study, it demonstrated that men exhibited those evolutionary preferences because they paid less to more experienced prostitutes and they paid more to less experienced prostitutes. Why do you think that would be? To avoid STDs, I'm sure. <laughs> But again, you're, Wait, you're trying to compare prostitutes. Were, hang on, these prostitutes were for STDs. That oh, was a great Thank you, thank you, Meatball. You donated five hundred dollars. Okay, man. let's mute Raven. Time to move on. All right, we got to mute her mic for ten minutes because that's a. Hang on, can I just finish it real quick? Yeah, go ahead. 
They controlled for STDs. So why did they want the less experienced prostitutes and paid the, them more than the more experienced prostitutes? Ten seconds, and then we're. If gonna I had you. to imagine, it would be to avoid STDs. Like you're gonna. Yeah, I know that was less... controlled for. They didn't have STDs, so, and, the, and the people participating in the study knew this. Less experienced women are a lot easier to dominate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, but wait, I thought that. The reason that we value the promiscuity is because of those experienced women had experience. But why are they getting paid less? Mute it. Oh, That's weird. Okay. Mute it. Mute it. We'll, we'll put her back on at 10. Uh, okay. It's just like you wouldn't even Damn it, answer. I was enjoying that argument, but okay. <laughs> Fair enough. You weren't even Maybe answering the, the 10 <laughs> versus 100. You mentioned STDs. I think they, I think they Hold on. Well, they can't even hear you. Your microphone's oh, muted. You. Look, you mentioned STDs. The more sexual partners you've had, the greater risk for STDs. Yeah. Which In any I case, said, which I said earlier. Uh, I'm going to move on. So we're going to get to our notes here for Sky. Sky, you said you were uh, engaged in. The, oh, we kind of talked about your online thing. Mm -hmm. You took the mushrooms thing. Yeah. He molded a large amount of your interests. Uh, he really did. You wasted your time on him. You said you used to hook up with a guy who was a mechanic, yeah. but you're actually kind of terrified that you're terrified of. Yeah, I'm kind of terrified of his um, interest in me because, for the most part, he... Did you want to read the rest of what he requested from me? Yeah, he wanted to dress... He wanted you to dress him up and do his makeup for him to get railed by a dude and for yeah. you to watch and degrade him. Yeah, that's essentially what he wanted. Yeah, and that's so, weird. Um, what it's wild what really terrifies me about the situation is the willingness for him to like did you do it no i haven't done it and i don't plan on doing it it's but not you're still with him i wasn't with him oh, okay uh he was the guy that i went on five dates with and on what date did he reveal that right uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> he, he didn't <laughs> unveil that uh until recently he unveiled it like are you still talking I, I to him? I got with him in like 2020, and then uh, since then he's just reached out to me a few times. I reached out to him today because I wanted to see how he's doing. But why? Uh, okay. Um, because anyways, uh, you said you disagree with the host's dating expectations. Yeah. So what are those? So necessarily, um, when you say the burdens of like dating and. Mm -hmm. primarily being on the guy yeah um i think that the guy chooses essentially who he wants to be with and the woman has to like acquiesce to that like a woman does not set the tone of the relationship by being the one that wants to engage like she may desire the relationship but he's the one that ultimately decides okay we're gonna to be together well i don't understand what does that have to do with what does that have to do with uh my dating expectations dating expectations i think i was saying it along the lines of you were framing it as though men have this tremendous burden or this um inequitable burden to date in the dating realm that you know they have to pursue the woman they have to do you, do you disagree with that you don't think men have to be initiators and typically have to i just don't Less think options. of it as a burden a i burden? think of it yeah uh have you ever approached a guy yes yeah several times same do you have any same. like anxiety when you do that there's no i mean there's definitely been... emotions involved but i don't think I think the more that you've done it, the less sensitive you are to it. So. Sure. Depends on whether or not you're a submissive woman or a dominant woman. Because if you're an aggressor, you're going to go after the guy. I go after the guy. I don't wait for the guy to come to me. But I'm also very particular the type of guys that I like. So. So you disagree that it's a burden. burden? I don't think. I think the phrasing of it being a burden means that like. It's a negative experience going into it. When in reality, how many, how many men have you rejected throughout your life? 
Ooh, I Hundreds? can't. No, 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 <laughs> no. Let me ask these other girls here. How many men would you say you've rejected throughout the course of your life? Oh, like, thousands. Yeah, probably thousands. Every every DM you don't respond to. Mm -hmm. If you've had a dating app, every message you don't respond to. Uh, any guys who've ever approached you uh, at a bar or a club or at school, whatever it is. Uh, thousands, thousands. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. How many times have you been rejected? <laughs> One time. One time? Wait, what about you? twice. How many, how many guys would you say you've rejected? A lot. <laughs> thousands. Um, sure. Thousands. Maybe hundreds. Yeah. I don't know about thousands. Um, you, have you ever been rejected? No. Mm -hmm. How many, how many uh, men have you rejected? My hmm? Oh, that's right. Oops. <laughs> uh, I've probably rejected around like 20 men. Total. Have you ever been on a dating app? Oh, God. You've yes. rejected mm -hmm. a lot more than 20 men if you've <laughs> been on a dating app. Uh, have you ever been rejected? Yes. Okay, how many times? At least, like, 20. Okay, all right. What about you? How many times have you rejected men? If you include Instagram DMs and sure. stuff. Sure, yeah, Instagram DMs. A lot. Okay, thousands. Maybe the not of your thousands. Life. I mean, maybe if you include been. the internet, yeah. Include the internet, Dating bars, notes. clubs, men approaching you. What about you? Yeah, same thousands. Thousands, yeah. Madison. Hundreds. <laughs> uh, so, if you're a man, and say that you're, and actually, I mean, a success rate of like ten percent of the women you talk to, you end up sleeping with. That's a very high success rate for a man. How could that not be a burden if you have to talk to 10 women and get, you know, make an effort, make initiative, make an attempt? Who knows how far you could you could take those 10 women on dates even yeah. and it not go anywhere. How could that not be a burden? It's not necessarily a burden. I'd how say is it that's, not a burden. That's the selection pool. You go into dating with the idea that, okay, this is a potential mate, or this is a potential, but it's not guaranteed. But if we're comparing, so you, we're doing a comparison here between men and women, Yeah. right? So the experiences of men compared to the experiences of women, if all of these burdens fall on men, approaching, carrying the conversation, soliciting a first date, soliciting the phone number, setting up the date, carrying and leading the conversation on the date, paying for the date, uh, moving things forward physically, moving things forward sexually, closing the distance gap, going for the kiss, et cetera, et cetera. These are all individual points where men potentially face rejection. And women face rejection via like uh, their assertion of femininity and or their uh, body I don't count. even know what that means. <laughs> like, okay, like say for instance, uh, you're not as receptive to a uh, move that a guy makes, but you're still very much interested in him. Uh, that could be taken. What do you mean? Well, yeah, yeah, you're not making sense. Because if I'm interested in a guy, I'm not going to reject a move that he makes. Right, and and like when you say you're of of into the mics, guys. If you're the talk. the assessment of femininity, what is what does that mean? Meaning, like, there's certain dating practices that both men and women have to uphold and uh, w a woman asserting her feminine and uh, shit my phrasing on this is not great but um women have to mentally brace themselves for like um, responding to men and being attractive being their idea of what a girlfriend should be um, trying to uh, forecast his actual um, responsiveness to you as a person because uh, sometimes guys will go into relationships and they look for women that don't show them as much attention um, because they want... I'm sorry, I got to cut you off. I don't know what you're... Can you arrive at the point here? <laughs> like, make an actual argument. I don't know. Mm, can I say something? Sure. I think that the counter burden to what you're talking about 
is like the the dangers of actually dating and going with some guy you don't know like you don't know their intentions and I mean I've had really bad experiences with going on dinner dates where it didn't actually end in dinner so it's definitely a burden okay so we can talk about these uh i mean i'm talking about like normal psychology here like i'm not talking about yeah okay there's a fear that women have of being assaulted but let's talk about like let's say the girl's normal the guy's normal who has the burden there I would like say healthy dynamics. We can talk about like abnormal psychology and people who are fucked up and people who would be inclined to victimize to you. Let's talk about just an otherwise healthy first date. Hmm. Definitely it's more on the man, I would say. Because the women, I feel, at least in my experience, and there have been exceptions to this, but overall, I don't really have to do anything besides just kind of existing. Show up. And show up. And, and being basically polite and friendly. Um, and... The guy just, he's the one who has to kind of convince me. To sleep with him. Yes, mm. exactly. Basically. He does get to decide whether or not we are in a committed relationship for sure, but I actually have a fair amount of control over where that goes if the man is truly interested in me, in my experience. So, I mean, you guys could be very much right. Um, I mainly just disagreed with the phrasing of it as being a burden. Um, but I can understand why it would be considered a burden for men to go through all those lengths and then not and then get, get rejected. Well, well, hang on. In, in this in this case, in this context, when he's saying burden, he's not saying burden is in burdensome necessarily, but what the obligation or social obligation of that's that's what kind of that means in that context of burden. Like Who has the burden yeah. to pay for the date? doesn't necessarily mean that it's burdensome that a man pays for the date, but we're just asking, who do you think has kind of the obligation? That's that's yeah. what that means in that context. Okay. I th yeah. Honestly, I think that's something that should be on the rise to change, especially with all women talking about, oh, I want equality and this and that. And the other. Well, if you want equality, then pay for half the goddamn date. Well, Put your card out on yeah, the table not, when it's time to pay instead of go to the them. bathroom, um, like so most women do. In my like experience with dating, I've been cons I'm considered a modern woman um, I don't necessarily expect the guy to pay for the date um, and dates that I've been on I've paid for myself before um, but most recently I say it was a traditional experience where I went out with a guy and he paid for everything um, and he didn't expect me to um, how, qu question how many times have you had that experience once Okay. Um, any women here, like, have any women here been on, like, more than one date where the guy took care of everything? Yes. Mm -hmm. what, what do you guys think is more common? The man taking care of everything or the woman taking care of everything? The man. The man. I've, the man. Never, I've never been on a date with a girl where I ever could have gone in with the expectation that she was going to pay for the whole thing. Has never happened in my entire life. Never. Yeah, the, it's I, either split or I pay. The, the, That's it. The way I've dated in the past before I was married was if I invite the guy out, then I'm going to expect to pay because I invited him. I extended the, in, the invitation. So if I say, hey, let's go to a movie or let me take you out to dinner, then I'm going to pay. Why? Because I invited him out because I want to. That, I'm not saying that, you know, if he decides, oh, no, no, let me pay or let me pay for half. Yeah, I'm going to let him because he's taking the initiative to want to do more. But that doesn't necessarily mean that everything's always on the guy. And I think that's the narrative that should change, is that it shouldn't always be on the guy, because guys shouldn't necessarily have to yeah. be burdened he's with just, all of it. He's just saying, as yeah. of right now, the burden is typically No, for on sure. The guy. And that's, I know, I agree with him. And burden doesn't even, like he was saying, it's just, it just translates to responsibility. Well, yeah, but I don't think even in my experience, and this is a very unique experience, uh, the burden of conversation is necessarily on the guy, meaning I have to engage intellectually with him, uh, bring up topics of conversation, keep things interesting, and not just, you know, like, kind of... 
If I did what most women do on the first date, there would be fucking dead silence <laughs> on the first. Like, I'm telling you, women are not prepared to carry the conversation on the first date. What kind of women are you dating? Some, you some women are. Some else. women are good conversationalists. Some women, some women are good conversationalists. However, like, if I, if, if I were to, women. like, if I were to just be silent and kind of, like, wait for to see what the woman does... It would be really fucking awkward conversationally. <laughs> it would be really awkward. Here, let's I'm play. Sure. Let's play that. We're on a date. Okay. We'll I'm gonna be a chick. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> Go. Okay. Uh, what do you do for work? Podcaster. Oh, interesting. So, how long have you been doing that for? Two years. Two years. And uh, have you ever considered any career changes? Or? Nope. I no? like what I do. <laughs> you like what you do? Yeah. I like what I do too. Mm. Do you have, uh, who are these girls, Brian? Who are these girls who are hurt you like that? Tell me, tell me, you've never had a conversation like this with a guy. I typically the first, am the one rambling. Yeah, the first yeah. thing that we talk about yeah. should not be like what we do for work. To be honest, well, that's L.A. If you're in L.A., oh, that's yeah. that's why my dating bio is like, I'm not trying to do not that about small about, talk like, bullshit. Actual interest and like personality and well, I mean Anything that takes work connection. though. That takes emotional labor. Um. <gasps> I thought we were still having Anyways, our conversation. Whatever. We're gonna move you on. Don't, you weren't to interested. You weren't don't. interested Please in don't. my conversation. Uh, so you said that when you were 17, you made a Tinder to gain experience with guys because you didn't get any attention from guys in yeah, high school. school. Wow. In high school, yeah. You guess you weren't their type, even though I went to school with like 7,000 kids. I went, yeah. So I uh, never got approached by a guy in high school. No, I'm well. I'm more focused on the. Tinder. Making a Tinder at, at 17. 17. Well, I mean, uh, isn't that against the rules or that? It is against yeah. the rules. And it's dangerous. That's and it's dangerous, but I did it anyway. Yeah. yeah, no kidding. Um, you're, you're putting you're putting lots of men at risk. Yeah, yeah I mean, in some states it's the legal age. Of, like I know in Louisiana you can be 17, but still, it's, it's still California. <laughs> like I agree. Yeah. I've always been in California. Anyways, um, disavow like that. But you said you believe that you kind of ruined your youthful experience by forcing yourself. To experiment, I think you've always been hypersexual, and the fact that I didn't get attention in school made you act out and seek male validation online. Yes, um, I think that um, me not experiencing like an organic relationship with a guy uh, in my youth really informed my relationships with men going into my twenties because. Uh, I didn't really have any male friends. I didn't have any males that were seeking my uh, attention. Um, mm -hmm. And if they were, they weren't making it obvious that they were sure. seeking my attention. Um, so I, and I'd, I'm, I'm not going to talk about it because it's TOS, um, but I've been hypersexual from a fairly young age. Like I've, um, I've known what porn was for a very long time. And so yeah. I knew exactly the the ways around like the body and I was very curious to it. All right, okay, it, okay. But, um, moving on, you said that your main contention with age gap relationships is that the value of both men and women diminish in society as they age and people of similar value should be together. People that are older cannot sustain themselves as long as the youth can. Yeah. So do you object to age gap relationships? Um, yes, for the most part. Okay, so is anybody here in an age gap relationship? Me. What's your what's your relationship? Nine years. I'm older. Oh, you're older. Mm -hmm. And you're so you're forty five and he's thirty four? Thirty five, thirty and thirty five, okay. thirty six, And then what about you? Yeah, everyone I've dated except the last guy I gave a chance has been seven plus years older. My Every husband's forty one. Okay. Uh so Andrew's probably keen to uh, weigh in on this, but what are your, uh, I guess, your actual objections to age gap relationships? I express that the value uh, that you're going to put in a relationship as you get older is going to change, uh, and it's going to be less or more. I think it's less. We as you also, get older? as you get older, isn't it? Mm. Wait, huh? in the eye of the beholder, because I love yeah. some older men. Let me tell you. I like, like some young men. Well, one, so of the one of the looks. complaints I hear from younger women, like women who are in college, 18, 19, 20, 21, is they say, these men don't want commitment. Mm -hmm. They just want to fuck. 
they're fuck boys. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems to me that younger men tend to lean towards not being a little bit more opposed to commitment than men who are a bit older. Uh, I would disagree. Okay. Um, I think that um, younger men are probably less likely to say that they want a relationship with a girl because um, they have nerves about them. I don't know. I don't know why men or why people think that younger men don't want relationships with women. I think it's based on topics like we talked about promiscuity. So we're in a culture where promiscuity is on the rise and um, your intentions with somebody may be askew. So I, in my encounters with men that I've had, they're very much open to relationships. It's just a matter of position and place and the person that they're looking for and not necessarily didn't you say you've been single your whole life? <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, if you're meeting all these men that are open to having relationships, what has precluded you from having a relationship? I'm not meeting a bunch of men that are interested in me necessarily or... Okay, that's fair. Well, let's bring it back to age gap though. So I'm still... Can you explain a little better kind of your objections there? So I... Yeah, other than it just being icky, which... <laughs> but why is it icky? Yeah, why is it icky? Why is Everyone's it icky? of legal consenting age. Right. I, I didn't meet my husband when he was in high school. I met him when he was a grown man. <laughs> um, I think... Does it give you the ick? It gives you the ick? It gives, gives me ick. the ick. It, does it give gives you the ick, doesn't it? Because I've always experienced... Uh, the world where people of a similar age have a similar outlook on life and you once you cross, cross a certain boundary threshold that changes and it could take, lead to people being taken advantage of um, even if they're You're legal right. and consenting. These young women are taking advantage <laughs> right. of, of these, these older men, men with resources. <laughs> they're 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 fleecing them for money. Right. You're right. These <laughs> young women are predatory. Who's who's taking? Well, in There's, my my instance, for example, who's taking advantage of who? Then am I taking advantage of my husband because he's younger, or is he taking advantage of me because I'm older? Um, <laughs> it could be a situation of both of you taking advantage of each other. How? How is that? What do you mean taking? How, how does that work? He's taking advantage of the fact that you're older and you probably have less options. Advantage isn't bad. What do you Shots mean? Fired. I have less. Shots fired. First, yeah, first, yeah, of, first of all, wait, wait, wait. First of all, less options for, for a potential mate. And that's not true at all. Because I'm a fucking. I'm a, I'm a grab. Okay, that's first and foremost. Secondly, <laughs> just because I'm nine years older than my husband does not mean that I have less options. If him and I broke up tomorrow, or if he died tomorrow, trust me, I'm going to be riding some yeah. dick eventually in a well, week or two. Okay. Okay, but so. I, it's it's a matter of. Oh my God. I'm just basing facts. Facts oh are facts. Okay, so do you think that you would find a man of similar value to him at your age? Absolutely. Someone that is your age. I don't date men my age. Why not? Because I date men that are younger than me, for a particular reason. Why? Because they can keep up with me. You older take men take advantage can, of the age. Yeah. No, so that that's is your advantage. True. That is yeah. that is one older, downfall of dating older men, older men. Older men cannot keep up with someone like me. I'm a hyper bitch. So if you can't keep up, then I have no use for you. So th there's no advantage being taken. If especially if, if I'm older, you would think that I would be taking advantage of him, right? Well, is it's that an advantage. Saying? I mean, I don't, I don't think taking advantage is necessarily right. I'm not a forcing him thing. to have sex with me. He wants to have sex with me. There's no, there's no taking advantage of. I'm not but holding my husband by the head. But it is an advantage for you many? because he's younger and you get the sex you want because you're crazy in the bed. I you am. know? So yeah. it's advantage and it's not bad. Right. It's not a bad advantage. Take advantage, advantage but. I wasn't carrying his books home for him for school at school when he was 17. I wasn't saying that shit. <laughs> okay, I was just saying. So, I'm in favor of older men, obviously, but playing devil's advocate, it can be the case that predatory people pick younger people because they're easier to manipulate and they are naive and they're easier to mold and control. That is absolutely a thing. But I don't think you can say that that's just broadly every dynamic yeah. like that. Right. Like, and it's not. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do you have a study for that? <laughs> 
do you? I have an example. Though. Yeah, we don't have <laughs> experience. Who made the claim? Paul. Hang on, who made the claim? <laughs> okay, so let me let me pull a you. Hang on, you just said I don't think that that's generally what's going on. I, I don't think. It's and you, do you have any empirical evidence to back that up at all? <sighs> She just no. said she doesn't want to make generalizations right. because not every relationship. That was she exactly literally right. said. It, I don't I mean, think don't need generally to, I don't think that's takes, what's going on. No, 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 I don't think generally that's what's going on. Right? You don't. Think, do you have any empirical evidence whatsoever I mean, to support that? Okay. You I generally like, don't. You want me to write you a thesis wait, and so come wait, back and tell are you? Like, I'm not asking for a thesis. Generally? I'm asking. Hey, th there's a reason I'm asking this because earlier. You jumped all over Brian and okay, said that is Brian, there, hang is, on, let me finish. Sorry, sorry. You jumped all over Brian and you were all kinds of upset with him because no, he wasn't. was not demonstrating empirical no. evidence to go with a generalized statement. I think and that, yet here, hang on, you made a claim and you said generally I don't think that's what's going on and you also have no empirical evidence whatsoever to back that claim up, correct? I think it's actually backwards. I think y'all were the ones that got upset and like <laughs> muted me. I was like happy to debate <laughs> oh it. Um, I wasn't upset at all. Like I, I like to debate and, and further my understanding of me things too. by hearing opposite sides. So like I'm not upset just because we may not come to the same conclusion. But you wanted but empirical now with, data. With any with any topic, am I going to just have like the best debate thing prepared? Like no, I would. There's some things that if it's being uh, presented to you for the first time, you, you that need a you're going to mull it over. Talk in generalities, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to... And that's okay good. to do, right? And yeah, so, sometimes. so maybe asking for empirics, when, if, you're not, uh, if you're not prepared to have my studies ready in a moment's notice, if it's okay for you to do, then it's okay for us well, to do. Well, sure. Does that I'm sound saying, fair? Yeah, but sometimes things are like common sense, and I'm just saying, I don't... But that's what he was I just, saying. I just he, genuinely don't think that's the case, but I admit that it's my anecdotal experiences. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But so I'm just saying you know, that if I, I you know, it, what's good for the goose, good for the gander, right? So no, I, when it, I feel so you. instead of like trying to I trash there, us for there are not having empirical though. evidence, just remember that you often speak in generalities without having any either. So yeah, I mean, yeah, sure. But if I had like a Jamie, okay. I'm sure he could pull up like there's got to be studies mm -hmm. on there's predatory no Jamie people. Here. Okay. Yeah, no, I know. Yeah. I'm saying generally Sorry, speaking. <laughs> Generally speaking. Yeah, generally. Do you have a study be... for if you generally had a Jamie that you would pull up the right? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. So, anyway, there, back to that argument at though, hand. On that. When you're talking about the ick, the ick, it gives yeah. you the ick. Me? Are you I talking did, to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the yeah. ick, it gives you the ick. Gives her um, the ick. You, you, you wouldn't say, though, that it's an immoral thing, right? It's not actually immoral. I. Oh, shit. I think it isn't immoral because it's legal and it's, there's no, um, I haven't, I don't think I can make a justification for why. Why is it icky? Yeah. Why do you find it ick? Is it what about it is ick? What about me having sex with a guy who's 36 and I'm 45? What does that, what's, what's the ick factor there? Do you want me to it be is... like no holds bar? Do it. Yeah, yeah. let's go. Yeah, find out. Let's go. Um, I think it just points to a desperation in both parties <laughs> for a sense of. Except you've been you've been single your entire life. What? And I've been married for ten years to the same guy. Well, well continue. Let's not always like get defensive and start. Like getting like, angry well, with I'm, one another. Like, I'm, just, I'm making a point. Opinion. I'm making. She's been single her whole life. So, with what experience and what you know, wherewithal knowledge do you have on this topic? She's an observer. Well, okay, but earlier we were talking about OnlyFans, and you don't have OnlyFans, like, right? But you can still have an opinion yeah. on it. So you don't always have to have first-hand <laughs> experience. Y'all be nice. Be nice. I don't know. I just like. Is that not a valid enough reason? <laughs> not really. I see your. Point. I mean, that like you can imagine. I mean, I from from a if you were to say take a conservative Christian for instance, and you were to uh, lay all of his moral intuitions on things that gave him the ick and called that moral, that that would lead to all sorts of things being immoral. You probably wouldn't. Their to be immoral, ball right? donated two hundred dollars. Okay, so then guys who date older women have mommy issues and are I, overall I would, weird. I, I, Men I generally age one. like wine and women generally age like bananas. Banana. Age gap is perfectly normal when guy is older. I would like to see <laughs> a bullshit. picture of you, Mr. Yeah, Meeple. Right? Mr. Meeple, send the picture. She Meeple. wants to have carnal knowledge with you. I like to see you. the wine that you look she like, sir. She wants you. Yeah romantically and sexually Mr. Meatball but she needs a photo first also not to mention women of melanated color do not age like bananas thank you very much 
That is true. <laughs> it is true. Objectively. Why women age like bananas? Yeah. Anybody in J Lo? Are you talking? You're not ugly. Like, you're just poor. No. Well, no. Is Melanie like, and Kylie uh, Jenner. Hold on. More like plantains. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, plant. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, is it not bananas but plantains? No. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Uh, right. Like for example, Maddie. Face. Maddie's Asian. I'm Hispanic and black. We we don't we don't age the same. We don't age the same. Oh my god. No, that's true. That there there are studies on that. The, that melanin does make you age better. That is a real thing. How about this? About it. Oh, I just made the shit up. White don't blight. <laughs> White don't blight. White don't blight. You're What's so up? stupid. What does that mean? You know you don't know what blight what is. is? No, what White is don't like, blight. Hold don't. on, let me Google this shit just to make sure. I'm <laughs> No, that that facts. would be correct. The, the blight, yeah, like blight. you're talking about blight, like potato thing, blights and shit like that. <laughs> a thing that spoils or damages. Um, uh, yeah. So we're all spoiled if we're white not blight. White. Oh my! No, that's not what I'm saying. He was, he was trying to make a joke. Oh, okay. Sorry. It's, don't blight. it's hard to tell sometimes when. I got the joke. That, yeah. Okay. Um, I I'm gonna move things on a little bit here. Going to Corinne. Sir. You said I can personally guarantee that you haven't had any women like me on your show. I have no problem in laying into people, especially if they're just morons that need to be taken down a peg or two. It's true. I know I have some invaluable dating advice, and I'll lead with this one. Uh, never believe your parents or the advice they give you about sex or dating. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> what? That's why. Uh, yeah, because, I mean, if, oh, let's go back to back in the day. I'm talking about before the Internet. I mean, I grew up without the internet. Yeah. I grew up without any GPS or anything like that. So of course your parents are trying to protect you and tell you certain things about dating and tell you who, are, who and what not to date. Because back in the day, for sure, they're trying to keep you, like, for example. Straight and narrow? Yeah, well, not even straight and narrow, like culturally. A lot of cultures will be like, date within your own culture. I'm not dating Spanish men because there's some, I could be related to one of them. I'm not trying to do that. but. Okay. Further, the likelihood of that happening, though? I mean, it's happened. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's happened. If you're from a small island, it's happened. You've dated a cousin. I'm, I, I haven't. But, you know, if, you okay. go, if you're coming from a place like Haiti, Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. Jamaica, th there's been a chance that you dated someone that you're somewhat related to. It's, it's happened. It's going to happen. You know, with, if you're only staying within your culture and it's, your culture is literally an island this big, the chances of you dating a fourth or third cousin is probably happening. Okay, but how does that apply to parental advice? For because the your masses? your parents are going to guide you to do things moralistically as far as like church values, things like that. You know, yeah. if you if you grow up religious, your parents are going to tell you not to have sex before marriage. Now, good. I'm, I, I don't think that's good. I'd like to Why? know what like I, I'd like to know what I'm getting into before I marry. Like I'm not like I made this point earlier today with the girls was. You, you test out the product before you buy it. No, my grandmother literally taught us. No, you, t you try the milk before you buy the cow. So I don't know who y'all's parents right. are. Maybe uh, it's like a Louisiana thing and they are crazy in Louisiana. But oh, yeah. for the most part, a lot of the people that I, I've known. Yeah, but that's, that's advice towards men. They're supposed to give that advice to women. The Both. advice is supposed to be for men. You go and you test out the cow before you buy the cow. Cow is female. Okay, right? don't, they don't buy. Say go they test don't out buy the, the bull. She didn't say go test out the bull. No, no, that she what actually. You, what? No, she had this thing hanging and it said to. both things. It said don't buy the pig before you test the sausage. Shoot, swear to God, it said both things. Yeah. Swear to God. I I need to know what kind of sausage, sausage I'm getting before I buy before I buy it. Grandma crazy. They are my, the whole family. My mom used to tell me, if you're ever gonna smoke weed, just come to me instead. I don't want you smoking cigarettes. I'm like. Damn, dude. That's yeah, I mean, crazy. If I if I was talking to a guy for like three years and then we got married and then we and then we waited to have sex and his and he couldn't please me, then I would honestly probably end up in a divorce because what? What if he was like good to you in every um, other way though? But if you couldn't please if you couldn't please me sexually, that's a huge factor. Like sex is a huge factor. Like my grandmother told what? me if you wanna if you want <laughs> if you wanna keep a white guy, cup his balls while you're sucking his dick. That's what she said. Oh my God! My Grandma most recent. Yeah. That is no lie, actually. I just, I just ran into that. That's what Grandma said. Grandma said. I want to know the stats Recipe. of how many men have affairs on their wives that they married virgins. Mm. Uh, it's actually quite low. So your chance of divorce drastically go down if you get married as a virgin male and a virgin female. And true. your chance of stepping outside your marriage go drastically down as well. Yeah, that is not true. a problem anybody at this table is ever going to have, but uh, <laughs> it, it is, it, you know, for it that that is what the stats show. Okay. Well, 
So what is wrong, though, with, like, parents trying to guide their children in, like, the right direction? Sometimes, they g- sometimes parents can guide you in the wrong direction. For example, if you grow up in a super religious home and you're taught as a man not to masturbate because masturbating is bad or that, you know, self-love or self-care is bad, that guy is not going to really know what the fuck he's doing later on in life when he's trying to get in- involved in a relationship sexually. I think people figure it yeah, out. Yeah, but, I mean, that's the point. The, the whole point is to... Uh, attempt to keep a person chaste in order to keep their virtue intact. So, I mean, like, from, from your perspective, I understand what you're saying. You're saying, look, um, for me, I want sexual liberation and this type of thing. But, I mean, for most parents, they're going to want to try to keep you away from a bad crowd. They're going to try to keep your virtues intact, your reputation intact, because that does actually matter in life. It is part of success in life is virtue. And that is a thing that used to be part of that whole culture you're talking about pre-internet, same culture I grew up in. And virtues did matter. And you know what? Here's the thing. Everyone knew who the skanks were in high school, and we didn't treat them that great. That's just the truth. We didn't treat them that great, and um, yeah, yeah, they didn't They didn't have it great. Just saying. So I understand why parents would lean towards trying to keep those virtues intact for both uh, their sons and their daughters. It made it makes a lot of sense. I mean, I'm of the opinion, and my dad convinced me of this just getting older, that the word of your parents is like the word of God. And Unless they touch you, then what? Okay, well, okay, we can't yeah. get into that. <laughs> We're not going to get into that on the, on on the podcast on YouTube. I no. just like don't like the, the derogatory words that are used for women that are like to have sex because like there's women like like myself that have been through horrible sexual experiences and that's going to make you act in a way when you're a child and you don't know any better in a way that people could label you but that doesn't define you as a whole person just because you like well let's um let's grant it for a second and say yes that's correct there could be women who have emotional issues due to some type of horrific experiences that they have in their childhood there's plenty of women who have no horrific experiences early in their childhood and are often also promiscuous. Mm-hmm. Why can't those labels be used towards those women? I just feel like using like, oh, those women weren't treated well as an excuse to, like, it's just for whore behavior. I, for I, I don't think that's fair to treat some like because what about the men that are whoring around how did those men get treated? Yeah, but that's probably a what not, about the probably, men though? They didn't probably, hang on, they hang probably on, didn't get called stop, 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 so just stop for a second. You're making a typical what about the Mendo argument. So let's start Let's start first, not what about the Mendo, why is everybody not mad at the men? Let's start with the first claim, which I don't like the fact that society will use, and by the way, women do this to women far more than men do. One of the first derogatory thing a woman does to another woman is call her... A whore. Um, yeah, that's the first thing that they do. They, 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 mm-hmm. That's what they do. I mean, so, maybe that's so the thing is, what they do. Hang on, hang on. So the thing is, is like, yes, these things, uh, the reason that these terms are used, you could say strumpet, lady of the night, right? Whatever you want to say, they're pointing out, mm, not doesn't have virtue. That's what they're pointing out. Mm, not virtuous. And, and it's a really easy way to use a word to just go, no virtue. That's, that's why it's used that way. <laughs> you stumped you have her can, can I, <laughs> Andrew do you hold do you hold the same views towards like do you find men who are have like high body counts less uh, desirable or like th- sure. they have less value do you view uh, it the same well, way so so like so look so let's dive into this so there's a little bit of nuance here I think what you're asking me is do I think that men who are promiscuous also have lower virtue my answer is yes. I think that they have lower virtue as well, but not less value in the dating market. It seems that women don't have the same preferences that men do when it comes to a higher body count. They don't seem to care as much about it. Yeah, in true. fact, they often seem to want to compete for men who have higher body counts because they have women all over them, and that's what they're competing over. So women don't have to compete for hierarchy, but they do have to compete with each other to grab somebody inside of a hierarchy. So that's been general human conditioning. So women are always competing with each other. So if women see other women gravitating towards a single man, they tend to compete more for that man. So it doesn't actually lower their value in the dating marketplace, but I think it lowers their value as far as virtue goes. 
I was just curious your stance on it in general. But also, women will compete for married men too. They see a ring on a man's because finger and high it makes value, them more. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yep. Which, it, it, but but that's just the, but that's the same thing you're talking about. You're saying yeah. they're competing with a man who another woman desires, and that makes them gravitate towards that man. The same thing happens with women when they're um, you know going after single men. If yeah. they see that he gets a lot of female attention, they tend to gravitate more towards him. Why do you think women are always out with these ugly ass fucking rock stars, <laughs> right? <laughs> they, they're, they're always at, because they're super desired by other women, right? Mm-hmm. Even though they're ugly as sin, you know, like Mick Jagger's not a good looking guy, <laughs> no. but he's not, he's not having trouble. <laughs> Steven Tyler, mm-hmm. ugly as sin Steven Tyler is. One of the ugliest men I've probably ever seen. He looks more like but a woman than most women I know. <laughs> yeah, but he's not having trouble picking up chicks. Dude, right? Flavor Flav. Well, I just think it's because they have money, show, but I bet me? if they were ugly and didn't have money, <laughs> then they probably wouldn't be able to get chicks. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I, well, I agree. Maybe <laughs> but to the some point extent. Is, is why, whether the woman's gravitating towards him because he has money uh, or they're gravitating towards him because he's really good looking, it doesn't matter. The fact that they're gravitating towards him does not seem to be a deterrent from other women. It's a deterrent to me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure to some women but, it can but be But generally a speaking, but, yeah, no, I, I Yeah, gotcha. just in, in generalities, yeah. Wow, good time to return. What did I miss? <laughs> Anything interesting? Mm-mm. I don't know. Not really. Uh, going back to you, you said you're 45, but you look 33 without a bucket of makeup. Yeah, like when I yeah, don't. Yeah, that's what you were on. No. Uh, you said you're married, but not legally, because that's stupid. Yep. Yeah, you did say you were married for 10 years, but not legally married. So within the church? Or? We went to um, the little chapel in, in Vegas. So we just got married for us just to kind of re-solidify our relationship and commitment to each other. And the reason why we didn't do it legally is because I don't need the government tracking every our every move. And I'd rather be independent with my own money. He has his money. Mm-hmm. If anything were to go sour or south between the two of us, he can go his way, I can go my way. Mm-hmm. We live in California where it's divided 50-50. My ambitions and pursuits with my career could catapult me to be a multimillionaire. And then and he's a musician, and same thing goes for him. So mm-hmm. why muck up our money together if, especially nothing is forever, nothing is for certain. Mm-hmm. So I'd rather, you know, him protect his assets, I protect mine. Yes. Now you said that you're also a recovering sex addict with a high body count. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you said, you didn't give us an exact number, but you said it was three, three digits, yeah. is that correct? Okay. Uh, you said you were dating strange men long before social media existed. This is true. You never knew if you would make it home from a date. <laughs> this is and true. And it was thrilling. It was. It was. Because it was a thrilling time. It was, I mean, look, as, as someone who was a sex addict, I was involved in a lot of reckless and very high endangerment situations because of where I came from. I suffered through a lot of childhood trauma, um, things that were categorically like unconceivable for most people. I lost both my parents before I finished high school. I've been on my own since I was 16, been through it all. And with that being said, when you get yourself involved, I was never into like alcohol, I've never been into drugs. Um, none of those things were my vices, gambling, can nothing. We, can we back up just a second in your sure. story? Um, because you, you were on your own since you were, you were 16. Sorry to hear that, by the way, that's gotta suck. but. Thanks. You were saying earlier that you think that kids should dismiss their parents' advice, but if your parents weren't in your life when you were that young, wouldn't you have preferred to have had them around to get their advice? No, because my parents were both reckless people. My mother, my mother didn't give us any kind of structure. She didn't give us any kind of rules. If I was going based off of her actions and things that she was doing, um, then I, I would have just ended up just like her. And... Yeah, sure, but I mean, you, you, surely you understand that most parents don't do that. They're not. They they love their children. They definitely don't let them move out of the house when they're sixteen years old and do all this, right? I mean, yeah, you're I, in a in a perfect world. You're absolutely right. But when I mean, that's most people. Most people's parents, I, I think, genuinely care about them. Okay, sure. You don't think so? That's not my. That's not been my personal experience, so I can't say for everybody else. I know a lot of other people who've had similar experiences to mine, where their parents weren't necessarily giving them structure and rules and kind of guidelines in life. So everyone's journey is different, you know. And we're yeah, all, I mean, I agree with that. And I was being saying, a little bit more sarcastic, not necessarily, you know. Yeah, being, if you're if but if you're um, 
If you're raised in a two-parent household, generally speaking, the outcomes are the things that you might consider good outcomes, what, like um, you would higher be, education, you would think. more stability, um, you know, less promiscuity, things like this. Uh, those are generally considered to be decent outcomes, I would say. True. They, and they tend to go up astronomically if you have two parents in the household for the entirety of the child being in the household. So, I mean, it seems like that's a, an optimal way to go, right? I would say it's also nurture versus nature because your environment and where you live and where you grow up also have a huge impact on that. I, I've, I've found in my personal experience that a lot of people from like bigger cities and like New York, I'm from New York originally, people more in the city are gonna have a completely different type of lifestyle than someone who grows up in Montana or Colorado even. I feel like more of the core like traditional values are still in the Midwest. People attribute yeah, a lot more of that in the middle. As a, I think there's a lot more lawlessness. But even in those liberal progressive cities, um, having a two-parent household still is going to lead to what are generally considered sure. good outcomes for children. I didn't. I didn't have the benefit of having that. I mean, I always grew up in a one-person yeah, household. Yeah, I, so. I understand you didn't. But why would you prescribe to others not to listen to their parents if their outcomes seem to be I so was, much better? I, if they do. <laughs> I was fucking around. I mean, she's a comedian. Oh. I'm a comedian. I'm a stand-up uh, comic. So okay. So <laughs> you said you were a sex addict. I'd like to get. That's why little... women shouldn't be comedians. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. That's <laughs> right. I like you, Andrew. You're all right, Michael. I'm a pretty, I'm a likable guy. <laughs> so you said you were a sex addict. I'd like a little more scope on that. So, uh, when you, what does that look like for you? A sex addict was someone who was reckless in 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 prom promiscuity. You know what I mean? Like I sleep with the first person who was into me, if I was into them, obviously. Like I had my mm -hmm. choice in who I wanted to sleep with or to even engage in any kind of sexual activity because. Body count doesn't necessarily mean penetration for all of them, obviously. But um, with well, that being said, I would, I would use sex as my coping mechanism. If I was sad, if I was depressed, if I was angry, if I was happy, sex was my go-to thing to release that, to, in height, to heighten that. Like if I had a good show or something, I'm gonna go fuck somebody because it was a good show. If I was well, depressed about a show, I'd go fuck somebody to make myself feel better. Okay. That's what that looks so, like. Let's say in a day, what's the most amount of people you had sex with in a day? Ooh, that's a dirty, that's a dirty, dirty question. Um, I don't know, a couple, maybe two, three in two a day. Or three. What yeah. about in like a week? What's the most in a week? Ooh, man, I don't know if I, if I remember that. This was way back in like, like 2002, give us, 2003. Give us a, a range. Um, in a week, I don't know, could be anywhere between five and ten. In a week? Five and ten. Okay. What about in a month? <laughs> well, if we're kidding. if we're taking if we're taking um the most in a month. The most in a month. Maybe fifteen. Okay. In a month. All right. I was just trying to get a scope or a sense of the uh, extent of the sex addiction. You said that uh, if you're a woman under the age of 33, chances are you will think I'm a monster. I can't stand the hypocrisy that defined a lot of women under the age 25. They want the world on a silver platter, but bring absolutely nothing to the table. Yep. Ask any woman under 25 what she wants in life or from a man, and you will find yourself a silent woman. Your words. Your yeah, words. absolutely my words. And I stand right by them because if you ask a lot of women under the age of 20, what do you want out of life? Uh, they're going to be deer in headlights. Mm. And, 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 and it's I'm, I'm no different. I know. I was the same. Yeah. I didn't know. I didn't know what I wanted out of life. Absolutely I didn't know what I wanted out of a life partner. I didn't know what I wanted out of my career. I, w I wasn't. I was unsure of these things because I wasn't fully developed. Most of us are not fully developed until after 25, 26. Now we you, haven't figured shit out yet. You said that you're tired of women who have a victim mentality and white women tears. Yes. What do you mean by white women tears? White women tears, the only reason why I use that is because that's synonymous with what the verbiage online and what young people are using. White women tears being women who victimize themselves over nothing. Example, the girl who cried, mm. that's white women tears. She's sitting there crying because you asked her a fucking question. You yeah, asked her a simple question. Define misogyny. And she, misogyny. Just and she like, was just like... <laughs> Like she was attacked. She's the she, main victim. Yeah, she acted. She straight up acted yeah, like Ryan sexually assaulted her. It's how you said it. Wait, That's what matters. Continue, how sorry, you said it. Repeat that. 
I said, she acted as if you sexually assaulted her. That's, that's the look and the fear in her eyes. In that, that 10 second clip that I watched, that's the look that she, if you had given her the opportunity to go to the cops to report, yeah, she probably would have. You know, and said, he made me feel unsafe. I didn't feel safe around him because he asked me a Ooh, question. You got, you, speaking of this, I've actually never revealed this on the show. You should have seen the text messages she sent me afterwards. <gasps> Oh, I want to oh, know. Oh my! This... You mean DMs? Why did she? Ha why did you give her your number? Oh, I mean it was uh, like you know the messages. Oh, okay. Like we do uh, through Instagram and. Got it. But oh yeah, no, she sent messages after the show. Like Nick, actually, I think I showed them to Nick. I showed them to Maddie and. Did she they? Was being ridiculous. Did they ridiculous. sound like this? You attacked me. You made me feel uncomfortable, and you humiliated me, and you made me feel like I wasn't important, and I, and my opinion doesn't matter. Yes, he, you're no, right. Those are, your those are usually doesn't. my DMs. <laughs> those are, uh, not, not Brian. Those are my DMs. <laughs> but yeah, she, she was. Uh, That's great. <laughs> yeah, she. I'm trying to, she wanted us to take the video down, but then she also demanded, well, okay. That's why women do. Uh, so anyways, you said you're completely against marriage before 30 mm -hmm. and procreation in general. I'm sure Andrew has some thoughts on this, although <laughs> just for the sake of time, we can't linger too long, but so you're against marriage before 30 right? and you're against procreation. So having kids. I am. And I would say that's more res that opinion is more reserved for this generation for mm -hmm. the new generation or like you know the zillennials or whatever you want to call it. gen gen z um and the only reason why i say that is because Did fall on me? are you okay <laughs> i'm okay you're okay got like tanya harding oh. Oh, okay <laughs> i'm good yeah all right um you okay you sure yeah okay. thank you i i i i don't i don't like where we're headed as a society with with all this, like, the, the best word I can use is the snowflake mentality. Like, comedy is gone, you know? We can't be funny anymore. Comedians have a hard time being able to get up on stage and make fun of shit that everyone can relate to yeah, without the fear of being canceled. Resorted to those, like, exactly. self-deprecation jokes because you're only allowed to right. like, talk about like, yourself. Okay. But don't like you think own. that a lot of that is because female comedians only know how to talk about their vagina and that's it? I mean, I do oh, have a problem with that, but that I'm not one of them. I mean, those. that's like that's like 99% of female comedians. All they do that's is go not up fair. on stage and talk yeah. about their vagina. No, it's fair. They're they're pretty bad. They're pretty not Amy funny, Schumer and they pretty much talk exclusively about their vagina. It's very very odd. It's a very odd phenomenon. Some I actually didn't music. believe that until I went through Netflix and started watching female comedians. And I was like, really? That's all they talk about? <laughs> All right, well, I, you haven't heard any of my stuff, so, you know, to be fair. Yeah, 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 yeah sure. But, yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, you're not wrong. There are a lot of women who get up on stage and all they talk about is sex and, you know, how they get men to fuck them and whatnot. It's because that's all they can relate to. That's all they, that's all a lot of them are relating to as far as what they think is funny or what they find. Yeah, but they also the need to the entire well. comedy industry. What's that? All these female comics went through and me to the entire industry. They me to everybody. How? I mean, so I mean, you want to say something? How Wait, in the yeah, hell did yeah, Louis C.K. get canceled? They did. They went through and me too. The whole comic he quite uh, industry. That was, there was a bunch of female comics who were going around going, "Oh, I was sexually harassed by this guy, and this dude jerked off in front of me after I consented." But blah 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 blah. blah right. Blah. Yeah, that's after I consented. That's he the, asked them. That's and they still the shit. Him. That's the shit that bothers me, and that that goes back to what I was talking about: the victim mentality. How yeah, are so you? So women ruin comedy, is what I'm saying. They ruined it. They're the tone. <laughs> Policers. They're the yes. ones who get offended. They're the ones who are always whining about everything. They're always crying. It's about only the everything. women that they complain. They can't take a joke. Nothing's ever funny. What about gay Everyone's men? always yeah. a victim. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Don't like you. These that broad part. statements of saying men do this and women do that. It's just like diversity. It's I like, love I Bill like Burr. Like Yay, like diversity. Super, See what I mean? That's the whole super point, super right? The whole, the whole point of why it is He's that women favorite. get so offended. You can even have a conversation about general topics when I'm, no it's about diversity it's about inclusion it's about us being friends and holding fucking hands See, and singing I, kumbaya it's not about any of that I mean, shit that's like been the whole jokes are supposed to be thing. funny because they're Listen. a reflection of the truth of reality Correct. of society that's what makes them hilarious well, sick, women sick of destroyed time, I, all of that they destroyed it sick of time i've Sorry. got to move things on uh going to my notes here for bobby you uh okay you've been doing of for four years part-time cam girl gaming streamer for two former traveling stripper from 
when you were 18 <laughs> to 2020, uh, you are in an open relationship now for three years. On Twitter, are you you claim to be married? Well, you see, I'm like you, where I don't want to like get legally married, but in my heart, I'm married, and like that's just me. I don't want like because I'm not religious, and I'm also not into the government being in my shit, like you know. Mm -hmm. So I I say I'm married because I have so much faith in my relationship, and I think that it will last forever so i might as well just go ahead and start saying that he's my husband is it a common law marriage uh well we've only we lived together we moved in immediately um and things have been good like we literally hardly ever have any kind of fights and when we do we have good communication well how long yeah, let's let me try again uh, a different way how long have you been with this guy <laughs> only three years that's what he said not so not common law because i think that's seven it depends on where you're and at i don't live know together i think it's different in every different state so i have no idea yeah well, you said that you don't identify actually do we show that i don't think andrew's here he, he would very much andrew would very much like to know the status of the armpit hair yeah. oh it's alive and well but like it's it's not like I always have armpit hair. I do shave sometimes. Just like, you know, you, down there, you, I groom it just, differently. Can you show Andrew? There's a little bit of uh, toilet paper <laughs> particles from me, like, wiping my, like, sweat in the bathroom. Nice. <laughs> and uh, that's your thing. You have the, uh, there's a couple photos <laughs> on your Instagram. You got the armpit hair. The look I thought Andrew face. should know. I thought just so he has a better understanding of the dynamics going on here. Uh, there it is. So what's the dynamic? What is that armpit hair? Well, it's do? kind of... Well, you know, like, uh, you got the armpit hair and the blue hair. We might... Or purple hair, whatever color it is. You know, we might draw some conclusions. Maybe perhaps you're one of the free bleeders. You know what I mean? Like, we... <laughs> it, 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 there's kind of a stereotype that goes with the women who have the colored hair and oh, armpit yeah. hair. That are kind of raging, oh. raging feminist stereotypes. Losers, right? I That's kind absolutely of a, love She smells like patchouli. She loves men. I don't men. smell like no. patchouli. <laughs> Don't you ever say that about me? I'm Not since I was I'm like I'm 20, okay? okay. <laughs> but I used to love patchouli. Now I'm you do say patient. you don't identify as a feminist. You do believe, but you do believe in having equal rights. You have no real issue with patriarchy or more traditional roles. Men are supposed to lead and protect. What you dislike is misogyny, sexism, and the who is more oppressed or who is the victim pissing contest. It's comparing apples to oranges. Well, I'll play that game. Men are more oppressed than women, but I don't really feel inclined to go into it. But just throwing that out there. Anyways, I hate the argument, but I, you know, I will go into it if you want. But eh, well, if, maybe later. Let me get through the notes. I've you have a really bad date experience uh, for your first traditional dinner date. Oh wait, you don't want to go there. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. You said you didn't want to go there in the notes, so we won't go there. You don't think gender roles and patriarchal relationships are for everyone. There's definitely more submissive and emotional men, more dominant, grounded women who are ideal for those men. Those households tend to be more matriarchal. doesn't make it any less balanced. It's just different from what mo most people are used to. Take the parents from the Dancing for the Devil documentary. For, I, okay. It's a new documentary about like the, the TikTok Yeah, I dance saw a little oh, bit yeah. of that. Um, the father is very emotional, not very dominant. Mother is very sharp and intense and dominant. But they seem very healthy and happy together and raised very intelligent, yeah, successful so kids. Their kids are thriving. I mean, one of them might be in a cult, but like a yeah, lot of turned, people can be in a cult. And out sometimes great for it's her. a fake cult because yeah. it gets them money. Like, okay. I was in a fake cult before because it was financially beneficial to the community, but. You were in a fake cult? I only watched the, yeah. I only watched the first episode of that, so I don't know. It may Wait, very you well were, be Wait, you, you were in a cult? A fake one. What does that mean? What does that mean? What's a yeah. fake cult? Well, pretended to be like a cult. A, a, in Hawaii, I, um, I just flew out to Hawaii, started walking down the road. I had, like, no knowledge. And I come across a, <laughs> I come across, like, a hippie commune. <clears throat> like, a hippie commune, and they're, like, cool with nudity and stuff. I'm sorry. And the guy who owns it, his name is actually Jesus. It's not actually Jesus, it's Eugene. <laughs> but we call him Jesus, and we had, you know, we kind of like put on a show for our people that come to like visit the mm -hmm. commune and try to make it seem like super weird just because it's fun and because it got to us, manipulate people to, to join. Yeah, like the Discovery Channel and shit like came out mm. and would. All right. 
check it out just because cult. they thought yeah. it was a the cult. Discovery it Channel really came out You're to check cult. out your LARPing cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we basically were LARPing as a cult. So after yeah, it, cult. I mean, uh, in your other in your other notes, you said bowing is playful and kinky as long as the context is. But if there's a ba bad power dynamic and expectation that she's actually your property slave, no. Uh, so obviously you have some objections to my uh, preference for wanting a woman to bow. It depends on the context. That's what what's I said. The con what's the context? Well, what's the context for you? Because I don't know. I just it's cool, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I would bow, and I mean, as long as it's like playful and kinky, like I said, I think it's fun and. I would say it that's just, that's my frame for it. It's just a playful, endearing, it doesn't cute mean, thing. Yeah, it doesn't mean that much. I don't. I don't think it means that mm -hmm. much. What means more is how you treat her, and if you really do see her as like someone who's like really below you, who's your slave or your kind of like what your, your friend property. kind of like what your friend did to her. Both male of us friend. did it. Okay. Oh, both of you did it. <laughs> he was consenting. He asked us to, and mm. if, yeah, yeah, I only did it was, once. Was I was the like, one this in charge, really. Honestly. And so, like, you made him like do chores for you, work for you for free. I couldn't even get him to do that because, like, I'm, I'm just not that dominant can I, person. Can I, I couldn't even ask. Like, he never paid me because I didn't ask for yeah, money. But, I never got can I tell them what you made clean. him do? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, do it. Tell us. Do it. Do it. <laughs> she like walked him through the mall and made him drink his own cum out of a cup. <gasps> wait, in the mall? Yeah. I thought that was more wait, fun. Wait, wow. hold on. Yeah, wait, that's, that's more fun. Wait, 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 hold on. To see that. Now let me actually make a then. let me actually make a criticism here. While you two were consenting to that, all the other people in the mall were they not right. consenting. It was cum, though. Yeah, yeah but, they didn't know what it was. Yeah, but you walked him through the mall, so you're doing some like BDSM shit publicly. Those people are not, it's these people who like do that dog shit, like the walking the dogs in public. Do There's a weird, like <laughs> the I people in public are not consenting to that shit. Yeah. Let me and clarify. I, mean, I don't actually, like and I like think that. the BDSM, I, like men that I, can argue I think with. the BDSM community looks <laughs> down on people, people that do, do that shit in public. Yeah, they yeah. do. Because it's not consent. Right, right. because the, really get... these people in public don't want to see that yeah, shit. Yeah, reiterate that this was can back we, when we were like, I was like 18 children. I heard that right. You made a guy walk through a mall and drink his sperm? Yeah, and then I also made him uh, try on some panties and then go to the checkout and buy his own panties. And just to be clear, you have an issue with me wanting a woman to bow? Yeah, well, no, that's just about the slavery, the morality of the slavery and ownership of the person. That's really the problematic part. These girls, right? like, I agree. Crazy. I totally agree, and it was dumb of me to do that. I literally only did it once. <laughs> oh, I did it a few well, that's fine. You know, no, it it's not you like murder somebody once. Just yeah, one just time, once. no big deal. deal. It was actually funny. We had that. Girl you might have traumatized a bunch of children. You know that, right? Uh, well, they didn't. Like, we, they really didn't see. It. They didn't. Know. They didn't see a guy he crawling on the floor. The no, he no, wasn't like different. Crawling. I was the one crawling in that other scenario, but that was a different person that I was with doing the leash thing. Different. Do you have any? Re do you actually regret doing it to him? Do I regret doing it to him? I mean, I didn't necessarily like, it's not my kink, but I don't kink shame. I'll try most things once if it sounds interesting. And I was like, okay. Wait, he wanted you to do that? Yeah. Yes, he approached both of us with this proposition. Yeah, For me, he cleaned my there, house Andrew. and chastity and stuff. And, she made you know. him, so they both were involved in uh, essentially like, s this guy was a slave to them basically. He'd, He'd be getting off to this right there, there was He's no... Watching. He loved it. <laughs> yeah. Like, he proposed the idea. Are you guys into, like, yeah. Cleve Cleveland steamers and stuff? What is like that? that? Okay, let's what not talk about that. I mean, isn't that, that basically that. taking oh, advantage that's... of somebody who's clearly mentally ill? I mean, he's... Uh... Was he mentally ill? I mean... He's I mean, coherent. He's, he's very sick. He's probably that. Come one on. of the most let's intelligent people I know. Let's not kid ourselves. Um... I don't know. He's pretty normal, actually. I think he agrees yeah. with most of your takes. Really? It's just, it's just, well, he believes in, like, lizard no, people. No, he wouldn't agree with any of our takes. Mm -hmm. I promise I you promise that. I promise he does. No but guy. You, well, if he you does, you then the thing is, is that he's stories. LARPing. What's the real him? I think both things can The be. guy who agrees with Christian conservatism or the guy who well, walks through a mall drinking not, his own so sperm? He's not which, which is the real guy? He's not religious. He just holds a lot of, I guess, religious principles. Like, he thinks... Traditional gender roles are good. He thinks it's okay what? to date much younger women. He thinks. He thinks. Tra what? What? 
I guess not for himself. What, dyna- what of the dynamic that you I- explained earlier has anything to do with tra- t- traditional... You can support it for society, but not for yourself, you know? I mean, you don't think that a guy who requests that you do that is mentally ill? You don't think that I mean, he's, he's a little, definitely a little throat, but, like, he's a, a functional member of society for the most part. Like, there, I've definitely so seen bad. more throat people. So you don't people. feel bad about it either? <laughs> I mean, it's just in that uh, one it's interesting the women it. the women object to the bow thing but like they they would absolutely ba- like we've had girls who come on the show who are who do findom uh who's basically financial abuse and um they basically bankrupt men but somehow but I'm the, the bad like guy because I it. want a woman to bow. No, I, I don't I think do she that. was saying it was bad. She even said she'd do no, it. She's just saying as long Unless as you don't you really view them as that. like less than human yeah, and beneath you, you view them as a yeah, piece why of property even... that is less than you or like a slave do you want a submissive women, woman or do you want a brat in what context i do not like brats at all <laughs> i don't believe you What's you a like brat? to argue a lot well a no, brat is like trust me I they're like don't submissive like but they're gonna fight back a little bit and like make you yeah it's mm-hmm. like a sub thing of uh bdsm yeah so you don't mean like in the commons if you call it you know somebody a brat means they're acting spoiled rotten you know something like that so it doesn't mean that it's uh, some other kink <laughs> some other kink bullshit sort of i mean okay yeah it's kink bullshit okay <laughs> but they act no that way. to answer your question i don't want to burn it i don't you want just want like a fully submissive fully woman. fully submissive yep what what camps ethan what are you talking about? I mean, uh, much love. Own, I guess. I'll, read this. Uh, I'll read it while it's up. Ethan Knight, camps? much love. No. Actually, Maddie, can you read it? Much love and appreciation to the good intentions of your podcast, Brian and Andrew Effing Wilson, who is always the best on the show. Some of these women, though, would not have survived the camps. Thank you, Ethan. Can you hide it and then read this one? Number one rule to kink you don't expose non-consenting people to kink yep. stop <laughs> backpedaling with reasons why it's not so bad I didn't you, you basically essayed everyone who was around they didn't know doesn't excuse right mine yeah, was in private just by the way mine was at my house that, okay that's fine uh ethan thank you for that super chat man really appreciate it uh, i think that's my first time seeing you uh send in a super so appreciate your patronage man there's thank rules the king like what <laughs> there's yeah, rules there's, there's dude. Definitely what the rules. name of degeneracy is this shit <laughs> yeah. what, i don't do this do stuff anymore figure this out? i was never what, into you it you have consent forms for yes, you were. there's a, no, there's a book what's wrong with you Listen, andrew like a book you didn't know there's a book me to do that shit there's you, a book. Okay. So you had a man about, in the chat. Like, one hundred and one. Yeah, like <laughs> I experimented with a kid. It's in the college too, like, thesis. We weren't hooking up or anything, and I would never. How to be a degenerate scumbag. One hundred and one. <laughs> oh boy. Like, oh boy. Uh, anyways, uh, let's see. You said how could? Uh, wait, hold on. There's an honors one course more thing too. To say is, you know, a lot of men like to. It's mostly men who get those like plugs that are like remote controlled and like wear them around in stores and stuff. Girls don't do that like as much as men. They're really into like wearing butt plugs in public and stuff. I, well, that's what my subs like tell me. You know, I, I yeah, they're degenerate. Listen, they're fucking I live, degenerate. I live in, a lot of them are also married. I live in West Hollywood. She's not lying. Too, so they got a beard. Yeah, their, their, their values are, are just so high. Their wife is a beard. Their <laughs> wife is a beard. Those guys are probably. They're probably. They're hanging out gay? West Hollywood. They're hanging out I West Hollywood. I personally don't judge anyone's kink. Me neither, but I'm not kinking. Well, I, I don't know. Under that, you'll walk like them through malls and make them wear panties and drink thing. sperm. I'm sure you don't judge anybody's kink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be a pretty precarious branch to stand on, wouldn't it? <laughs> Did he pay you? No, I didn't ever ask for money. That's the uh-huh. thing, because I couldn't ask him for anything. like to, Because I'm also very subby. I don't want to... Yeah, it's so hard for me to even ask my subs heart. whenever I like need money. I'm just like, so uh... sort of. Okay, you said you've been the main provider in all your relationships. It's not a preference. I've just yet to connect with anyone who makes good money. Not a problem, but unfortunately, I've been used a lot. So now I have this fear of ulterior motives, much like men do with women. My recent ex, fiance, kinda had you paying student loans, truck payments, truck and motorcycle mods, regular and wilderness EMT courses firefighter training general credit card debt etc mm-hmm. and yeah he also runs a scam on the internet under a fake name he's literally a serial scammer so you're sugar oh, mama boy you yeah. picked you I, picked a good one like, eh? this was like the first guy that i dated who 
he was really just good at faking. He had this mask, but you know, because I have a very degenerate past. He was the first good guy, the one that I thought like I was doing the right thing. Like my parents would approve of this. Come to find out afterward, they were like, I always got a bad vibe about him. <laughs> But I was naive. I was like, oh, this you is... see like why you're supposed to listen to your parents? Do you see why you're supposed to listen now? They didn't tell me now? until after because they just That's thought why, I was happy and they didn't want to give well, me Yeah, but they didn't give Wait. her the information until after she broke up with them. So yeah. it's, well, it's but, a moot yeah, point. They should have, though. They should have. But you would have told her to ignore it. You would have said, ignore the advice. So, yeah. So listen, that's on you. How Wait. else, Wait, how else are you going to become a good human being until you learn how to not be a, well, you a bad adopt person. your ethics your morals and even your mannerisms from your parents your <laughs> your genetic copy essentially of your mom and your dad so the nature that they are is probably going to at least trickle down to you somewhat so if they have good ethics or good morals or the pillars of the community or things like that i would think that you would want kids to listen to them that seems wise like if they were, if they're successful, at, at least in some, to some degree. Now I would judge success as being something as basic as, um, you know, they go to work every day and they uh, they get by, and but they love you. That seems to, like success to me. That seems like uh, it's, it's something that most people can at least emulate to a degree. If Wait. I'm going to play the devil's advocate, though, if I were going right. to listen, or if, if most people listen to their parents, you wouldn't see a lot of the comedians who are comedians be comedians or actors be actors because those are frivolous jobs, you know. So there's things like that. Yeah, but this isn't a 1980s movie. Come on, where they're like, <laughs> "Where's the fucking right, money, point. Keith?" Right? Where they're where they're like, "No, you you know, I don't want. I want you to go to a business school instead of an art school." That's that, like that was all phony baloney shit. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, that was all deconstructing like society in the 80s. Anyway, due to, due to punk rock culture, most yeah. of the time, if you want to go to a good art school, your parents aren't like. No, that's not. That's just not really how it works in reality, honestly. They might give you advice to the contrary. Their but... meatball donated two hundred dollars. Yikes! Stay away from bums purple. Abuela, you can't keep saying people should not listen to parents when you are exhibit A as to why people should. <laughs> I'm not going to dispute that, but I'm not an abuela, stupid. What's a abuel abuela? Abuela is grandma. I'm not a grandma. Oh, you dumb fuck. Okay. Oh, he was like, he oh, probably shit, doesn't Mr. even Meatball. know what that is. Oh, he's trying she to say She called you a dumb okay. fuck. I did. Shots fired. Pa, 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 pa. Name 10 books. Going back to you. <laughs> uh, so this guy who you paid all this I'm shit for. I'm a Christian for. conservative. We can't read. Mm. Uh, meanwhile, he shamed you for how you made money, mm -hmm. and he ended up cheating on you with a nurse and got the clap. Ooh. Mm. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This is true. Yeah. Well, I was stripping back then. And then mm -hmm. after the thing that I can't mention, I started doing OnlyFans. And yeah, he did not like that I was a stripper, but he benefited from it. And he used the fact that it was a degenerate thing and like he didn't like <laughs> it. And I'm just a strumpet to be like manipulating me to feel she like watches I... the show she likes the show <laughs> he manipulated uh. me with you know just shaming me for what i do into making up for it by giving him all my money and i literally left that relationship with nothing i mean nothing. like i feel like i kind of i side with you on this one because like he can't be all bitching about your job while you're paying for all his shit. That yeah, part. And then like, he needs to, like, he pay really... for his shit or, like, and then he can I'm going to have to take you. a disagreement with Brian on this one. So, like, okay, I think he can. I think that even if uh, he's not working and you're supporting him, he can still bitch if you're a sex worker. I think that that's fine. Like, I don't, I don't actually have any objection to that. <laughs> I mean, he can just well, leave. Well, he though. shouldn't. Well, yeah, my my view is he he just shouldn't he have dated well. her. I mean, yeah, right. if, if he that didn't part. like it. Like if if yeah. so he I'm assuming from it until he didn't need me. Because like you look, told he watched him. the Julia he went Roberts and movie. The side okay, chick. pretty woman. He thought he could turn him out, right? So he bitched about it a little bit. That seems reasonable, right? Seems reasonable. Like why can't he? he why he can't really you bitch about it? Why can't you say, you know, I still would like you to not do that? Well, it wasn't even a moral thing because he was also very promiscuous. Um... Like, while you were, while you guys were together? Clearly, he was cheating. But we had an open relationship. Yeah, this but you didn't know my, he was cheating, right? This was like probably the most open relationship I had. He had, had no reason to yeah, cheat. Oh, she wait, literally oh, wait a second, wait a second. shared him all the you time. Clubs and you didn't know he was things. cheating, right? Um, I, had a, I had a suspicion because there were some things that were like little 
signs and you know yeah, but the you didn't in our but you didn't know and if you knew he was cheating you would have ended the convo or the, the uh, not the convo the, the relationship so you can't say he, well he know. was promiscuous I, if I he didn't panties, know he was promiscuous. but there was no like you know because we're supposed to talk to each other and be like let them know about our partners let like if i had a partner he knew about him if i was even just in a talking stage like talking on tinder with somebody i would be like hey i met this new guy who i kind of vibe with but he just did not tell me about this particular one at all and really denied it. But I knew that there was something going on because I was like, of those like weird some underwear. Things also, where you, like, <laughs> okay, hang on, hang on, I gotta ask. This is one of those weird things where you're like, we have the ground rules where as long as we just tell each other who we're boning, then it's okay. Yeah, it's one of those things. things. But oh, you, you didn't know. tell me, so you cheated? Is it one of those? Yeah, it's about communication <sighs> and honesty. And like, obviously, if there were somebody that we didn't feel comfortable with and we brought that up we would but this is while you're a sex worker right what why this relationship or this whole no, thing no i've been a sex worker since i was 19 but that's 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 where the hypocrisy comes in it's like you can't really expect him to just be monogamous if you're a sex worker. Well, we she weren't monogamous. Him to be monogamous. <laughs> that's the thing they is, had an that's another reason why, like, that he used to basically. But that make includes me feel telling bad you. about everything and like. Benza has no, every need and paid for everything he wanted. She, and I think your ex was a she bitch. Told him yeah, and then you finally was. figured and that out. Yeah, and I did not left his ass. I didn't leave him because of the cheating either. I didn't leave him because of the cheating because I don't give a fuck. I didn't give a shit. She doesn't give a fuck. I really don't care <laughs> about, about the cheating. It's, I just thought it was funny shit. to bring up because oh, she was a nurse and gave him and I chlamydia. Oh, you got the clap too? <laughs> well, I mean, nice. I was fucking my boyfriend. Good so, times. unfortunately, yeah. Times. I'm really happy you're with this one good now. Thank you. Because. <laughs> <laughs> what? You, he, gave you, he gave you the clap? Well, we were because fucking. you guys were. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's the only time I've ever had an STD. So, wow. Oh uh, no! I my just, many like, years of is being that, super is that, promiscuous. Is that like God's way of telling you serious, stop doing like, that shit? Do you think? So, so maybe God being like, you know, stop. But just stop. Just really, stop. Yo, Cut that shit out. you can get sick at the grocery store because someone sneezes on you. Like, stop going to the grocery store. Uh, like, all you have to do is go get a little shot and mm. or take. You know, you get an HPV vaccine and then you're good. Like, is that the case with HIV? Huh. Well, I'm not That's having HIV. That's why I made Gary get sick. Touche. Before oh, even uh, <laughs> let, I'll, like, fin I'll continue on with my HIV notes here. Movie. Andrew, I don't know if you saw this. I just wanted to bring Andrew's attention to this. Nick, could you show up the articles about the bear killing? <laughs> Andrew, Andrew's going to love this one. Not love it. You're talking about the uh, attacks that have been happening in California? Yeah, the, a woman, the first mm -hmm. ever black bear fatality in California, a woman was killed. It's kind of ironic. In, uh, it's like the, the timing with, with all the women very, picking yeah. a bear. The timing is impeccable. Stupid. Now, uh, going on to more notes from you, you said, don't hold body count against people. Even though I've been promiscuous in my past, I've become very choosy of who I'm romantic with now. In fact, I'd argue that my experience has made me even more secure in my current relationship because I know what I want and don't want. Well, couldn't you know what you want and don't want in a relationship without fucking? Huh? What? Huh? Well, like, you mean sexually? Or, because, I mean, that's the... Do you I'm mean still, sexually? I'm still confused about this question. Well, you said, um, in fact, because... Okay, you said don't so hold body count lots, against people. Well, what I said there, I think you're misunderstanding, was that I've had a lot of... Well, sexually as well, but, like, just with from person to person, their traits, their characteristics, and all that stuff, and, like, how we connect and just values as well like okay but so you said you'd argue that your experience has made me even more secure in my current relationship because i know what i want and don't want now you've become very choosy of who i'm romantic with now so you said you've had sex between like 50 and 100 people couldn't you like this experience you garnered in terms of what you want and don't want of all the people you've had sex with wouldn't you have gotten the same experience even if you hadn't had sex with them no well, I'm Why? not talking about sexual experience. I, I mean, am I, maybe I'm misunderstanding what you mean by experience and what you want and don't want. Mm. So what he's asking, the simplified version, he's just yeah, saying, thank you. 
Couldn't you have gained the same exact experiences with these people absent having sex with them? Mm. Why is the sex the important part of these experiences? Well, because it's, I mean, in a relationship, it's usually, well, there's a number of things that you would um, go outside of a relationship for besides sex. Um, so no, it isn't just sex. It's also a lot of other things, like the way they treat you, the way you communicate and all those things. But... I was doing those things with the other partners that I've had in my life. It wasn't just sex. So I learned a lot yeah, about myself. What he's, I learned what a lot about people and how they oh, treat me. And what, I don't know why it's not you know? reading. Purple, when you ran to the bathroom and started throwing up, <laughs> is it because you smelled your own rancid pits? Is that why the TP Chris Jenner did the blank try up before or after the surgery's roasts? I actually inhaled you, some Nicolodian. water. Name 10 books, Nicolo. <laughs> Thank you, Nickelodeon. Appreciate it. Oh, by the way, TTS is down. Says, forgot to mention, we've lowered it to 69. Uh, if any of you want to get one in before we wrap up the show. Uh, speaking of which, let me pull this up. Uh, Anonymous donated $100. Oh, Number one. one rule to kink, you don't expose oh, non-consenting right? people to we kink. We already read this? Okay, yeah. my bad. My bad. Uh, all right. Let's see. The last notes here we have. You had a tweet, and you said... TBH, I'm a cuck, so I like when my man gets pussy. Oh, wow. So you're a cuck Once queen. Again, you're a cuck queen. Only if it's under the right communication beforehand, and even when not, you know, it can still be kind of hot. Mm -hmm. It just depends on like a lot of different variables, and if you know, it feels. Mm. Cucky but wait, hot. so if the girl, like for example, if the girl's hotter than you. And he still tells you, but he has like a stronger sexual connection with her. Are you upset? Are you gonna get if upset? If the girl's hotter and he has a stronger sexual connection, yeah, um, yeah, of course it's but gonna why? be a little. But, but that's why he what talks to you? A cuck. But that's but, but he <laughs> told that's you about what? it. You he kinda... he gave you. He's like, hey, honey, I want to fuck this hotter chick. I I like her pussy better than yours. Is that okay? Um, sure. All right. You can't, a female can't be a cuckold. <laughs> Only men can be cuckolds. No, definitely. It, cuck is just There is a, a term, kink. cuck queen. Uh, okay. Yeah, I know. That's just, but it, it's, it, that's meaningless, right? The, the, the whole purpose behind the term cuck is that you could unwittingly be raising the offspring that is not yours. That's true. Well, yeah, for that's... women, the offspring's always going right. to be theirs. Yeah. They're not unwittingly ever going to be raising offspring well, which is not theirs unwittingly that can't have so there's just mm. there is no female cuck that's just nonsense talk right so then what is it is it just a cuck no yeah, what is her is, situation well, she's a voyeur oh well voyeur. any guy who's yeah, with her voyeur, is a cuck can, yeah. so if if a guy oh, is like sharing her he's a cuck watched, so. right she's a voyeur but the chick can't, yeah she's just uh you know what you would call a, I guess a strumpet right <laughs> that's strumpet. that's what you would yeah, you would just it call it call it that it. essentially. Oops. Uh, so hold on, we need to do some dating app review. Nick, can you pull up the dating app reviews? <laughs> uh, what's the tweet? Can you read it to me? <laughs> People are so stupid. Uh, we'll pull it. Yeah, we can do that really quick. I don't know. One of you posted this. Yeah. Actually, he who does not lick the clit should not get to hit. One of you guys tweeted this out Coochie or like reacted situation. to it. It looks like a cool party. Look at yeah. all the punks. They're like crusty. I love it. So going around the table, is, it, is it a deal breaker for guys not willing to uh, go down? I've had a guy that did not want to. And yeah, I don't, I there was a lot of other things going on. There sure. Too. I don't prefer it. Like it's not my favorite. It's not my favorite thing. So, I mean, I don't think I'd care that much, honestly. Okay. I don't care that much. I don't really care. Uh, it's a bit of a deal breaker. Ooh, that would be a deal breaker for me. I don't huh. care. Okay. It, I'm yeah. I'm indifferent. Like Anonymous donated sixty nine dollars. Your long term boyfriend is cheating on you, and all his friends know. Do you expect his <laughs> friends to tell you, Brian? How about name tags on the mic stands to easily identify guests? We've had this suggestion so before. Scary? It's we're not gonna we're not gonna do that, but I appreciate it. Um, yeah, that is a scenario I'm supposed to answer, I guess. Um, well, I think I'm pretty close with their friends. They might snitch, but they might not. Um, it's a strange question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they'd 
Probably. I'd like to think that they would. His friends tell the, you? Uh, the is chatter's that, asking that just the if they table? should. Should they snitch? Okay, your long-term boyfriend is cheating on you. All his friends know. Do you expect his friends to tell you? For underscore the underscore yeah, sure. patriarchy donated $69. <laughs> Question for the panel. Would you let your partner go to the strip club if they go for the wings and music? <laughs> Uh, okay, we'll come here. We'll do that one, then we'll come back to the cheating one. So, going around the table on this one. Yeah, I don't have a problem with him going to strip club. We go together. Mm, I don't care. I don't care. No, no comment. I wouldn't want him to go without me, but I took the last guy I dated to the strip club for the, his first time. Or was it As for like the wings date. and the music? Uh, no. <laughs> no. Okay. Yes, only for the wings and the music. <laughs> The salad bar. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, gosh. Ooh. Sometimes the food vibe. is good, though. My husband wouldn't go, so but I wouldn't care, honestly. I wouldn't care if he went. Yeah, would you let him read Hustler magazine because they just really like the articles? Absolutely. Well, it was the cover <laughs> yeah, of, of May. Course. So, Hustler magazine. He can, he can borrow mine. I mean, ideally, you'd pick a man that yeah. doesn't have an interest mm -hmm. in going re regardless. You can eat wings somewhere else. Uh, oh, and then really long-term boyfriend, all his friends know. Do you expect his friends to tell you? No. No. Yes. It's bro code. Yeah. It's against bro code. But they code. do tell us. Sometimes More they often will. Than not. If they're trying to fuck you. Yeah, they'd be snitching. Ooh. Okay. All right. Bros Move before True. bros before hoes. Okay. Um, They'll tell you if they're trying to smash them next. Exactly. Dating apps, yep. <laughs> Wait, which one is this? 10 out of 10. Is this zoomed out? <laughs> smash. Smash or pass? <laughs> oh, she's like Facebook Hard dating. Hard smash. Uh, it, I think you got to zoom. Can you zoom it out and show me, please? Or is that the TikTok sound? Oh. Yeah, that, okay. Well, I have it on the next one. I did it on purpose. What do you mean? But I, we need a, okay, that's fine. Uh, can you read this one, Alyssa? Just read your own um, <laughs> Based, I value intellect and c communication above all. I typically won't engage in small talk, but if you want to talk space travel, psychology, philosophy, etc., I'll probably bite. I have kids, and I'm open to having more. Um, my Insta is something like Clementine. Oh, and my love language is acts of service, so if you're lazy or don't have your life together, we won't vibe. And then I said, looking for a man in tech, green eyes, trust fund, six plus. And then I said, it's a TikTok reference, totally not serious, lol. Yeah, lol. the song goes hard. Yeah, it's just a funny reference. Your love language is acts of service. Yeah. My so confusion with the act with the love languages is there's does it physical mean what you want? Yeah. Or how you express both. It can be but most of the time it's in reference to what you expect. Um, mm -hmm. men tend to be physical touch or acts of service. Or actually maybe men are more like physical touch and words of affirmation, I think. Mm -hmm. Um Acts of Service is where it's And I just put that because the last guy that I was that I interacted with was super lazy. And like, I take care of two toddlers alone, keep a spotless house, cook, mm. work multiple jobs. So I'm very driven. I cannot carry, some, like, I just feel like as a man, how, you're probably like a bum if you can sit there and watch someone that you claim to care about struggling and you're not naturally inclined to help. Because I would never watch a man go through it and not, you know, have the empathy to to help him like i would take it upon myself you mean like the vast majority of women i don't know i'm not the vast majority of women so i can't speak for them but so wait so he wouldn't what clean up after your toddlers yes yeah no 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 like okay like one day um my air conditioner like i needed more freon i needed to charge my air conditioner in the car and like i you're not useful to me as a man if i'm doing that and taking care of kids and cooking and cleaning. Like, that's something you should be doing, I feel. I support gender roles. I'm totally fine keeping a clean house, looking hot for you, bearing babies. I don't think every relationship should be like that, but I tend to prefer that, the, you know, the more biblical type of thing. Um, so, like, if you don't have a job and you're not driven, you don't have any goals or aspirations and you're just lazy and you just sit around and do nothing, that's not attractive to me. You didn't have a job? No, not really. I can't like disclose too much because then it'll be obvious who I'm talking about. Um, so didn't you choose him? <laughs> no, no. Once I realized that he was like that, I was like, this is not going to work out. 
Okay. The example of why he was lazy is because he didn't recharge your AC with Bucky Freon. Larson donated he just $70. Did nothing ever. Purple hair girl, catching an STD is not appealing. Please stop being a strumpet. Question for the ladies. If a man is the provider in a marriage relationship, is he the prize? Sure, we'll go around the table on this. Go ahead. Hell yeah. Yeah, I think so. I don't know, yes. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Assuming he's like good to you otherwise as well. Like, cause you can be a provider and be a piece of shit and yeah, then I'm still gonna divorce you. Over your head or mm -hmm. anything like to do crazy stuff. Yeah. Is he yeah. the prize? That's the question. I don't. I think we could both be the prize, but. I mean, uh, was there another tab on the dating one from her? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or is that the only thing? The, the whole lazy guy thing? <laughs> yeah. And uh, like you have, like the, my main thing is that you have to be intellectually stimulating for me. Wait, so what do you want? In a guy? You, I want in, someone who's intelligent and like I don't expect anybody to take care of me, but I don't want to have to take Did, care of them either. Okay. But mostly I want someone who's like I love to debate and I like somebody to teach me things. And like I wanna I want who I'm around to be better than me so that you I wanna, can grow. Like debate you with like your debate? partner. Yeah, it's exhausting. I mean, not all the time, but yeah. Yeah, that's fun stuff. Oh, I yeah. hate that. I just love to explore <laughs> not necessarily debate, debate, but I like to explore intellectual no, topics Ryan. together. Yeah. Why, why? Even if you don't have a disagreement, you can just- Hold on, stop, go ahead. You said you don't like when people debate with you. I, I mean, we know, it's obvious. Just say. What? <laughs> what? Say the spicy thing that you were gonna say. <laughs> what spicy thing? I don't know, it's really spicy. Tech underscore peach underscore eater donated $69. <laughs> Six feet one inch in tech, six figures, skateboarder, I eat peaches on first date, and you are banging. <laughs> oh my god, well I don't sleep with anybody on a first date, but um, get tested and if, you know, we're You've vibing. Never, have then you maybe. ever had a one night stand? Yes, once. Have yes. you ever, have you ever slept with somebody on a first date but continued seeing them? Yes, but this is all prior to becoming a Christian mm. too. What denomination again? I mean, I know y'all push for this. I mean, I just, I, you could say Protestant, I guess, but yeah, really I just, I just like okay. read, like I interpret the Bible. Wait, I don't so really subscribe are you to... waiting until marriage to have sex? No. Well, so what, why, hold on. <laughs> I'm not saying that I'm a perfect Christian and that I uphold all the well, values. Well, no, but why, but... So, hold on, hold on. If the reason you no longer sleep with someone on the first date the justification, the pretext is you citing to Christian values. Sure, but if you wouldn't look at the biblical ultimate, times, hold on, wouldn't the ultimate manifestation of that be waiting until marriage? Sure, but so if you why, look at the context of marriage within biblical times, they weren't like having a court officiate a wedding. You know what I mean? Yeah, the church did. Is the church officiating your wedding? I don't know. I, like, I wouldn't actually be opposed to waiting. This is why you shouldn't just... debate. You're bad at it. So you have the guy who's, good, you know, probably a lot worse at, at, at debating, Whatever. honestly. Whatever. <laughs> I try to uphold as many of them as I can, but, I, you know, I'm not going to be perfect at it. There's, I don't think anybody can pretend to be. Yeah, but perfection's not the point of Christianity or Christian ethics. If you're talking about Christian sure. ethics, though, if you're trying to uphold not being promiscuous because you think that that's part of divine command, then just not sleeping with a guy in the first date really doesn't have anything to do with it. It's basically mm -hmm. skirting the whole point of what that divine command is, isn't it? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's not the only reason I don't sleep with someone on the first date, but I do yeah. try. That's what you cited to. I do try. That's what yeah, you, that's what you to. appealed to, though, was your Christian ethics. Okay, fair. No, it's like, okay, by the third date, then we'll sleep together. And it's like, no, okay, just, like, but that kind I'm of defeats gonna, like, the whole point of the ethical standard. I'm not going to, like, just hook up with people randomly. Like, I just, once we're in a monogamous commitment, really? I guess. That's, yeah. Really? Yeah, how lately. long does that typically take? It, Months? I mean, it can vary. Months? It can vary. Like You're really telling me that the last guy you had sex with, was it, were you guys in a monogamous? Yeah, we agreed from the very beginning that if we sleep with other people, we're going to tell each other. Big Smoke we'll donated $69. Mommy milkers. Big, big mommy milkers. Big, big huge milkers. And huge, big milkies. Why are you covering uh, the, up now? So They've the last the whole time. question for you. The last guy that you had sex with, how quickly did you sleep with him? I think like the second or third time. 
Yeah. But we talked for a while before. Okay. Like, he actually was asking me out multiple times before I finally went out with him. Yeah. And we agreed, like, immediately. Like, I'm not going to sleep with you if you're sleeping with other people. If you decide to, that's fine. Just Mm -hmm. clue me in because I don't want to catch a fucking STD. I just, like, what actual Christian ethics do you adhere to? (laughs) I'm definitely very forgiving. Um, I have forgiven my husband for a lot of things. Um, I try not to, like, I don't feel like it's my place to judge anybody. I yeah, but I Christian, try to watch my Christian tongue. ethics have nothing to do with not judging people. Mm, judge not that you may not be judged, or like you know, watch the that would the, just that would just be a the, standardization. Pick the right? log so out of you your eye to, before you point out. Yeah, the yeah, but, someone but don't you understand that that's a standardization? So that's 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 actually giving a standard for which to judge. Okay, yeah. Saying, okay, okay, yeah, that's what it's doing is giving a standard for which but to judge. But it also talks and, about like you know, like you're not going to sit here and judge somebody for the shit that you're doing. Yeah, why couldn't you? Because it, it says, worry about the log in your own eye before you try to point out the splinter in someone yeah, else's but or something. D- 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 just so you understand, an appeal to hypocrisy, if you're going to argue something, one of the weakest forms of argumentation to say it's because it's, it's actually fallacious. It's called an appeal to hypocrisy. So just pointing out, well, let's assume for a second that a serial killer told you that it's bad to kill people. Hmm. He would still be right, but he would be a hypocrite, right? So the thing is, is um, when you're structuring arguments, you don't want to think about what could or could not be uh, hypocritical from the person's angle. When you're talking about judgment, though, you use judgment all the time. I mean, you have to. Just to get by in life, you have to use judgment sure. constantly. Sure, yeah, I mean, to some degree. So, yeah, to but some I'm not degree. So the thing on... is, is like you judge people constantly. I mean, if you see somebody who looks sinister, you probably stay away from them. Right, or, um, but that's why I specified things that ways you I'm judge also people. doing. I'm not going to judge What's someone. That? I'm not going to judge someone for things that I'm also doing. Yeah, but I don't understand why that makes it better. Because it's That's the thing I don't get. I don't understand how that is the perception of the Christian that ethic. That is li- That if you're a sinner and you're judging other sinners that that somehow makes your sin less bad. That's what I don't get. No, I don't think it makes your sin less bad. I'm just Right. So then so then why why is that part of this kind of ethical framework that you have of but I don't judge because I'm doing the same thing? That doesn't seem like it's in the spirit of that ethic, Handsome donated $69. Almost to whatever first, all these lovely ladies without visible tattoos are piercings. You don't realize just how beautiful and amazing you look. The exception gets a pass from me. Uh, okay. I think. Yeah. Not sure what that means. Uh, he likes that you guys don't have tattoos, I, I guess. Okay. Thank you. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, let's do the other dating app. Uh, this is Sky. Uh, okay, this is your hinge. Scroll down. Next. Let's debate this topic. Adult circumcision. <laughs> I love that topic. Uh, what, just really quick, what's your position there? Um, for or against circumcision? For. You're for circumcision. For adult this circumcision. Adult. Oh, adult. Uh, wait. So like them deciding for themselves. Yes. Gotcha. Oh, so you're against child. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Next. Uh, okay. Uh, next. Next. You won public. Okay, cool. Congrats. Next. <laughs> it's fake. A social cause I care about. This one's interesting. Environmental that? racism. What? Environmental racism what is, that? is like redlining. It's okay, the practice you. of where um, certain minority groups are living in areas mm. that yes. uh, have higher pollution um, and don't have investment from the community in like grocery stores. They're like food deserts, stuff like that. So yeah, it's always been mm-hmm. that way, like everywhere. It's yeah. So horrible. that's a cause that I care about. Are there any more, Nick, or is that it? <laughs> okay. That's my cat. Well, my parents' cat. That's a sweet little <laughs> proper dating app. Uh, what was the other? Was there something else we had to do, Nick? Oh, we'll do that really quick. Sure. Warlord69, you were donated $69. 
Maddie, where the heck is my man Gus? He Andrew, died. great to see you again. <laughs> Keep destroying the clap before it happens to name. others. Ladies, Bear or Mr. Yeast, the English simp? I don't get it. Mr. Ooh. Yeast? I don't, know who, I don't know who that is. Mr. Yeast, the English simp. I think he's talking about Bevo. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who that Fuck is, but I'll guy. take him over a bear. <laughs> Freak that guy. You might take the bear over Bevo. <laughs> and... I'm trying to think what the other thing is. Uh, that, that's how we should frame that question from now on, Brian. We should say the bear or Bevo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I agree. Bear or Bevo. Um, we were going to do Bumble, the Bumble segment, really quick, but I got to wait until all the girls are back to do it. So, uh, What's up, Nick? They need y'all. Oh, Bucker. Yeah, pull up Bucker. Come on. Dating, wait, dating harder? Oh. Uh, that was that could be related to the burden component that we we're talking about. Just pull up Bucker. Uh, this was kind of funny. Feminists warn young girls against marrying rich, muscular football stars who love them and take care of all their needs and praise them in speeches. Uh, so this is basically like he had this speech, me and Andrew reacted to it. Uh, Saying that, that, uh, what did, I forgot precisely what he said, but basically he was saying that women are happiest, I think, as mothers and taking care of the household sort of thing instead of like working some job. I think that was the, that was the, the, uh, and that they don't have many options after uh, college. Mm. So I thought that was funny. That was from the Babylon Bee or whatever. Uh, once she's back, we'll do the Bumble segment, then we'll probably wrap up the show. Uh, I guess we could do a brief roast section. I don't know. I need to put mod delay on if we're going to do it, though. So um, uh, we need mod. Roast section? <laughs> yeah, we need, we, need a, we need a roast section. What was the thing that you were going to say and then the TTS came in? <laughs> saved by the TTS? Something about something that I said? Oh, you don't like to debate or something. Oh, She's like, well, yeah, you know, I don't, I'm I don't debate get, with what, you. Like, what was I the uh, what was the own? She was like so proud. Of, she was, she like, was so proud. I don't know and, why. I mean, it's uh, true. You like turn also. off mics and shit when they don't agree with you. <laughs> no, Somebody, someone, when they won't bow. Someone paid for that. Someone paid for yeah, that. Someone paid for that. Like five hundred dollars. Yeah, he paid. Yeah, yeah. In, is that is that weird in a relationship to not want to debate? With, I think like, it is. Actually, Jordan Peterson has it. a talk on this where he says yeah, you I want disagree. someone to contend yeah, with. Yeah, I disagree. No. I mean, if you want to like stay one dimensional, Jordan. by all means. But I want to know when I'm wrong. I want to be able to, to grow with and being evolve. One dimensional. Yeah, and I don't think it has anything to do with being right well, or wrong. Okay. Well, then you're wrong. Now grow from this. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I don't debating. Think I'm wrong on this I don't. One. I don't want you to be one dimensional. I want you to be three dimensional. What are, What are the three dimensions? Being a person. Oh, what, the, what What are the? You mean? What are, What are you asking me? What are the three dimensions? They know if like the three dimensions stood for something, or if you were referencing like three dimensional reality. No, you said you said I don't want to be one dimensional. Right. So I, was, I was doing a play on words. Was that, but, you know, is that it's, it's why, like, like guys that's, maybe that's are not all. always funny? Not everybody could be a comedian? I mean, it is if you understand it. If you understand. Or maybe. Yeah, maybe. but I mean, you have to be seeking that high-level intellectualism that you're seeking so much, right? <laughs> I really do. No, I actually love things like this, believe it or not. Like, we all have, like, holes in our awareness. Nobody knows everything. And I think being able to bounce ideas off of people and disagree is good for humanity. And I think it's something that society yeah, has become against. Yeah, I think it's great against. for humanity. I just don't think it's great for relationships. I don't think that don't debating... Think so? Uh, no. so debating is no. contentious, right? It, I don't think the it has to idea, be... You can have an idea behind debate where you're just trying to get to the truth. That's true. But debate's also utilized as a weapon. It's a weapon which you can defend yourself or you can assail other people verbally. And inside of a polite society, that's basically what you're anybody. left with. 
That's basically what you're left with, right? Is uh, it's a form of uh, verbal judo, let's say. I mean, I guess I it would just not, that, on that how sounds you exhausting it. in a relationship, right? No, for me, it's just like if we have differing ideas, I just want to discuss each stance and like help each other deeper understand one another's perspective. And then maybe like you change your mind, maybe I change mine, maybe neither one of us do, but then we better understand the other person's position. And I just I like to really explore ideas that way. Stacy for Senate donated sixty nine dollars. Hmm. She doesn't like debate. She likes head games and word vomit. Also, is there a bra shortage in California? Where can we donate to help? I can't remember You can donate to brain shortage. All my exes should fans, comment so and on this there. fucking thread. And, and I was actually having a conversation with somebody about this. Honey Bardet set? Okay. Honey Bardet set? Mm-hmm. Isn't it the case that, wait, if you wear a bra, does it lead to less sagging or more sagging? More. 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 Yeah, okay. you can't have Good to know. You cannot have that. Not with these perfect. Okay, yeah, don't, yeah. please don't do that. <laughs> I literally have nothing. I'm squeezing on nothing. Yeah, at least I said yiddies. Um, um, but yeah, it's any, also got any final health thoughts risks. from any of the panelists? We'll do a short row session and then we'll wrap up. Maybe Andrew, do you have a question? I do. I do have one. I've been kind of patient here in my notes. Um, if you'll humor me. So, um, let me, let me pull it up and on my screen, I wrote it down earlier. Uh, what would make you stop only fans forever? That's the question. Um, just finding a new, like, an interest or a job avenue that I want to pursue. I definitely would, but I just, <laughs> I haven't found anything that I want to do more, so. Is it because it's easy? It's definitely not easy. You don't think uh -huh. being on, Only Hands, on OnlyFans is easy? No, I work literally, mm -hmm. like, all the time. Yeah, and it's it is. All it's the an time. emotionally laboring job too. Like, How's I'm it emotionally laboring? I'm literally playing therapist for half of people that I talk to. It's emotional labor too because we're actually, like Brian said, providing a girlfriend experience, and that is you giving mm. a bit of your. If but it's, it's so fake. hard, then why do it? Yeah, it's fake. It, well, you're not really being their girlfriend. A you're lot not... of jobs are hard. You have to make money and have a living, and like. So then, what you were actually saying is that. that Comparison to other jobs, it's as you. easy, but you, it's easy money, right? It is. No, Comparison to the money. work. That is a common misconception. So you mean getting naked on a camera where it doesn't require any actual real brain power because you're not, you're not curing cancer, you're not you know, building houses, you're not doing construction, you're not but healing like, someone it takes about as much jobs. brain power as comedy. being a doctor is a, ma a masculine job being, like you might being, being a doctor I mean, yeah, is a masculine take as much brain power as comedy what's that well, well i'm not just a comedian I'm, I'm a writer and a podcaster as well and i have a real yeah, job and i won't talk about it on the show because i don't need to everybody to know where account. i work but i have a real big girl I mean, job i think it probably is though guys I think drop a comedy, like on the video please drop i think a like comedy probably would be harder than only fans work yeah I think they're both Depends think on how you are. approach it. She really does like a bunch of editing and photo shoot type yeah, stuff. I do all my mm -hmm. own editing, all my own everything. Marketing. Uh, nice. uh, heads up, guys. Marketing. We've dropped the TTS to 25. We'll do a short oh roast segment. Uh, oh, warning. I have uh, unlimited moderation delay on this. So <laughs> uh, last show, I didn't have to reject any of the roasts, but I'm warning you that it is uh again last show i'd let all of them go through but if any of them are like tos or like you're insulting anybody's appearance i'm not going to play it if you want to roast what somebody said or you know if it's kind of on the more playful side that's okay but if you're actually like insulting anybody's appearance or you're doing anything tos or you're being uh egregiously vile in some way i'm not going to play it but like I said, I'm pretty open with it. So if you guys want, we're going to do a $25 TTS. Ladies, you may want to have a drink for this. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> but also, Andrew, oh, speaking of which, I do OnlyFans too, and 
Uh, I'll Hold be on. done once I have enough money to buy. Yo, Mr. Their album Apple Apple donated $200. Good idea. Great yeah. show. Good to Glad see you, man. Thank still you. Good going to see you strong. back in the chat. Bro. Blondie, you got potential. Purple, stay away from bums and open relationships. And the rest of you, good luck. Abuelita, yikes. Thanks for that. Hey, old man Marine. <laughs> I probably um, fucked your father then. <laughs> what is that? I, I, I'm not respect. confident that's the own you think it is. Uh, old man Marine, I'm very sorry, but uh, your chat yes. is not appropriate. Uh, uh, I guess we can. This one's kind of okay. If you if you have an Couch I guess, underscore I hopper underscore outdoors donated twenty five dollars oh, to the soft three in pink. Do a pit test now on the gross chick with the poo story. What poo what? story? There's a poo story involved too. Someone threw some. Six thousand oh. nine hundred and sixty-nine. Blah blah blah. Sixty-nine donated twenty-five dollars. Shares one, two, and three are prostitutes. <laughs> three is just a former prostitute, as she had an only simps page. Pros middle dot t middle dot tute. A person, in particular a woman, who engages in sex activity for payment. Shout out E Z. <laughs> Nickelodeon donated $25. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know why you're throwing me shade. I'll name 10 books when you can name three science slash tech books. The Demon Haunted and World by the Carl Sagan. Cosmos by Carl Sagan. The Future of Humanity Psycho by Michio Kaku. Psycho donated $25. To the blonde girl. Is it cold in here, sweetheart? <laughs> it is now. Because <laughs> it's nighttime and I think it's brick here. <laughs> <laughs> Ripped Rich and Rare donated $25. Fat boy Andrew needs whatever Brian can scrape up. He's a bag of trash with 10 inch arms and big tits. Fat has crossed over gender barriers by growing tits. Titties. Boobs. Tits. Newbies. I see my pants are out there. The <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> Raven Simp donated $25. I don't think Raven Haired actually likes debating. I think she likes conflict and men being aggressive. Notice how today she refused to say I'm wrong. Lol. I conceded multiple times. Did you? Yeah. She did. You didn't concede? I did. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. Only she did. Mm -hmm. You did. Yeah. yeah. Not really. Yes, I did. Well, but if I like, frustrated. there's some things I'm not gonna just bow on. There, but there's I gave, data to I back gave it up. Multiple <laughs> rewatches. Yeah. Do, do we have a study that you conceded? <laughs> Gr Gracie donated twenty five dollars. Quote underscore ladies underscore end quote. If a guy treats you badly, not physically abusive, but word on the street is you sort of deserve it. Is he really the bad guy in this scenario? No. PLS help donated $25. Hey, Brian and Andrew. 29 year old, I own my house, make $100,000 a year, two kids. I work in mental health and was left after six years of marriage. Any advice on how to move forward? Well, I'm sure wherever you work, you'll get a discount, so I wouldn't worry about it. <laughs> uh, any advice on how to move forward? Left after six years of marriage. Got to get, get back, back on the saddle. Yeah, you got to find a new woman. Is that is that Brian's Clint Eastwood impression? I have no idea. I don't know what <laughs> I, I don't no know idea, what I was going for. Collect your net donated twenty five dollars. Alyssa, I didn't say we would have sex first date. Mm -hmm. I would bite them peaches in a lady's room. That's <laughs> all. <laughs> Six thousand nine hundred and sixty nine blah 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 sixty nine donated twenty five dollars. There is no difference between regular pron and your only simps page. Trying to argue there is, is just cope. Not only are you doing pron, but you are also a prostitute. Yeah, Renee and Eat thirteen donated twenty five dollars. <laughs> you hussies need to get your shit together. Let the patriarch <laughs> fix you. Who's the patriarch in this I situation? I thought it didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Who is he the patriarch? He likes to be tied up, I promise you. Brian's Lint Roller you. donated $25. Back to low body count. An example that modern men care is Jake Paul versus Dennis. Jake was bullied for his wife's promiscuous past.
men wouldn't have weaponized this info if they didn't think it mattered. Jandar donated $25. Maddie is queen. And men definitely prefer low body count. Facts. Goes Logan Paul. I don't think that's a roast. I think that's just a opinion. Yeah, what? Well, they don't have to Ulysses do a roast. Ulysses the pagan donated twenty-five dollars nice to the pro-life talk earlier. The panel claimed the right and free will for females, but they don't extend those same rights to the female within the womb. Mm. This is a great point, by the way. Mm. Well, Swanson everybody donated twenty-five dollars. Saying that OF is harder than being a comedian is ridiculously dumb to say. Thank you, Swanson. Any video of yourself being naked and telling sweet lies to simps cannot compare to trying to make people laugh live. Thank you. reverse card then. Nickelodeon donated $25. <laughs> Would you say claiming Twitch is commercial free? Or subs are bugged when they aren't is comparable to an of model using ghostwriters? I get the sarcasm, just don't mm. want you to feel left out, Brian. Well, I actually did turn off the pre-roll ads and the uh, mid-roll ads on Twitch because, uh, I mean, the, I don't make much on ads on Twitch anyways, and I was like, I'd rather like have higher audience retention than just make a couple, yeah. like a uh, hundred bucks a show or whatever from Twitch. So, uh, and then the Prime thing, that's just, I mean, that's me joking, obviously. I'm, uh, I guess I'm baiting a little bit. I don't know. Uh, thank you, man. Uh, okay, we have. Psycho donated $25. Brian, I felt it necessary to inform you that I find you Bro. to be utterly atrocious for your like of wizard sleeves. <laughs> you freak. Listen, me and Andrew, as we're both, you know, I'm the founder, but he's on the board of directors. Mm -hmm. We will not stand for your bigotry and your <laughs> hatred towards women with Audis and large labia. Andrew is, he's... He's on the board of directors. He won't stand for it either. Right, Andrew? <laughs> Anyways. Uh, yeah, I disavow. Disavow. Dis I 100% disavow. Yeah. Where the Any roasts? But the one point of contention where, that me and Mr. Atlas roasts? have all the time is I do not it believe that. It was super mild. Someone give a roast. I do that not be believe that, well, Brian. I haven't gotten a single I don't. Roast. I don't disavow. believe that big labia is mad. Anybody here have an Audi? Yeah. Just curious. So one point of contention. <laughs> Any Audis at the table? Are you circumcised? Uh, if I answer, will everybody hear? <laughs> Fuck no. Are we talking about belly button? Like beautiful. An Audi? Audi? What? What? Labia. Audi labia. No. I'm just curious. Yeah, that would be so uncomfortable. <laughs> to have an Audi? Yeah, to especially sit. as a runner. That would, that would like ruin my life. I'm great. Okay. Um, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> what? Let's play the oh my game. god. Uh, yeah, we can't do that. Sorry, bro. Sorry. Uh, and also, if there's any cursing, uh, we can't. Oh. Bretimus underscore Maximus donated $25. Purple hair, you said you're playing therapist to many men on your of when you were questioned on what it would take for you to quit. What if I told you that you could do it for just one man, husband? Ooh. Raven Simp donated $25. That said, I'd love to try to date. I mean, debate Raven. XD, I'll be in the Instagram DMs. I can tell you love the attention. Especially when guys mention your peach. Long. <laughs> Old Man Marine donated $25. Andrew, what's wrong with you today? You were way too nice tonight. Did you get your rocks off before you came on? Spit that fire. We love it. My apologies, Brian. You're not that fat lol. <laughs> well, okay, Bucky so... Bucky Larson donated $27. Of girls, you <laughs> shall bow to Brian right now or else he'll turn into a grizzly bear. <laughs> you think you could survive Brian the grizzly bear? <laughs> Russ donated $25. Patriarch here, just sending love to Bobby Babe for tolerating these cringe lords vote yay. <laughs> Oh my god, hi, I love you. Is that one of your OnlyFans sims? No patriarch would ever. I don't know John the Wise Stoshi donated $25. <laughs> Raven hair. The show isn't over yet, but I am already cheating on you. You are a oh blabbering no. know it all, think you are always oh correct, shit. and you never rest TFU. Better get help. Sort of. 6,969 oh. blah 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 69 donated $25. Now for fun, mommy milkers, mommy milkers, motorboat. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Nico 
Nickelodeon donated $25. You're not worth a roast, Blondie. I forgot you were there. Oh, damn. Damn. Hey. Boom roasted. I'm Boom. Mean. That is a good roast. Actually. Boom. I can't stop Boom. looking at her in the monitor. Because then she doesn't know I'm looking at her. You mean JP yourself? donated $25. <laughs> Brian, try to be productive by being collaborative rather than combative. You act personally offended every time you are challenged. It's immature. Try to conduct yourself better. Shut up, Sam. Free Ragnaros tone policing. Shut Lord up. Fire donated $25. Brixen, if you treated that dumpy like a raid boss, you could get rid of it in one raid tier. The loot that drops is a plus 10 stam buffer. <laughs> Ragnaros <laughs> Lord of Fire donated 25 He did it twice. Uh, you can pull those up, Nick. Guys, we're, it's just through uh, Streamlabs if you want to send a message. We're not doing reads. Um, uh, yep, yeah, okay. Max. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. If you guys want, you can get your last minute uh, messages in there for the rest. We're going to wrap up here in a few minutes. And uh, I'm trying to think what else there was to uh, talk about. I hit all my notes. We did all the dating apps. Oh, we didn't do the Bumble segment. Okay. Uh, we'll have the girls do, uh, you get 20 swipes each. Mm -hmm. This is good to do at the end. I like this. And uh, we'll see uh, what your type is. We need like your dating age range. Yeah, also. age range. You get like so. I would say, thirty-one to fifty men and women. Is that allowed? <laughs> uh, I think we can only do men. Okay. Wait. So, thirty to fifty. Thirty-one to fifty. It's not. Okay. It's not like a non-negotiable. I, I would go for an older or a younger guy, but F eleven, please. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Does it like show their bios? Oh, you just I mean, get the first no, picture higher. looks. Yeah. Okay. okay. So yes or no? no? I'm not into the fedora, but he's cute. No, <laughs> the fedora was a deal breaker. Yeah, no. Ten yes, I, I like him. Yes, um, definitely. Yes. 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 We're pausing the TTS for just a moment, but you guys can send them in, and I'll get to them in a He's bit. He's making like the silliest face. I can't tell, but um, I'll go with no on the safe side. Yes. Mm, no, not for this. Um. I don't know which one, which so one? no. <laughs> Just choose, like, the hottest one if there's, like, That's multiple gone, guys, guys in the picture. Um, Time uh, yes, I want this guy in the bike. Hell yeah. Um, no, I don't like his facial hair. Uh, yes. Yes. It kind of looks ai -y. Yes, right? it looks like young Andrew. <laughs> um, no. 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 Yes. Mm. No. <laughs> Is that 20? Like a, okay, a no. Not right, for this nice. one. We're going to go with you next. In your age range. What's your age range? Uh, 20 to 35. Ah, that's mine too. <laughs> I'm 22. <laughs> so. Red. No. 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 <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. No. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's cute. <laughs> No. No. Sure. <laughs> sure. No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. The cat's cute. No, he's peeing in that. That's a no. Hard no. No. Who's next? Age range? Um, let's say twenty nine to 
try and play footsie with you. <laughs> I'll give like <laughs> No. Yes. No. Yeah. No. I, no. <laughs> no. 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 Yes. No. 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 Yes. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. That's like a good time. No. No. Um, 24 to 32. Yes. No. 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 <laughs> yes. I have travel guys on here. Mm -hmm. Yes. Who sings for hers? Yes. Not enough dad bods. Yes. Which one? Is, uh, it, is it a two for one deal? Uh. <laughs> no. What kind of picture is that? Yes. Who's rock climbing? Uh. You don't even know who it is. Just say yes or no. No. Kyle. Sure. Sure. Is it you? Yes. Yes. Uh, no. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. 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 And no. Was that all? Yes. Smile, man. Daddy, Alex, Daddy. Alex, Daddy. <laughs> together. What's up, Jesse? Yes. <laughs> Squid. Yeah. Age range? Um, 38 to 50. Ooh. 38 to 50. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. You gonna go on the Golden Bachelor? Maybe. <laughs> Perfect match <laughs> oh. into the mic if you can just say yes or no no i can't see his face well enough no yes 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 no 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 yes no. No. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Too daddish. No. Yeah. No. No. Uh, 28 to 37. No. 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 Yes. No. Mm, yes. No. No. Yes. No. No. Nope. Yes. No. No. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Everybody had such different taste. Mm -hmm. My yeah. taste didn't even come up on there. It wasn't even like overwhelmingly <gasps> like yes Eric or no. Foreman or a single mm -hmm. Were they from picky the or what do you think, Madison? Not as piggy as like other people have been. They're pretty good. Any no, like 100% no's? No. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to do a few more minutes of the uh, of the thing. A, a couple came through. I'm going to let them come through. 
Mr. Bullet donated $25. Communique from the Grand Inquisitor. Brian, you have failed to provide Blue White Cup with Certificate of Authenticity. You are hereby ordered to hit the gym. Mm. Your weight gain is offensive. <laughs> Get to it. Yeah, I gotta lose some weight, boys. Eric Six weight. donated $25. <laughs> Did you see H3 Ethan challenged you to a debate? I believe Anytime. you could beat him. He clearly has never watched your show and is only making assumptions on your stances and opinions. I hope you do it. Mm. You guys are getting Me roasted too. harder than we are. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I honestly, I, I'm not interested, to be honest. But uh, uh, Andrew, going. Andrew would do great, though. Uh, okay, we have. Board troll donated twenty-five dollars. Brian, I'm not sure why you don't go down on women. With your micro people, you have to give the girls something yeah. to expect. Eating bee is usually tasty, <laughs> unless it's summer. summer. Yeah, <laughs> brutal. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I'm a fan of uh, labia, but I don't do that. They're coming for you. What's that? I said they're coming for you. Oh, I don't care. Will, will you kiss a woman after she's gone down on you? Nope. Uh, she can oh like God. rinse her mouth or brush her teeth or whatever, but wow. it's oh called God. it's called a sexual boundary. Interesting. Okay. okay, so are you agreeing, Andrew? You don't go down on women either? I didn't say that. I, I said that if a woman were to go down on a dude, you ain't fucking kissing her afterwards. It's gross. It's, it's your Why? penis? If it's your yeah, wife. I don't give a shit. So. Yeah, no. No, but you do go down on women. Though. I want to get a fucking. You better get a toothbrush. Like <laughs> no way. Y'all are babies. What's that? That's that's babyish. What's your well, body count? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. How about instead of you two whispering under your breath, why don't you actually say it into the microphones? Yes, this please. This is so unserious. I I said so. You've never done a cum swap. Okay. Yeah. What did you say? I said this feels like high school. Why does it feel like high school? Because it feels like you make a statement and then he agrees. Andrew he disagrees. Statement, and then Andrew, you agree. I think Andrew. Andrew like, disagrees with me on plenty goes of things. Down on women. It, he I didn't object to like, that one. Yeah, he just doesn't like to be kissed after his wife goes on. Right. On him. Whatever. But I felt like those are like very high school things to say because that's just inexperienced. How does it? Oh, no, it's just inexperienced. Like, oh, you know what I need to do? That. I need to walk a guy through a mall while he's drinking his sperm, <laughs> and then I can get the sufficient experience to get the clap like you did. And one of these From days, my we would be on par with each other, but it's not my boyfriend who cheated, though. So okay. Ooh, All right, he got you on that one. He got well, you so how is it? How would it have anything to do with un X. inexperience? Well, I'm just, I mean, I'm sure maybe, have you had a bad experience eating pussy? Is that why? I'm sorry, should I not say that? No. I, oh, I've, I did it a couple times when I was younger, but I quickly, I honestly, I wish I never did it. Was it unsanitized? No, it had nothing, okay. it had absolutely nothing to do with that. There's nothing no wrong like with the pussy. Nothing wrong with the pussy. <laughs> I actually learned at a very young age, somehow I discovered this in 2008. Uh, maybe it was, I don't know exactly when. Uh, so the so hpv men are experiencing very high uh incidence of throat and head cancer mm -hmm. uh -huh. and this is directly linked to uh hpv and this is uh so wh who's that famous actor is it was it martin sheen uh, I don't think so. I can, look it up. can you google it uh but uh a lot of men are getting throat and throat and head cancer yeah they should have gotten the vaccine well for the longest time it wasn't recommended in men it's only mm -hmm. now recently that they've started recommending men get the hpv vaccine mm -hmm. so i'm not gonna get i mean i already regret having done it those couple times when i was much younger but yeah i'm not getting throat cancer for your sexual gratification sorry if that makes me high school and inexperienced, <laughs> I ain't doing that shit. You're so sassy. Sassy. So sassy. Nick, can you find it, please? Yeah. <laughs> He's married to, um, I'm trying to think of This guy name. got throat cancer. Famous, I think it's Martin Sheen. He got it from eating pussy? Yes. Is okay. it higher percentage of, like, men fine. getting that throat is? cancer yeah. than, like, Sad a girl? Yeah. That's where Tony Montana got his famous scar as well. He got his famous scar mm. from doing that. 
damn. Mm. Like, is it actually more common in men? I'm genuinely curious. But if your wife, I, I if think your your wife isn't is sleeping around, though, how would you get it? have like? Doesn't it not show up on men like that? Well, or they can have like they can have like no symptoms. More more women are vaccinated against against it, and um, I don't know the exact breakdown, but it does seem to be this uh, does seem to be manifesting itself more in men. Yeah. Michael Douglas. Was that the guy in Wall Street? Or what was that fucking movie? I don't know. One of these fucking famous actors. <laughs> Can you pull up? The chat probably knows. Can we just pull up the chat? Uh, yeah, so. That's where the real Michael roasting Douglas. is happening. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even want to read it. I know, right? Um, but yeah, Actually, no, it's uh, funny. And I got neck problems, too. So, you know, I'm not trying to. I mean, you're entitled That's to your that. sexual boundaries, dude. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I'm not trying to argue that you're wrong for that. I just... You yeah. literally were. It's, I didn't and say this girl that, over it here, it's so high like, school. It seems a little high school. Like, that's something that I feel Have you like ever had anal sex? would say. No. What if... Uh, okay. Have you ever had anal sex? I'm assuming this is a yes, but... A couple <laughs> times. It's not really, like, my favorite. <laughs> okay. It's not my favorite. Has a guy ever asked you to have anal sex? Uh, yeah. Yeah, into the mic. Okay. Yeah. Why didn't you want to have anal sex? Because I just it's don't not want anything in you... my butt. Okay, cool. <laughs> this is a no-no zone for me. Yeah, it's a sexual boundary, right? How would you feel if a guy didn't respect that boundary? Then it would technically be rape. So. Oh, my God. Don't say <laughs> the word. That's not what I fucking mean, but okay. <laughs> it's fair to have whatever oh boundary God. you have. It's totally fine. But I wasn't saying that was high school. I was just saying you guys, like... You say one thing, he agrees. He says, but yeah. Look, but he disagreed. No, though. no is a complete sentence. I don't want you know, to. Like is he said enough. something, and then I yeah. disagreed with him, and then we agreed on the things that we agree about. It's, it's almost like it's adult conversation. I know it's terrible. It's yeah. like, like high school, though. I just wanted to because. know the reason, and now that I know the reason, that there's not like a oh, like pussy stank or some kind of like just wrong. Reason How about the fact it. that women are promiscuous and not, there's no scenario where I'm going to go down <laughs> on a girl who there's a possibility she just fucked a guy the night before. How about that too? Uh, yeah. He's not wrong. not into that. Who? Some guys may not want to go down on a chick who has armpit hair. I mean, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Seems, seems right. reasonable. Uh, what's the other? Sorry guys, a whole bunch came through. I haven't been paying attention to it. Okay. Uh. Accountability donated $25. Ratings starting from right. Decades too late. Bratz doll equals four. Common blonde equals 89 IQ. Raven equals ear destroying yaps McGee. 34 triple G equals moo. Barnes and Noble enjoyer equals five. Eat more you twig. Comedian equals based. A non-donated $25. Alyssa you have the right energy but you're not there yet. We can fix you. 38 yo, 6 feet 100k plus, WFH tech, nerdy AF, strong dad bod, solo dad to one yo girl. It's a Mongamous and never cheated. Want two plus more kids? DM? Fuck yes. Get in there. Yeah, Curtis underscore the Yon underscore donated $25. Brian, which prison cell would you pick one? <laughs> The cell with a 6 feet 7 inches, 270 pounds, 5% body fat prison daddy bear who starts you on hormones and pubic blockers. 2. The other cell with a grizzly bear who mauls you. Uh, Grizzly bear. Grizzly bear. I'm taking the grizzly bear. Ryan? I don't even know how to answer this dumb fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, honestly, I, I'm definitely dying if it's the grizzly bear. I'd probably yeah, survive. The... <laughs> I'd probably survive with the 6'7 dude, so I'm going to survive. Uh, they're both pretty terrible, though. I love how tonight's thumbnail is essentially softcore corn with a highly sexualized edit with a girl's chest out. Oh, is this the fucking, the right cornering? Whatever, dude. Uh, hypocritical stuff, but not surprising. Grit. How is it hypocritical? Send another one in, dude. It, or actually articulate how it's hypocritical. I, I don't even understand the argument here, but okay. Uh, grid one is the definition of divorced energy. Okay, I don't know if he's here to see that, but. 
Warlord 69 U Wu donated $25. Live statistics, 1 in 6 women got the clap. OF isn't a career, tell yourself all the sweet lies you need to, at the end of the day no sane man will be putting a ring on that. Probably only Mr. Yeast. Can you read this one, Nani? Respect men who have germ boundaries. I feel the same, and yes, Andrew, I do hope you're swinging titty blank debates Ethan <laughs> as he can't call you fat because he was fat for a long time. He's got nothing on you. Old now. man marine donated $25. Alyssa, was it? Close them legs and keep reading the Bible. The Lord <laughs> seems to be working on your heart. Being non denom is like being a libertarian. Pick a side. Double-minded and unstable James 1-8. Brian's lint roller donated $25. Whispering and giggling to each other. Totally not high school behavior. Yeah. The fucking oh, irony. That's a good one. You guys, go, you guys got it. You got it. They got you. We're just being little bi girlies over here. King Kip Gaming donated $25. Uh -huh. Former correctional officer ate me on Insta Superman underscore R underscore L89. I believe the threshold for that is far more than the 25, so... Unfortunately, we can't rate you on Instagram. I think what is the what is the threshold for? I think I even took it out of uh, as an option to do an Instagram rating. I don't think we even offer that. Uh, yeah, we don't offer that. I mean, we'll do it for five hundred if you want, but otherwise, we're not gonna uh, do a rating. Nick, can you pull up Twitch. Oh wait, hold on. I thought they were talking about you, wait, and then I realized. He's Jack He's underscore right. Chavanti donated oh, yeah. $25.25. .25. The table is defensive regarding carnals. They are trapped between promiscuity and ego. Sex pays now. Gals are cashing in. Anyone who has ever said get that bag was female, etc. Hashtag her welcome. Mm. Can you read this, Manny? Love how tonight's thumbnail is essentially soft court. We already read that with the highly yeah. sexual he edit. He sent it again. The girl's chest out hypocritical stuff, but not surprising. Grid one is a definition of a divorced dad, or a divorced dad energy. Yeah. Ripped rich and rare donated $25. <laughs> Fat boy Andrew got stuffed in the locker all his child and adult life. He thought reading books, marrying a single mom, and uh, taking yeah. care of their kids is the way to live. Fat boy with tits. Hold this cell. Damn. We like that, that boys, so, so y'all can chill on that. Okay, good to know. Good Andrew, whip them out. <laughs> Dad bods are where it's at. All right. Uh, so on Twitch, we're gonna oh pull up pull up uh, Twitch really quick, guys. Go to Twitch.tv. I mean, I've never even been to prison. I mean, slash whatever. <laughs> uh, drop a follow on the Prime sub, guys. Follow on the Prime sub. Twitch.tv slash whatever. Uh. And guys, it's been 17 minutes since we've had a prime, so it's probably bugged. I don't know if somebody can test that out, but uh, Viking, thank for the prime. Mike, thank for the prime. Q Boss, thank for the prime. J Dog, 101, thank for the prime. Baby Champ, thank for the follow. Kai, thank for the follow. Lucky Bucky, thank for the follow. Guys, I think our prime is bugged. Does anybody have a little prime chat? A little prime in the chat to let us know. Thank you guys, appreciate it. And then, Nick, can you show the view count, guys? We're going to wrap up here pretty soon. Like the video, please, on your way out. We've got about uh, 6,000 view on YouTube still. So if you guys can, just hit the like button, guys. Uh, we've got 6,000 watching. We have uh, almost 3,000 likes. Get us to 3,000 likes before the end of the video. Helps out in the algorithm. Over on Twitch, we, who are we going to raid? We are going to raid. Oh, they changed up the, uh, that's interesting. Oh, here it is. That's OK. There's Woe Grandma. There's. So. Wait, hold on. Hmm. There's Soda Poppin'. Uh, we'll do Woe Wo Grandma. We'll do Woe Grandma. She's got. All right, we'll raid her in just a moment. Um, trying to see if there's anything. Yeah, I'll just. We'll wrap up the show here. So. Uh, let's see. Uh, last call to action, though. I'd like to end the show. A lot, I get a lot of flack from people on this. By seeing if we can't use this moment as an opportunity to give you three, well, actually, maybe you two, a call to action. Would you consider stopping sex work entirely tonight? 
Why? Because I just said so. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I tried. See, guys, I tried. It was, an, it was a... It's a noble cause. Mm -hmm. By the way, I like your haircut, Andrew. Did you get a haircut? Your hair looks a little different. How do you, how do you notice shit like that? I never even I I never noticed stuff like that. But yes, I did. I did get. I'm a, a attention to detail kind of guy. I know. Attention I know. to detail kind of guy. I'm not. It's good. Like looks good. Girl. It's it's slicked mm -hmm. back very well. You don't have any of those strays like I do right here. It's good. That's, well done. You guys are like girl. Same. That's cute. Yeah. Uh, so no no to the call to action. No, I'm not. I'm not quitting. Okay, I tried. I tried. So we are going to do a raid. We're going to raid Woe Grandma. She's 82. She plays World of Warcraft. Be nice over there, guys. I tried to raid some smaller streamers at the end of my stream. So a little love. We're going to get her on the dating talk nice. eventually. She's uh, she's got. Uh, anyways, I'm going to send this out right now. It looks like she's about to do a raid or something. Mm -hmm. Looks like she's in a ra or no, she's just playing with her user interface. Mm. Oh wait, I got it. Hold on, actually, really quick, really quick. I just gotta do my outro shit. All right, GG, well played to the panel. Last call, hit the like button, please, on your way out. Thank you for tuning in tonight. You could have been anywhere in the world, but you're here with me. I appreciate that. Thank you to everyone who super chats, donates, and supports the show. We will be live again Tuesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. We have a very good panel on Tuesday, assuming no flakes and no shows like we had to. T like we had today, excuse me. Yeah, and I gotta apologize um, that I was late. Um, I did, I did let Brian know that uh, that that may happen, um, but should be should be in the clear on that now. I just had some uh, some stuff come up in the life that I had to take care of, mm -hmm. uh, so I want to apologize yeah, uh, as I was scheduled tonight and I was late, and that's not anything that I ever really like to ever do. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah, all good. Oh wait, we have. Uh... <laughs> Their round meatball donated $200. Abuela plays WoW? Used to, yes. I did. Oh, shit. What, like classic? Yeah, old school. Like okay. back in, you know, 97, 98, 99. Wait, that, well, WoW was like, wow. Whoa. <laughs> that was like 2004, 2005, I think. Were, are you, were you playing, uh, what was the other? That I forgot. Ever, Ever yeah, Quest? EverQuest. EverQuest, oh, yeah. Oh, that's old school. Yeah, yeah. Holy fuck. So EverQuest and then into WoW in the early 2000s. I stopped okay. once I moved yeah. out to LA. EverQuest, that's OG. Yeah. You did the old school EverQuest. Old school. That's, that's OG. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm trying to get our raid set up to you, Andrew. You're going to be streaming for a little bit after this? Yeah. Okay. Give me a sec. My computer's lagging here. I'm going to get you all set up. We have, oh my God, the fucking... Andrew, give us something here at the end. What, what's the last thing you want to talk about? Well, I appreciate everybody here at the panel turning out and the spirited debate, even though you suck at it and you should probably quit immediately. But other than that, <laughs> right, it was, a, it, was a, it was a fun panel. I don't take any of this stuff personally. I hope you guys don't either. I thought it was a fun exchange back and forth. Mm. Hope to see all of you back Female comedians are not funny. There's nothing you're ever going to be able to do to change my mind as long as you live. It's just, you just can't. It can't be done. What if I whip um, out my dick? Will that be funny then? That See see what I mean? He's like, just not the just audience wasn't, for it. Still, it still was bad. It was comedians. terrible. You had the opportunity of a lifetime to go out on the well, best Well, you said as a ever, woman. It was a fail. I was, listen, I was trying to, you know, adhere to your personal preference. So I was, <laughs> if I had a penis, would I then be funny? Yeah, but see, okay, but that's what I mean, that's right? That, it's that, you proved my point. And it was just my friends of the penis. Point. Yeah, it was as, just as okay. As far as comedians, it was okay. Penis, you know? Wait, we, we, wait, can you pull up Woe Grandma? I guess I accidentally rated her. It's there. Uh, I guess I rated her before. Oh, damn. I didn't mean to send it over early, but okay, I guess Whoopsies. we rated her. She usually has late reactions. It is a whatever raid. Oh, there it is. Okay, Good, just in time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Look at that. She's 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 doing a raid. She's yeah, playing. This she's one, no game. Like, yeah. the... Get him, Grandma. Get like Granny. I know, I know you guys, guys keep saying that. Yeah. Anyways, uh, okay, there she is. She's doing a raid and uh, retail. She's playing retail. Cool. Uh, show her some love, guys. Uh, be nice, like I said. I said. Anyways. Uh, what was the other thing we had to do? Oh, I had a one last, by one last, I mean like three last questions. So, all right, here we go. Uh, let's see. 
Hold on, guys. I got to pull this up. Oh, okay. I'm just going to be a goblin because fuck it. I did. Tonight's panel was ridiculous. Uh, who's the, who's the, uh, who's the primary victim of war, men or women? Who's the starting primary? with you? This is the victim thing that I don't like, but I, I guess uh, men. 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 Definitely men. Okay. But no war was created by women, so. Well, that's not true at <laughs> yeah, all. That's actually. not true at all. On behalf of us. It's not no. true at all. Uh, that's why. That's why men are the victim. We have power to. We're the ones that start the wars and then they have to finish them. Well. I don't know. If I don't that's know. Really usually, the case. Oh, you want to go back to England times, you know, the monarchy. Like, there's plenty of women that were in power who have started wars, and they were more violent than the men. Yeah. Nick, can you Google kings like or queens, uh, like more likely to start war? So my understanding is they did an analysis. Uh, queens were more likely than kings to. Uh, go to war. Yeah, violence. They were probably oh. trying to like really assert their dominance, but just like female police officers can be a little bit correctional officers and all that stuff. I was they a cool correctional be, officer, just FYI. Or but yes, like what you're saying guards, about the though. prison guards that are women, like they say that they're way more harsh. Thirty-nine percentage points more likely to, to engage in a war in a given year compared to polities ruled by kings. Okay. Mm. Uh, oh wait, Nick, can, there's a can you. There's a QZ article, or no? There's an Economist. Do you see the Economist, economist article? Uh, uh, yeah. Who gets more yeah. So it says over 193 reigns, they found that states ruled by queens were 20. Oh, it's not going to show the whole thing. It just says we're 27 percent more likely to wage war than those ruled by kings. Uh, there's a bunch of articles that seem to cite this 27% number. So, uh, yeah, let's see what else. Can you be sexist towards men? Mm. No. What about you? Mm, no. No. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. So wait, you guys said no. Well, I'm on the side of the like prejudice and power thing uh, on this God. argument with all of it <laughs> obviously you can okay dislike. another five minutes Sorry. oh lord <laughs> the literal definition <laughs> it's misandry uh and then what so what's your reason well actually yeah yeah i guess you yeah you can be but i won't, uh, i don't i wouldn't want to be so no no, no. okay that wasn't the question the, the question is can't not like can in general people women can you be racist towards men Sexist. Sexist. Yeah. Or, sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm like, so sexist. late. Yeah, uh, yeah. Sexist. So <laughs> yours is the prejudice. But what? So uh, can you be racist towards white people? Mm-mm. No. What about you? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Let's go into this for just five minutes. Uh, can you explain it a little bit? Um, I see what y'all are saying. Like, I've experienced racism growing up, like, in a predominantly black area and going to a very much predominantly black school and where I was in minority, but I'm not over here crying the white girl tears, like, because <laughs> historically and just with everything, I'm not the, the oppressed one. It's like... Nope, like I, said, I agree. It has to be, there I has hang to on, be hang like on. I totally agree. Bit of argument completely conceded. It. You conceded your own argument immediately. You just said that you experienced racism while you were at a black school. That's the end of that. Checkmate. I think that it was. <laughs> it's quite different, I think, than racism. Did you experience on, racism like, while you were at this predominantly black school or not? On a societal not? level, but this was my experience in a small area, and also, mm. we're talking about like a group of people that have been so mistreated and taken advantage oh, I of. See. And so, prejudice, so prejudice is power, right? It's power plus prejudice equals racism. So when you were the minority in a black school, you experienced racism. That's the end of that. Thanks. Okay. That means that black people can be racist towards white people, right? 
well, I guess, but yeah, okay, fine. yeah, <laughs> they could, but it's it's a matter. But, I mean, of you could argue they are. I would say levels. it was valid. I would say it was very valid for them to feel the way that they do, based on like what they have been through, what their generations before them and their family lineage have freaking. You deserved through. it. Um, was it good for you? They was are it just good? Children. Did you deserve it? They were just children who have been experiencing a lot of. I'm sure that they experienced way more racism than I did, though. But that's yeah, not what okay, we're talking so about. You deserved it. Like there's <laughs> kids bully kids, and whether it's racist or. Yeah, but did you deserve not, for them to be racist towards you or not? Were you doing something that... Hold on, well, no, 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 hold on. Answer I, the question. Did I deserve it? Um, not me, personally. I don't think. Yeah, so you didn't deserve it, and they were racist towards you, and you were the minority, and they had the institutional power, and so, therefore, you, whites can experience racist, racism from blacks, right? Yeah, but I'm not hurting from it in the same way. What does that have to do with anything? I'm too tired to talk about I'm really <laughs> too tired for this and a little bit hungover and jet lagged. But um Oh well, I'm a little tired and hungover. Yeah, I'm not I jet mean, lagged, but you can I've seen I've people seen be racist ideas. towards my husband, he's white, and I've seen it with my own eyes and I'm a person of color and it's you know, it goes both ways. It goes both ways. Hmm. I mean Valid this, this is, is a pretty just fair my personal panel, opinion to be honest, that, like, like I I'm an agreeable person, you know. I I see. Get your twenty fives in. We're gonna wrap. Uh, any f any further thoughts on this, Andrew? Yeah. Well, I'm just just trying to explain to you that if both ways, both ways here, your ideology has to be wrong. Either way, one that your ideology is wrong is that you started out by saying I've experienced racism when I was in a predominantly, uh, um, you know, black school where I was the minority, but then you went on to say, well. But I think that racism can really only be prejudice plus power. But if you're the only minority in that school, or one of the few minorities in that school, then the power would go over to these other people who are not the minorities at the school. So if that's the and case, that's still prejudice small. plus power by your criteria. So both ways, whites can experience racism, right? Theoretically, yes. And Theoret the racism well, this can't be theoretical because not, it happened. Like, the racism they showed toward me in this one small little example in this little scenario did not have an effect on like everything to do with my life and my grandparents and like segregation and all this stuff like i see so if that's the case i wasn't hurt didn't. by it i was like okay i've okay. been bullied fair, fair, I've been you know what fair enough. like i just it didn't have a long-term lasting effect on you i get it but let me ask you this kids. yeah yeah let me ask you this though if you didn't deserve it which is what you're saying, it must have had some effect on you because you remember that you didn't deserve it. Mm. Right? I said, yeah, me personally, it's not like I was the one, like, I did not live in the, like, slave-owning days or do any shit like that. Right. But... Right. So, I mean, you didn't deserve that. But let us assume for a second it made all of those people who were, who were racist towards you feel better. Do you think they should have been racist towards you? Hmm. Makes them feel better. Yeah. I mean, if it makes them feel better, I really don't mind being someone's punching bag. <laughs> Perfect. You have just justified anti-black racism by whites. Ding, okay. ding. Good job. You just justified it, saying as they could do it, because it makes them feel well, better. Well, the white people are still doing it to them, so. Yeah, but it's, it's okay because it makes them feel better. It's even. It's How's it even? If more white it's people feel like better that. because there's more white people but than there not, are black people, the and it makes them feel better, and, like, then by your logic, they should be able to do it. Generational trauma and like are oppressed as shit. And yeah, they're not the ones that are hurting from it. So we as white people aren't feeling better by being racist. Wait, I just want to, I do want to point out one thing here. <laughs> History shows that white people were slaves much longer than black people. 
Yeah, and I'm actually so Irish between and between Ashkenazi, okay, but so. like between like 1500 and 1750, I, there were like millions and millions of white slaves. Yeah, I just say. I, I mean, our ancestors, my ancestors, for sure were. I did a 23 me, but word. So, anyways, uh, final thing on this, Andrew. Otherwise, I do want to try to get things. Yeah, right yeah. Up so I'm just but saying the final thing. You might want to. You might want to reevaluate whether or not. Um, people should be able to be racist towards you because it makes them feel better. That seems like I'm, a really bad position, which would actually justify. More, hang on, hang on. Let me finish. I'm almost done. And I'll give you the last it's word. Hang on. Hard, though. Like, okay. Hang on. Calm down. You might want to reevaluate it. Yeah, you don't seem calm. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, you might want to reevaluate that because you'll you'll end up justifying racism. That's what you'll end up doing. Right. Mm. You want to find the word or? Final word. Go Good. ahead. Do you want the final word? I'm saying that all that stuff, it, it wasn't that long ago. So the detention is still there. And I think that we're moving away from racism. And I think that's a great thing. I'm not trying to justify racism. I simply said, I think okay. racism is more of a prejudice. And Navigating power patterns donated $50. <clears throat> In Beauty and the Beast, how useful is the beast transformation capable of building a good society despite his lack of cooperation in Bell World? In Selgaston, proven to the townspeople be better? Was that a roast? Understand. Gambit 90 <laughs> donated $25. Brian, check out the examples used on the women's rating Yo, guide in about section of subreddit r slash true aratim rating as a metric of rating looks DM more objectively. Me? Can you DM it they to me? They cover just all ethnicities. Stacy for Senate donated $25. Andrew, is she savable or is the indoctrination too deep at this point? <laughs> uh, I think he's gone. I don't know. Uh, he's gone, man. Sorry. Sorry, Stacy. Black Phoenix donated $25. I'll try to replay it. We are not the sins of our fathers. Can, is he back? Why would I punish or think lower of you when you had nothing to do with it? Stop living in the past you didn't live in. <sighs> okay. Stacy for Senate donated $25. In 1838, most Mormons were white. In 1838, Governor Wade Boggs of Missouri signed the Mormon Excuse Extermination me. Act, Executive Order 44, state-sanctioned genocide on U.S. soil against whites. Okay. Josh donated $25. Purple Elliot again, just saw you like black guys, geez. Just say? Just say I think he I meant think to say, it. just say. And then while you're gone, Andrew, uh, this one from Stacy came through. Stacy for Senate donated $25. Andrew, is she savable or is the indoctrination too deep at this point? Too deep. <laughs> All right, with that said, I uh, want to do another quick thank you to the panel. Ripped Rich uh, and oh, Rare donated $25. Fat Boy doesn't compete in blood sports. More like milk squirts. <laughs> Pull up your shirt and tell me you're fucking proud of that shit. Big old titties. Tits. Lactation. Oh my Newbies. god. I'll smack your fat ass. They're really going Sounds after like you, Brian. What happened? Sounds like he likes no, the titties. they're not going after me. They're, they're going, going after, after Andrew. Andrew. Oh, Andrew. Poor right, Andrew. Guys. Uh, okay. Well, they're upset that I don't shave my arms. Aww. That's what, yeah, it's the whole... You got Yeti arms? Name <laughs> yeah, they're pretty upset. Apparently... Real men shave their arms, apparently. All right, guys, like the video, please. And go to prison, out. and they go to prison, too. All right, guys. That's what I'm told. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. We're going to do a raid over to Andrew. Drop him a follow. Oh, let me just get this chat. Uh, drop him a subscribe over there on YouTube. Old man marine donated $25. Purple hair, this okay. is your daddy. That was, that was the last one. Have guys. I not taught you that two wrongs don't make a right? SMH, you'll get your spankings when you come home. There it is. All right. Uh, cool. All right, guys, uh, thank you for tuning in tonight. Uh, we're going to raid Andrew over there on YouTube. Drop him a subscribe. Oh, seven's in the chat. I goes, I, uh, <laughs> sorry, guys, I'm, I'm frazzled. I'm, it's a long show. Okay, good night, guys. We'll uh, see you on Tuesday. The other direction, just so you know, of um, you know, progressive callers call into conservative shows, this type of thing, it's exactly the same thing, just in reverse. People tend to run on emotions, and that's why rhetoric and politics is so important. Uh, so when you say Republicans don't know much about the border, I would counter and say neither do progressives. Most, in fact, I would just say most I'm people. Progressive. What's that? I'm progressive. Yeah, I know, but you knowing a lot about the border does not mean progressives know a lot about the border in general. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm teaching.
Yeah. So, um, what is your stance, if you, if I may ask, on what U.S. policy should be on the southern border? In regards to what? Immigration and dealing well, yeah, with illegal immigrants. Yeah, and that's I can ask you specifically what are you talking about because the border is very complicated. So are you talking about the influx and dealing with? I, well, I just told you I'm talking about policy specifically in dealing with illegal immigrants. Well, illegal are the ones that are convicted. The ones coming into the United States haven't been convicted of a charge. Well, you can be doing something. This is kind of pedantry, right? Because you can be doing something illegal even if you're not convicted of it. Well, you can be charged with doing something illegal. It doesn't make it illegal. No, you can be says. doing something illegal even if you're never charged for it. So, for instance, you can break into somebody's house, never be charged, but you did something illegal. You have to be found guilty in order. No, for you to still be, would yes. be doing something illegal even in if the United you're. United States, Andrew, are we not innocent until proven guilty? By the court system, that's true, but philosophically, it's matters. not true. No, 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 it's not what matters because law is is only built around this idea that we must find you innocent until proven guilty for it to be fair. That does not mean in reality you have not done something illegal, though. So you con you convict somebody based off feelings, but not in the and not in the justice system. I don't. Well, so I I'm, I'm just I want to be sure that we're not speaking past each other. Do you agree that if a man goes in the street and uh, unalives another man in a way which is unjustified, he just feels like doing it, that he did something illegal even though he has not actually been prosecuted for it yet? Do you agree that that's true? Well, you got to look at it. There's a lot of confounding things you have to think about. What are the confounding so things that you have to think that about? Well, it could have been a heat of passion. It could have been no, no, something. no. But it's baked into the hypothetical that he unalived, unjustified. So he he basically, uh, I can't say the word, but it starts with an M, right? Well, it's alleged, and I'm a person of rule and law. And mm -hmm. in the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yes, and according if you to the found law. Guilty, yes, then you did. Then you broke the law. Yeah, yeah. According to the law, that's true. However, somebody could be committing a crime in front of you, which gives you justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them, and they have not been prosecuted of anything. They have not been charged with a single crime. They have not been found guilty of anything. However, if somebody's conducting a crime in front of you, how come you then have justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them if they were not committing a crime, sir? Because I believe in the Constitution of the United States. I believe that we all have rights, including those that commit or allegedly commit heinous crimes. And we built the adversarial justice system so we can confront the alleged charges. And once we convict them, now we can uh, definitely... This does not answer my question. So let me restate, the, let me restate, the, let me restate the question. If somebody breaks into your home, are you justified you are in defending yourself? Off a feeling about something that you probably don't know exactly what happened. Okay, if somebody breaks into your home, are you justified then in defending yourself versus if somebody you invite into your home, you're not then justified in, you know, using well, you're force. Talking about my curtilage. There's a law that protects me. Right, but nobody's been prosecuted. It is my castle. Nobody's been found guilty of anything. Nobody's been been prosecuted. Nobody's been they they haven't even that had a single right. And I'm not being charged with anything, and if I do get charged with something for defending my home, I go to court well, and it, I could be found guilty or not guilty. Sure, that's that true. Point. That's true. But but this goes back to your earlier point that you can be doing something illegal whether or not he, he, you're ever just, charged. No, you can't evade yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you need to answer great, it. Andrew. Hold on a second. I don't need to answer anything. No, I'm you're just going to run away from it. No, no. I'm going to tell you this much. Okay. Joe. I'm very familiar with court systems and practices. Mm -hmm. You are innocent until proven guilty in the United States. And I think a lot of people lose uh, sight of that. Trump was innocent until he was proven guilty. And he was proven guilty by a jury of his peers. Okay. Now, somebody in these hypotheticals uh, witnesses somebody doing something they charge them with a crime and they have to be seen in court. They can plead or they can say uh, not guilty and then go through the process, right? No, that's so not that's correct. That's not actually America correct. So so let's it let's go. So here, I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you. Do you agree that if, if, if a woman is being attacked sexually in front of me, 
that I can then do something to the assailant of her, even though he's never been convicted of the crime of the essay which he's conducting. Do you agree that that's but true or not, not? You're not convicting them. Of I didn't say crime. that. I said he's somebody. doing something illegal. You're not understanding. He's doing something illegal, correct? You're defending somebody else, yes. And so that person's doing something illegal, correct? But I'm talking about the court Just system. please answer it, my question. Okay, no, Andrew. You're, you're not going to answer. You're not going to answer it. No, no, hold on a second. I'm going to answer your fucking question. Yeah, sure you are. So, Go ahead. In this scenario, somebody is being assaulted. I can come in and defend somebody else. That person that was assaulting that person heads to court. Yeah. They're presumed innocent until proven guilty, regardless if I defended that person. Then it goes to the court process, adversarial contest. And if they're found guilty, then they did, in fact, do what you alleged them to do, to have done. Yeah, right. But none of that now, is what's in dispute, though. In the court yeah, but law. none of that's what we're disputing here. So Sorry, the, dis Andrew, the dispute is over. Daddy Trump is found. Yeah, I didn't mention Trump at all. I don't. I, yeah, yeah, that's great. I didn't say anything so about Trump. So I've not said anything that is false. Yeah, okay, but she did. So in the beginning of this, You're the, re off on the reason that this it. the reason that this uh, argument spurned off is because you said a person, an illegal immigrant, cannot be doing something illegal until they are convicted. And then when we when what I press you, with? when I press what you, would you let me finish my argument first, please? It's a dumb argument. You, then I'm let me make it, and the then you can dismantle it. Comes into the United States. I'm sorry, you can't you percent. can't let me make the argument because you're terrified of the argument. Is that right, sir? No, go ahead. Okay, great. So anyway, so your argument was somebody cannot be doing something illegal until they're convicted that thus illegal immigrants are not illegal. However, when I press you on that logically, we determine, wait a second, people can indeed do things illegal all the time and that you can then uh, create actions against those people even though they've never had due process. The same exact thing happens on the southern border. Same exact thing. You can be committing a crime even though you're not found guilty and you can be dealt with as a person who is under suspicion of committing a crime. They're most certainly under suspicion of committing a crime, which is illegally breaking and entering into the United States. Is that it? Okay. So here's what I'll say about that. There are American citizens that cross into the United States entry without inspection between the ports of entry. And we cannot deny an American citizen into the United States, regardless of where they're coming in at. So you're saying that they're, they are illegal when, in fact, some people are not illegal after we vet them. Yeah, but even so if I grant the out, even if I granted hey, the I outliers, I thought I'm sorry, I thought you were I done. You Go finish. ahead. Yeah, you, you, I'm not done. yet. Well, when you have a long pause, I assume you're done. I'm not done yet. That's okay. just the way I talk. OK, right? well, I didn't know that. Go ahead. Cool. So in the court system, if we're not going to charge them with anything, how are you going to refer them to or refer to them as being illegal? Now, when you say illegally present in the United States, you've already convicted them of entry without inspection. Do you know, Andrew, the law that they are breaking at the border? What's the law they're breaking at the border? I'm asking you, expert. I didn't say I was an expert. Okay. So you're trying to say that they're illegal, but you don't know what makes it illegal to enter into the United States. Well, I, I don't know what the penal code is for breaking and entering in Michigan, but I can still tell you when someone's breaking and entering. Okay, so tell me what... what hang on, hang on. It does it logically follow, sir, that I can determine what is breaking and entering even though I don't know what the penal code for it is. Is that true or false? That's false. It's false? You, I just... <laughs> Yeah, because you don't know if they're an American citizen. I see. So if somebody breaks country. into my home, I got to say, issue? wait a second, man. Why I don't know the penal code. I can't. Because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself, sir. Code, I can't. <laughs> because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself. I'm here for a civil conversation. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cope, dude. So I'll tell you this much. In the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. There are an American citizens that come into the United States in between the ports of entry and we can't not we cannot deny them entry <laughs> so we have to vet them we have to determine their citizenship and at some point or another they're gonna have to see the judge and the judge determines <laughs> whether or not their entry without inspection it is a misdemeanor crime 
under 8 U.S.C. 1325. Plain and simple. So just because you sound confident and you try to overspeak, it doesn't mean you have any experience at the border. Don't need it. You understand? Don't have to have it. So. It's not necessary, Coper. All right. I'm here for a civil conversation. And if you can't handle it, then just leave. He's there to prattle. Or I'll boot you up. Yeah, there we go. What's up, Clips? Hello. You can't commit a crime unless you're found guilty of the crime. Logic 101, folks. You can't determine that somebody has broken into your house if you don't know the penal code. If you don't know the penal code, they just haven't broken in. They've committed no crime. Fucking, some of these people, I don't actually know how they function in society. I don't know how they function in society at all. I just, uh, I don't. Uh, why would a... I, there's a possibility there's God and spirit stuff, but I just don't believe it to be true. There's other atheists that are more like they claim it doesn't exist. I, like, don't believe it exists. You don't, yo, you mean you just don't believe uh, that God I'm exists? Like I, I'm more like agnostic, but I lean towards I don't believe that God exists, but, like, he could exist. Yeah, can you help me out, though? Um, uh, let us assume for a second, before we dive into uh, the Christian faith, of which you probably have many critiques, what's your answer to the cosmological argument for, uh, for God? And if you're, if you're uh, unfamiliar and need to be refreshed, the cosmological argument is that if we do a logical deduction backwards, uh, if we get past matter, uh, basically everything must have some sort of creator. Um, and it essentially reduces to, well, where did all of this stuff come from? What was the first mover? Yeah, we don't know. Like, nobody knows. I mean, people can not put their guess in, but... Yeah, but logic, wouldn't logic dictate that there was a creator? There had to have been, right? Because no, if no, you deduce logic. it, if you deduce it backward, it's a contradiction to say that there could be creation absent a creator. Then you can't say that something right, always right, right, existed right, so, because that would also be a so, logical contradiction, right? So logic is just something that we created to use as a tool. No, that that can't be true because if logic is a human construction, then you would have to be able to tell me that we can change so, the laws of logic. Mean? No, I know it's just descriptive, right? So we've realized no, it's not descriptive. how the world operates, and we realize that there can't be a contradiction. Nope, nope, yeah, no, no, no. It's not because descriptive. Not it's a, it's a metaphysical truth. If it's just a descriptor and it's a human construction, then you should be able to change the laws of logic. Why can't you change them? No, the same thing with the laws of of, of nature, right? Like hmm. gravity and stuff like that. No, we it's not the out same. What it is. We don't set we don't set the gravity. We just figured it out. No, 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 no. Gravity is not a descriptive claim of anything. That's a material force which we can measure. You can't measure yeah, it's logic. Descriptive. It's descriptive. The laws of of um, nature are descriptive. We're just pointing out what we were observing. Okay. We okay, have... but hang on, hang on. If you're just pointing out what you're observing, then that would mean that the laws of logic were true. Yeah. Okay, so that's if they're if hold, they're true, yeah, if they're true, you can't point to them. They're metaphysical, correct? Yeah, because they're a tool people use without people. No, they're not. Well, them. they can't just be a tool because there must be some ontological nature. You without can't people, you can't just change no it. Wait, but nobody uses logic if there's no people. It's just no, no. In, in fact, the the laws of logic would still necessarily have to exist absent people. No, if there was no okay, people, so let, let's say let's say there was nothing that was alive, mm -hmm. not even animals or anything. Yep. Right? The laws of logic would still there, have to exist. No, it would just be a, you know, something. N that nope, was... nope. Well, listen, I'll give you the argument. The laws of logic would still have to exist even absent people, unless you can no, tell me, bro. You won't even like let me was... give the argument. Do you even want me to give the argument? Sure. So it must. They must still exist because a contradiction still couldn't exist even absent people. Yeah, but you could say the same thing about mathematics. You could say that. Oh, That's right. Still... 
that yep, those are metaphysical truths. truths that exist even absent no, the human no, mind. They're they, they were actually um, things that we've discovered. Yeah, they this discovered know. means that they existed absent us. No, it's a descriptive. It's it's like it's not descriptive. Know, it's discovered. It's a tool. It's a way we measure. You know, it's a it's a pretty much just a tool we. Use. <clears throat> no, it's not just a tool we use. It's a okay, discovery. So well, okay, listen, so I'm trying to get into it with you. You're trying to claim that. The laws of logic would not exist absent human thought, and I'm telling you that they actually have to. A contradiction still could not exist absent human thought. Uh, the law of excluded middle still could not exist absent human thought. And the law of identity still would have to exist absent human yeah, thought. All of those things would have to exist. The, it's a truth about the world that we observed and we um, use as a tool, right? Because if we know the, the laws of logic, excluded middle, non-contradiction mm -hmm. and um the law of identity you mean these things that we discovered which were already these metaphysical are truth to, these are tools that we use to see if things are real because we've realized that these things are are you know they are um re they repeatedly give you <coughs> correct you know answers no they they exist though they have to exist because you just yeah, said we just hang, you. Hang, bro you you gotta let me talk and just let you talk you they must exist because they're discovered so absent human thought they still exist a contradiction cannot exist even if no humans are around to perceive a contradiction cannot exist yeah so um it, concepts don't exist without a mind so we wouldn't have there wouldn't be a concept of logic that's not I mean. a concept though it's a law yeah it is i mean would gravity not, not would somebody, gravity not yeah. exist absent the human mind I mean, there would be no identification of what gravity was. Yeah, but that's not my question. It would just—it's it, just a description. Yeah, so it doesn't. No, matter. it's not a description. It the law. It would still exist, even so. Rocks wouldn't exist without your mind. Rocks would exist. Okay, rocks would exist, and gravity would exist absent your mind, right? Because it's a law, we right? Observe, we observe so so things, the laws bro. of logic would yeah, also... We we... Bro, you got to let me finish. But the laws of logic would also exist absent your mind. No, no, look at But if we're just going to the natural side, right? If we observe gravity and say, okay, this is descriptive of what's in the universe to figure out if it's true. It doesn't mean that we've created gravity or we can have any way to necessarily uh, tweak the gravity. That's right, because it exists even absent your mind. That's the point. Yeah, so it's descriptive. We're just it's not descriptive. It, listen, it's you're you're giving a descriptor to what it is, but it exists even absent the descriptor. Right, but there's no laws of of these laws that you're talking about. There's no laws of logic. There's there with without people. No, there there actually has to be without people. Otherwise, why don't you tell me how oh, you can change the law of logic? even absent because people use it it's a tool people use no I mean, that's well that's true method. but just because people use it doesn't and mean it... that are illogical too that don't use logic Not, well well, well no no all all, all all people still have to utilize the laws of logic they cannot be changed aren't that smart and they actually believe in things that are yeah illogical. but you're, you're talking about rational versus irrational not the laws of logic themselves the laws of logic themselves are immutable. They they cannot I'm be. Some people are illogical. They might have a belief that isn't based off logic. Logic is a tool that we use. Yeah, but the, I'm not talking about people utilizing the process of logical argumentation or um, you it's know like modus general. ponens. I'm talking about the actual laws which govern logic themselves. That those are okay, actual so laws. Let's go there. Who do you think created Well, yeah, so this is where I'm trying to get to, is that if your epistemology is, well, the laws of logic exist because we use them, then I have to dispute this and say the laws of logic exist even if you do not use them. Oh, my gosh. Okay, that you could say the same thing with language. Oh, you know, because people... No, there's no laws of language which exist out absent human mind. Neither is there mathematics. No, mathematics is something which is discovered, so mathematics would exist even absent the human mind. No, one plus one would always equal two, that. even absent your mind. No, you wouldn't be able to add them without a mind. You wouldn't, you yeah, but, 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 you wouldn't be able to add bro, two plus two. If, if bro, no you, wouldn't, you wouldn't need to. 
even if there was no human mind to interpret that one plus no, one equal would not exist. bro calm down even if there was no human bro calm down even if there was yeah mathematics would not exist without anybody <laughs> present so <laughs> mathematics is not he just kicked me um i get it he's trying to say oh two plus two will always be four even but you can't plus you won't have two plus anything without a mind so couldn't even get Anyways, to it we you can believe that it. these laws of logic came from god i believe they came from people over time and this is couldn't a way even a get tool to that it. the second we start to get into the argument verify when things are true to make sense and like i try to tell him some people are illogical in their views so doesn't it doesn't matter. mean that their people are just naturally log you know use logic it it's doesn't matter it's something <laughs> it, 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 does, it doesn't matter what a fucking idiot no that's not what the argument is the argument is not moving into whether or not the laws of logic are socially constructed or not it's called the transcendental argument so we were moving from the cosmological argument to the transcendental argument but we couldn't get anywhere because uh, he can't give an accounting for those laws, so he just kicked me instead. Very typical, by the way, when you start getting into it. Um, but diving into the uh, kind of the reparations, um, why why would you say that the the ancestors of slaves would deserve to have reparations from the United States government? Knowing that the that it would be the taxpayer essentially. Be, be, Hang on, let me let, let me finish let me the question. Let me you. finish the question. Hang on, because it's going to be the taxpayer who foots that. The U.S. government doesn't have money. The taxpayer has money. I certainly wasn't responsible for the institution of slavery. Why would I need to pay for the reparations for it? Let right. me explain that to you. So okay. I already knew what you were getting ready to say. That's why you didn't need to finish the question. <laughs> so anyway, um, the way it worked out was during slavery, black people, A, uh, were not only purchased and sold, right? But uh, they're, they're, they were also insured. They built insurance com uh, uh, companies. They, they built the stock market itself. Okay, they built a lot of the things, the roads and things that we utilize today. They also made a lot of inventions that were, uh, the patents were stolen and the families of these people never got the money for these things. We hear about, you know, the, the lady from KFC. We, you know, we hear about, um, you know, just so many black inventions that were taken and profited off of by white families that are rich till this day. And those people benefit till this day. Also, the, the children of uh, the um, families who own these insurance companies and who profited off of the stock market are, are, are enjoying those riches to this day. They had that money to pass down to those children. Not to mention the 80 some odd communities black people built after reconstruction, which had nothing to do with slavery. This is reconstruction. We had over 80 neighborhoods bombed, burned down, flooded. People were ran off of the property. So there are so many black people in this country who would have had properties and land passed down from their grandparents, but there are white families sitting on those properties today, and they get to pass it down to their children who are benefiting off of that. Yes. That's generational, generational, that's stolen generational so I'm willing wealth. To, I'm willing to concede some of this kind of for the sake of argument. Um, but I but still you cut I, me off, and I really wasn't even done. Because I'm, I'm sorry. So when somebody gives that. when somebody gives a long pause, I assume they're done. But I would like to take it a point at a time. Is that okay? So so listen here, dude. We're gonna take it the way I say take it. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. So you don't want to go. Po you don't want to so, go point by point. Hold on. Let Atlanta play. No, you're I'm gonna you're gonna you're sure. gonna let me say what what the hell I'm saying, right? Okay. You're gonna wait for it, go ahead. and then you're gonna respond. Sure. Okay, just don't come over here and colonize. I know you guys have like that. Yeah, I know you're a strong woman. Here you roar, spirit. but can you just can you just make Dude, the point? If you don't shut the fuck up while I'm talking, I will drop you from this panel. Oh no, we don't have to have this conversation. There's four viewers. Oh no, so he cheated on his wife. Quid pro quos. He's been impeached twice, and he smells. 
probably doesn't brush his teeth. His wife probably doesn't love him. I hate to say it, but I had to drop you because you can't have a civil conversation. Hello, Andrew. Good evening. What you got for me? Uh, good evening. Can you hear me okay? I've got you loud and clear. Oh, How are you doing? Pleasure to meet you. Uh, thanks for having me on this evening. I did want to dive into the prompt, if you don't mind. Republicans don't know much about the border. Um, sure. So the the first thing is, is that I think you and I can agree probably most people don't know very much about political issues in the United States or in any nation that they're in. Some nations, some people maybe are a little bit more proactive than others. Uh, but in this particular nation, basically politics runs on rhetoric and it runs on mass media. And people mostly just kind of regurgitate talking points. Like you can agree that that's true on both sides, right? To a certain extent. <laughs> well, I mean, like you, you have these conversations, I'm guessing, you know, every other evening or a few evenings a week at least. Um, hasn't it been kind of your take that most people who call in are at least fairly uninformed about the political processes of the United States? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, that that happens the other direction, just so you know, of, um, you know, progressive callers call into conservative shows, this type of thing. It's exactly the same thing, just in reverse. People tend to run on emotions, and that's why rhetoric and politics is so important. Uh, so when you say Republicans don't know much about the border, I would counter and say neither do progressives. Most, In fact, I would just say most I'm people. Progressive. What's that? I'm progressive. Yeah, I know, but you knowing a lot about the border does not mean progressives know a lot about the border in general. Well, that's why I'm here. I'm teaching. Yeah, so um, what is your stance, if you, if I may ask, on what U.S. policy should be on the southern border? In regards to what? Immigration and dealing well, yeah, with illegal immigrants. Yeah, and that's I can ask you specifically what are you talking about because the border – is very complicated so are you talking about the influx and dealing with my well i just told you i'm talking about policy specifically in dealing with illegal immigrants well illegal are the ones that are convicted the ones coming into the united states haven't been convicted of a charge well you can be doing something this is kind of pedantry right because you can be doing something illegal even if you're not convicted of it well, you can be charged with doing something illegal. It doesn't make it illegal. No, you can be says. doing something illegal, even if you're never charged for it. So, for instance, you can break into somebody's house, never be charged, but you did something illegal. You have to be found guilty in order. No, to you to still be, would yes. be doing something illegal, even in if the United you're. States, Andrew, are we not innocent until proven guilty? By the court system, that's true. But philosophically, it's matters. not true. No, no, no. It's not what matters because law is is only built around this idea that we must find you innocent until proven guilty for it to be fair. That does not mean in reality you have not done something illegal, though. So you, con you convict somebody based off feelings, but not in the, and not in the justice system. I don't, well, so I, I'm, I'm just, I want to be sure that we're not speaking past each other. Do you agree that if a man goes in the street and uh, unalives another man, in a way which is unjustified, he just feels like doing it, that he did something illegal even though he has not actually been prosecuted for it yet. Do you agree that that's true? Well, you got to look at it. There's a lot of confounding things you have to think about. What are the confounding so things that you have to think that, about? Well, it could have been a heat of passion. It could have been No, no, something. no, but it's baked into the hypothetical that he unalived, unjustified. So he, he basically... Uh, I can't say the word, but it starts with an M, right? Well, it's alleged, and I'm a person of rule and law. And mm -hmm. in the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. Yes, and according to the law, guilty, yes. Then you did, then you broke the law. Yeah, yeah, according to the law, that's true. However, somebody could be committing a crime in front of you, which gives you justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them, and they have not been prosecuted of anything. They've not been charged with a single crime. They've not been found guilty of anything. However, if somebody's conducting a crime in front of you, how come you then have justification to do things you could not ordinarily do to them if they were not committing a crime, sir? Because I believe in the Constitution of the United States. I believe that we all have rights, including those that commit or allegedly commit heinous crimes. And we built the adversarial justice system so we can confront the alleged charges. And once we convict them, now we can 
uh, definitely. This does not answer my question. So let me restate the. Let me restate. Let me restate the question. If somebody breaks into your home, are you justified in defending yourself? Off a feeling about something that you probably don't know exactly what happened. Okay, if somebody breaks into your home, are you justified then in defending yourself versus if somebody you invite into your home, you're not then justified in, you know, using well, you're force? Talking about my curtilage. There's a law that protects me. Right, but nobody's been prosecuted. Nobody's been found guilty of anything. Nobody's been been prosecuted. Nobody's been they they haven't even that had a single right. I'm not being charged with anything. And if I do get charged with something for defending my home, I go to court well, and it, I could be found guilty or not guilty. Sure, that's that true. Point. That's true. But but this goes back to your earlier point that you can be doing something illegal whether or not he, he, you're ever just, charged. No, you can't evade yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, you need to answer great, it. Andrew. Hold on a second. I don't need to answer anything. No, I'm you're just going to run away from it. No, no. I'm going to tell you this much. Okay. okay. I'm very familiar with court systems and practices. Mm -hmm. You are innocent until proven guilty in the United States, and I think a lot of people lose uh, sight of that. Trump was innocent until he was proven guilty, and he was proven guilty by a jury of his peers. Okay. Now, somebody in these hypotheticals uh, witnesses somebody doing something, they charge them with a crime, and they have to be seen in court. They can plead, or they can say uh, not guilty, and then go through the process. Right? No, that's so not that's correct. That's not America actually correct. So, so let's it let's go, so here I'll, I'll demonstrate it for you. Do you agree that if, if if a woman is being attacked sexually in front of me, that I can then do something to the assailant of her, even though he's never been convicted of the crime of the essay which he's conducting. Do you agree that that's but true or not, not? You're not convicting them of. I didn't say crime. that. I said he's somebody. doing something illegal. You're not understanding. He's the doing something process. illegal, correct? You're defending somebody else, yes. And so that person's doing something illegal, correct? But I'm talking about the court Just system. please answer my question. Okay. No, Andrew. You're not going to answer. You're not going to answer it. No, no. Hold on a second. I'm going to answer your fucking question. Yeah, sure you so, are. Go ahead. In this scenario, somebody is being assaulted. I can come in and defend somebody else. That person that was assaulting that person heads to court. Yeah. They're presumed innocent until proven guilty, regardless if I defended that person. Then it goes to the court process adversarial contest and if they're found guilty then they did in fact do what you alleged them to do, to have done yeah right but none of that now, is what's in dispute though in the court yeah, but law. none of that's what we're disputing here so Sorry, the, dis Andrew, the dispute is over Daddy trump is found yeah i didn't mention trump at all i don't I, yeah, yeah that's great i didn't say anything so about trump so i'm not said anything that is false yeah okay but you did so in the beginning of this the, re off on the reason that this it. the reason that this uh argument's burned off is because you said a person an illegal immigrant cannot be doing something illegal until they are convicted and then when we when what i press you with? when i press what you would you let me finish my argument first please it's a dumb argument you, then I'm let me make it and the then you can dismantle it comes into the United States i'm sorry you can't you time. can't let me make the argument because you're terrified of the argument is that right sir no go ahead go okay ahead great so argument. anyway so your argument was somebody cannot be doing something illegal until they're convicted that thus illegal immigrants are not illegal however when i press you on that logically we determine wait a second people can indeed do things illegal all the time and that you can then uh, create actions against those people even though they've never had due process the same exact thing happens on the southern border same exact thing you can be committing a crime even though you're not found guilty and you can be dealt with as a person who is under suspicion of committing a crime they're most certainly under suspicion of committing a crime which is illegally breaking and entering into the united states is that it okay so here's what I'll say about that. There are American citizens that cross into the United States entry without inspection between the ports of entry. And we cannot deny an American citizen into the United States, regardless of where they're coming in at. So you're saying that they're, they are illegal when, in fact, some people are not illegal after we vet them. Yeah, but even so if I grant the out, even if I granted hey, the I outliers, I thought I'm sorry. I thought you were done. You Go ahead. Yeah, you, you, I'm not done yet. Well, when you have a long pause, I assume you're done. I'm not done yet. Okay. That's just the way I talk. Okay. Right? Well, I didn't know that. Go ahead. Cool. 
So in the court system, if we're not going to charge them with anything, how are you going to refer them to or refer to them as being illegal? Now, when you say illegally present in the United States, you've already convicted them of entry without inspection. Do you know, Andrew, the law that they are breaking at the border? What's the law they're breaking at the border? I'm asking you, expert. I didn't say I was an expert. Okay. So you're trying to say that they're illegal, but you don't know what makes it illegal to enter into the United States. Well, I, I don't know what the penal code is for breaking and entering in Michigan, but I can still tell you when someone's breaking and entering. Okay. So tell me what... what hang on, hang on. It Does it logically follow, sir, that I can determine what is breaking and entering even though I don't know what the penal code for it is? Is that true or false? That's false. It's false? You, I just... <laughs> Yeah, because you don't know if they're an American citizen. I see. So if somebody breaks them. into my home, I got to say, finish. wait a second, man. Why I don't know the penal code. I can't. The... Because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself, sir. I'm I'm I can't. <laughs> because I don't know the penal code, I can't defend myself. <laughs> I'm here for a civil conversation. <laughs> okay. Yeah, cope, dude. So I'll tell you this much. In the United States, you're innocent until proven guilty. There are an American citizens that come into the United States in between the ports of entry and we can't not we cannot deny them entry <laughs> so we have to vet them we have to determine their citizenship and at some point or another they're gonna have to see the judge and the judge determines whether or not their entry without inspection it is a misdemeanor crime under 8 usc 1325 plain and simple so just because you sound confident and you try to over speak it doesn't mean you have any experience at the border. Don't need it. You understand? Don't have to have it. So. It's not necessary, Coper. All right. I'm here for a civil conversation. And if you can't handle it, then just leave. He's there to prattle. Or I'll boot you up. Yeah, there we go. What makes that objective and not subjective? Like, for instance, murder would be subjective. Yeah, but but it's not though, right? So, for instance, if you take uh, take uh, uh, murder, which is the unjustified unaliving of somebody, there are different societies which have criteria for what unjustly unaliving somebody means. So, even murder would be subjective, right? He's proving your own point because before you, what you consider barbaric acts, then again, are also subjective. Well, then if so that's the case, like then there's no problem with colonizing them, right? Because prospectively, no. everybody's preference is no. equal. Therefore, they can never do an immoral action against another society. Well, well subjectively, you. we have like a, a subjective frame of ethics, right? What gives you what gives you the right, like ethically right, right? What gives you the right? Well, I'll explain it. So if if all if all you're saying is that all ethics and morals are just perspective and they're, they're only preference-based, then you okay. could never make an argument that a larger society's preferences are less valid than a smaller society. So if the bigger society said our oh, preference... Right. It, our so preference is... Right. No, this is your worldview, not mine. Your this world... Your so worldview your, your worldview's right. entailment is everything is preference-based. So if everything is preference-based, you can't get mad at somebody for colonizing you. That's their preference. She got, right. well, she made me stare off the point. All right, so real quick, Andrew. Um, so yes, there are instances where some may believe that murder is uh, is okay. However, that is not the overwhelming majority, right? Well, no, 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 hang on, hang on. I'm not saying that they're saying murder is okay. Yeah. I'm saying they're saying there's different criteria for what a murder is. It's justified, yes. It's cri yeah. There's different criteria where it's justified. Yeah, However, correct. the example that you gave, is a very small minority relative to, you know, universally accepted uh, majority. Yeah, but why is a universally accepted majority and their preferences more or less valid than a small tribe's? Because it, it should be, don't you think? No, don't well, it should be is not an argument for justification. Why? Why should it be? Because murder is simply wrong. That is an objective fact. Murder How is that obje an objective fact? fact? It's just an assertion. You don't I have think some that murder is objectively I wrong. Wanna, wrong I want to say that not everyone. Re on the well, but regardless the of what I believe, you, making the assertion that it is doesn't mean it is. Well, no, no. Okay, so you think? What do you think about just ethics in general and like morality? 
you just think that. Well, I think I, me personally, I think that morality and ethics is, um, is objective. However, uh, who cares ultimately if if you say that all morality just boils down to a subjective preference, then you can never make an argument against colonization because their subjective preference for colonizing is just as valid as a subjective preference to not be colonized. Well, I don't know why you're making the argument that something is subjective and then you say, well, I actually believe that it's subjective. Well, who can, why, why can't I do an internal critique regardless of what my ethical standards are? That makes no sense. You're not following your own logic. No, first of all, first of all, wait a second. I am following yeah. my own logic. I'm doing an internal critique. So this is what you believe. You believe all ethics and morals are subjective and if that is the standard no, how can you ever assert colonization is wrong i don't get that wait a minute i said no, i didn't say all i said certain a lot of a lot of ethics are objective right but then give in, then tell me what them. makes them objective like being gay for instance right yeah that's subject that is a subjective whether there's ethically right or wrong and i'm actually religious believe it or not yeah, but, but tell me what makes but, it objective. What makes it objectively right or wrong? When it's a, when it's an overwhelming majority, not just the Oh no, majority, so so wait, so you're appealing to the my majority? Guide, what my guideline is. You're so you're it's, telling me that the, if the majority says tomorrow that we're all um going to wear swastikas that that means it's morally correct that we do so? It would be. Yes, Why it, is it, would, it would be. Okay, so then if the the <laughs> overwhelming, so if the overwhelming majority, so saying, so I just want to make sure. So if the overwhelming majority said tomorrow that they can SA whatever women that they want whenever they want, that would be moral, correct? If as humans we truly believe that, which by the way we would not. Then yeah, yes, but if we but did, then yes. Reason why we don't do well, I see. Why? Why so, 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 it, so as long as, example? so as long as the overwhelming majority believe a thing, then anything that they do is justified in your worldview. Do you think that's insane? If, sir, sir, do you realize how insane, insane that is to say? Up. Mom, I'm scared. No, Come get me. <laughs> you know how insane your example is. You're giving a, you're giving an example that is simply not true, right? Yeah, hypotheticals are designed to test the logic. They don't have to be based in reality. The reality is that. the extension of your logic states that if the supermajority of people believe in X, then X is justified and moral, no matter how heinous it is. And I completely Let me ask you this. Yes. <laughs> diving into this, though, isn't that kind of silly? Like if you're going to go to another country, for instance, you would have to conform to their rules, regulations, laws and customs. And so if the majority of a nation has customs which are based on their ethics and their ethics are Christian, what do you you should conform to those things saying that we should just create a boundary seems silly to me it seems like a conformity is a good thing in this instance don't we want christian ethics no why not because that's like why that's why christians fight so hard for christian nationalism because they want a christian nation to where they can run literally everybody's lives off of what the bible yeah, says. but secularists want the same thing to be a melting pot of different cultures no 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 wait both. wait we're, dude we wait. are supposed to respect no them. we're not supposed wait we're not supposed to be a melting pot of all religious dispositions that was never the intention of the united Nobody states said all. I said multiple. well but what does that mean multiple we're going to have to have a singular ethic we can't for instance have people who are diametrically opposed to the worldview of most americans uh integrate in the melting pot there's going to be some metal that doesn't mix in very well i mean surely you understand that right what are you trying to say there they're like muslims can't come to the country well i'm saying if you were to have a uh like a let's say a 50 30 split um and then the rest were secularists and 30 percent were muslim 50 percent were were christian and the rest were whatever that probably wouldn't bode well you you still want to have a super majority for some type of singularity for ethics i mean obviously that would be good you yourself would probably claim that you would want the majority to be secularist right yeah, but I think secular can still respect religious boundaries. Yeah, but I think that Christians can also respect religious boundaries by by using your logic no, of no. saying, hang on, hang on, let me finish, I'm almost done. But by you saying, I would prefer that secularists have the majority is the same as me saying I wish Christians had the majority. Because Christians would still be respecting the boundary, they would just want the majority to be inside of their worldview just like you want. I would argue that 
Secularists respect religious boundaries much more than Christians now do nowadays. Prove it. Secularists will still um, argue for people's right to um, practice their religions, but like religious people still send their children to religious camps, religious schools, and do not really give them a choice in religion. And they try to push that on everyone they can. No, the the opposite's true. Secularists are doing this. Secularists say, one hundred percent of the country isn't Christian. Why should we have the in under God we trust? in God we trust on our currency, which is supposed to represent the entire country's monetary value. We well, should not have that. Wait, it doesn't, wait, it doesn't wait. represent 100% of the country. So maybe... Yeah, but using currency at all, basis. using that's currency at all doesn't represent... We'll say one nation under God. Okay, but but that's There's silly. Like wait, wait, hang on. To make other people of other faiths say that. Yeah, but let me, let me refute this. Not everybody in the country even wants to use currency. Maybe all of them want to use digital currency. Maybe none of them want to ever use the dollar. Maybe some people want to go to the bartering system. We can't institute policy on what a minority percentile of the population wants because it makes them feel good. That's absurd on its face. You would never govern that way in a million years. Oh, my God. We're not talking. You can. Have That's not even like a religious concept of like money. What does that have what? to do with what? what? Listen to my what? argument. What Hang on. Refute my actual. Boundaries, we have to change up our yeah. Let me get. No, you are saying that. You're wait. Ways. Wait. You're saying that. Let me. Let me. Let's go back to the argument. What you're say. What you just said was. Who was straw but manning not. Again? Hang on. I'm not straw manning. I'm actually going directly to your argument. And let me steel man your argument so that you know I'm not straw manning you. Your oh, argument sorry. to me was. Wait a second, sir. But. Not everybody in the country is Christian, so why would we have God on the dollar bill, which most people use? But the refutation to that is the same exact logic. What about all the people who don't want to use the dollar bill or want to use a different type of currency? It's the same exact logic. We're not going to apply the ethic to the entire nation based on what a slim majority wants. That's absurd. The reason why we apply a monetary value across the board is because for order in society to function smoothly, that is something that's necessary. And it's not a religious value that you need to respect other people's like opinion on because it doesn't disrespect religious values. It disrespects opinions about how, how they can think you say what should. does or does not disrespect religious values if you yourself aren't a part Are of the religion? Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Let me finish. I just let you make your argument. Let me make my retort. Go How can it. you make the affirmative claim this does or does not disrespect the religious majority when the religious majority themselves claim that it does? And when they're polled, they say that it does. And they are in the majority. Why should we create policy to kiss secularist asses? Why should we do that? That seems absurd to me. Secularists would not do that for us. They wouldn't say, well, the majority of you are Christian, and so therefore we should do blah. They would never do it. Why should we respect people who don't respect us? Okay, you're kind of repeating yourself. I was just saying, like, do you, is that a thing? Is that genuinely a thing? Like, Christians want to go back to the barter system? They don't want to use currency? No, I'm not saying Christians. I'm saying I was refuting your logic. I was saying if your logic is, but not everybody does X, but that would apply to secularists as well. Not everybody does X there. Or maybe many secularists don't mind if God is there. Or maybe many secularists follow Christian ethics, but don't follow the God of Christianity. Using the argument ad populum is a bad argument. Argument ad populum? Yeah, that would That's be like an argument uh, appealing to the majority. Okay. Yeah. You're the one appealing to majority because if you're saying it's a majority Christian country, they can run it how they want. No, no, no. I was giving you an internal critique. So I was showing you that if you were to make the claim, I want to have a secularist nation because they reflect our values the best or the values you want to see in the country the best. I want a Christian nation because it reflects the values that I want to see. Why am I wrong? I'm not saying that we should adhere to the quote-unquote tyranny of the majority what i'm asking you specifically is why it is that if you want to have a secular nation why it is that i shouldn't advocate we have a christian nation what's actually wrong with me doing that 
because secularists today want to re protect religious rights to be able to practice their religion freely. If Christians run the nation, that same respect will not be equally a people's right to practice their religion. Yeah, so what's wrong with people practicing their religion in the majority and governing from that? How can you make the claim that we respect your religion? We just don't respect it if it's in the majority. Most people believe it and govern from that. That's not respecting the religion. That's the opposite. That's trying to oppress the religion. Religion has rules that everyone needs to follow. Secularism does not. Yeah, Secularism yes, it does. Can, can you murder people under secularism, sir? That is such a bad rebuttal. No, how is it a bad retort? Bad. Can you murder people like, under hey, secularism? Where's the Okay, that's it. Ant Shut up. Give me the dude, answer my please. question. Please Don't be bad please. faith, bro. Don't be bad Andrew, faith. You're so bad faith. Give me the atheist No, Bible. you're being bad faith. You're I just really you just said faith. religious people have values that everyone must follow. Don't secularists say you cannot it's murder? Religion, Isn't Andrew, that a I value you no must follow? To follow? I mean, there's no set Bible for us to follow that's not a, that our claims to, the, uh, our claims to ethics and morality are malleable oh so murder's you malleable in your worldview right. you cannot argue what is right when you point to a fucking scripture why did you why did well, you yes, mute me for a great back and forth why stupid. why wait well, you didn't let me finish and you weren't listening. well but we're having a great back and forth right no, we're not because you keep cutting me off bro bro wait a second are you saying that murder is malleable in the secular framework? No. Oh, okay. Then why did you just get done saying that Every, everything saying, in the secular murder, framework is malleable and not in the religious framework? Did you just lie murder, to me, sir? Bro. Did you just lie? Go ahead and repeat yourself. <laughs> did you just lie when you said everything is malleable in the oh, in so the secular framework? You, answer. My bad. Continue you just question. told me to restate it. Restate it again. Okay, well, it. I'll restate it again. You literally just said everything is malleable in the secular framework. When I said, is murder malleable in the secular framework? That's you said so no. That you so that's a performative it. contradiction. Um. You want... <laughs> Yeah, not every single mor moral claim is going to be Why changed. do you keep muting me before I even finish the question? Because you're repeating it for a third time. And well, I you asked me to, though. I said it wasn't genuine. Okay, so let me let me repeat. Let me repeat what I said. Okay. No. No. Dude, I'm not gonna. Let okay, you fine. Then you I'm ask the on, you I'm ask the query. Like then that's fine. There's no point in having a back and forth. You won't allow it. I understand. Like, am I gonna be able to answer your question? Because you just—I haven't you know, asked you one. You didn't ask me. No, if murder what was I malleable. said was, it seems you like didn't it. You asked me three times if murder was malleable. Well, no, what I said was, you just got done saying that it was not. But earlier, you said that the secular framework, everything is malleable, and in religion, it's not, which is a performative yeah, you contradiction. The if you would let me finish my answer to your question, but okay. you didn't. Go ahead and finish. Thank you. I would appreciate it. Yeah, obviously there are very strong moral. You're very upset, man. Like Calm down. Let's just have the combo. All right. If you're just gonna bait, I'm good. No, I'm not baiting. All right. If you're just <laughs> gonna bait, I'm good. <laughs> Kick no. me. That's fine. I'm I can just interrupt you when you can't interrupt He's me. So, so I'll mad, just finish dude. my point because that was like the fifth <laughs> interruption to that one question. <laughs> Can you be any more bad faith, dude? Let's Your watch interpretation him cope. of my claim that we don't have a Bible to follow is that we can change our minds on murder? That's what he said. That's how you took that point. Genuinely. No, he said it. Obviously, everything is there valuable. Are very strong claims that we are very unlikely to change our minds <laughs> on because it is very commonly understood that it is immoral and it causes a lot of harm. But there are things that are a little bit more in the gray area that we can argue ethically, which I think you would agree on. I would hope so about the education system, about um, people arguing when people can start drinking or when people can start driving or when we should issue IDs or when people should be given the right to vote or when people are smart enough to make certain decisions in life. Like these are things that are very malleable that we can argue. People are in. Yeah. If we're going to talk about murder, Cope. Um, you're a Cope. Christian. I'm assuming the world is just going to flip flop. 
That's what he said, though. And changed he said, their mind he about said murder, everything in atheism okay. is malleable. How many people um, still flip-flop and change their mind about capital punishment or about pulling the plug? These guys are fantastic Those are things that you consider arguing when you're not there, other person they? That are very strong moral claims that people would make under religion, but that is very malleable under secularism, that people could still argue um, with their faith or without and what make ethical claims about it. I haven't made a single religious argument. Haven't made. You shut up, you stupid. Wow. I like the pride pentagram, by the way. Thank you. Happy pride. Uh, Good afternoon. How are you? We're doing great. How are you doing? Good. Uh, Sorry. You you did actually say I need your name in the chat. That's why I put that. I'm so sorry. Yeah, no, no big deal. Um, so it, it looks like uh, Age of Pagan Magic. So I'll just be up front with you guys. Um, I'm an Orthodox Christian myself, and I was just kind of wondering what your worldview on this was. Your our worldview on uh, Orthodox Christianity? Uh, no, on uh, Pagan Magic. Yeah, so we're, we're all different, Kevin's. Pagan, Celtic is uh, Celtic pagan. Celtic pagan. <laughs> I am an eclectic pagan witch. I mean, we all have different views here, um, so you have to get a little bit more specific, really. Well, okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let I'm me... also I'm an herbalist, so uh, okay. Well, let me get let me get more specific. So I'd like to give you my best argument that I have against magic and see what you guys think about it. Um, okay. Okay, so. My understanding as to the way that magic works is that it's a pushing of your will. And with this pushing of your will, the universe will basically fulfill whatever your magical request is. Uh, There's variations thereof of how people view this. But if that is true, and you are then using your will, and the universe then controls other people to deliver to you things that you want, how are you not actually controlling other people's will? That's not how it works, though. Okay, how does it work? We don't... Okay, um, here's the thing. Magic in and of itself is neutral, all right? It is neither good nor bad. And all magic is, is learning how to work with the energies that are around us, the energies of the universe. And if we work with a pantheon, earning the respects of our, of our gods and goddesses so that they will agree to work with us to give our our wants an extra oomph. Here's the thing. Whenever we do a casting, we also have to do, which is like we write a spell or we make our wishes known to the universe. People do it in different ways. We have to do what is called acting in accord, which means I needed a place to live. And this is my own story, not anyone else's. I needed a place to live after I left my ex with my son, right? Okay, so my son and I then, um, while I'm in a hotel room and working seven days a week, and and my son is, is, is spending seven days a week with another woman that I love still to this day who charged me hardly anything at all because of my situation, I started doing, I started writing myself little, uh, little, uh, binding runes and whatnot, okay, in sigils. And I would carry them on me at all times. And and the sigil was basically, I need a safe place for my son and I to live, okay? So right after that, a wa- another waitress that I was friendly with offered me her basement, her entire finished basement, until I could find a place to live. And right after that, I was moved up the list for section eight even though it was a two year waiting list, I somehow got moved up and all of a sudden got a voucher that meant I could go rent my own place. Okay, but right this would that, um this would actually make my point. So no, wouldn't no, no, that, no, 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 because wouldn't that no, have affected because, the will of both your friend and then in the section no. eight housing situation, wouldn't somebody else have been affected in order for you to bump to the Do front of the line? Okay, hold on. Do you pray? Do you yes. pray for things? Do you pray for help with things? I don't pray do you... for things. No, I mean for help with things. Like, uh, like no, I don't I don't usually pray for help with things either. I, I pray in what are called affirmations. So I all I ever do is is thank 
the Lord. I don't I don't ask the Lord for things. No. Okay. Other people Fine. do. Do you consider that going against? Yeah, other but you're, wills? you're you're but you're not arguing with him. You're arguing with me. No, I'm saying, but other people do. Other people you know mm -hmm. do ask for things like, "Oh God, please, please let them be okay. Please let them be okay." Right? Mm -hmm. Oh God, please da 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 da. All I said was, and I wasn't specific, so no, I'm not going any, against anyone's wills. All I said was, I need a safe place to live. Yeah, I, I, under, I understand what you're saying, but think of it from my perspective here for just a second. So if your friend, let's say, ordinarily would not have offered you the finished basement or then the Section 8 housing, you would not ordinarily have been bumped up absent the efficacy of this magical spell then necessarily no, got, these people's wills would that. have to have been affected by your magical spell. How's that yeah. not slavery, essentially? That's not how... Okay, hold, you, on. That's hold, on. Not how that hold on. Hold on, hold on. Wow. Okay, hold on. What are you asking on if our magic goes against people's spiritual consent? Uh, well, I'm saying it, it has to necessarily affect their will. If they're going to do things they ordinarily would not do in order to get you something okay. that you want. Okay, so then that brings me to my next question. Um, Christians don't have free will. They have freedom of choice. Okay. Nobody has free will. Okay. So what? I don't understand how that contends with my argument. So my argument is, is that if you're doing a magical spell... And because you're, how can you're, you go against somebody's free will if well, they I'm don't gonna, have it? I'll explain. So, so nobody has. So, if nobody has free will, then does that mean that you should affect other people's wills for your own benefit? How can you affect someone's will when they don't have it? So, who? They have freedom of so, choice. They don't have freedom. Okay, of will. so you're affecting their choice then. Not directly. No. How are you not affecting because, it directly? Just if they... because they, just because we manifest something and give the energy to good karma and luck, mm -hmm. and it decides to play its game, does not mean it. It goes against anybody's freedom of choice or will. Well, let's we did just, not tell them. We well, did not me, direct them. Let me ask you this then, and, if, the, if that is true. Clarify. If first, you were to have a... On, first, wait, wait, wait. First, uh, please allow me to clarify. Sure. The only reason, the only reason why, okay, the reason why I got the basement was because she saw how hard I was working. She and I were already friendly, and she wanted to help me save up money. Then why did you need the magic? I, 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 because I needed something for me. I needed to put it out there in the universe that I needed a place to stay, a safe place to stay, not a hotel room that I had to pay for every night. So, and the reason why I got the voucher got moved up on the list was because unbeknownst to me, mm -hmm. my state had just started a, where you, if you fit a certain criteria, right? Single mother working, trying to go to school, you got moved up on the list. So then the magic because didn't work. You were already it did. Well, how could the magic have worked if you because have if you have natural explanations okay, for the Andrew, phenomenon? You're gonna either let, let her finish. sit here and explain it or you can drop my panel. Yeah, you didn't. Well, even I let mean I've only said a few story. words. Okay, I... but you need to stop interrupting and let her rebuttal. You didn't even let me finish the story. That right after I got the voucher, I found a I found a little condo which was right within my budget. Actually, it was a little less, and it was a three bedroom. I was in love with this place. I was in love with the roses, and I I called the woman. We met up. I looked at the place, and she said, "Well, right now there's someone else interested, but they seem kind of shady, so I'm not sure." And I looked her right in the face, and I said, "Well, if you can make a decision, just to let you know." I've got a little one. I've got a job right down the street. I've got, you know, I, I've got references and I've got this voucher, which guarantees you your money. And she was like, oh, so the voucher is what the, the voucher and me being a decent person and a hardworking person is what got me that place above it. What helped me was all the other was the setting it up so that it could happen. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I happened, I happened to need to go down that street that day for something completely different when I saw the for rent sign. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I, under, the, I understand the, what you're saying. The universe, the universe set it up so that all of these things could happen, right? Like you say, God does. God sets things up so that they well, can I don't, happen. Well, I didn't because say that, good though. Things happen, well, when good things happen, you all say thank God. Yeah, right? okay, but, 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 but here's the thing. I, what, I, what I'm curious about here is... Either no, you're, not you're either you're accusatory. Well, what am I accusing you of? 
You're accusing me of, of, of turning people into slaves. Well, no, I'm saying that either you you have to necessarily be affecting somebody's will through your magical spells, or the magical spells aren't working, and there's a natural explanation. I don't see how it could be. I don't see how it could be anything other than that. So, for instance, I'll give you an example. Let's assume I wanted. Let's assume. Let's assume I wanted a bike. I didn't interrupt you the entire time. Why? Why am I not allowed to give you an example? I I didn't. I didn't. I let your whole story go. I didn't interrupt you at all. So let's assume you wanted a bike, and uh, you did a bunch of spells to get a bike, and one day you went outside, and lo and behold, there was a bike that somebody brought you who ordinarily would not have brought that bike to you. They just brought it because the universe okay, Andrew, what is your point? told them what is your to. Point? My, point what is, is your point? my point is is that you're necessarily affecting people's will. No, your point will. is that you're trying to push your religious beliefs on by trying I to I haven't even I haven't said a word of like I haven't made a single religious argument. Haven't up. made You shut up, you okay. stupid Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's why we don't roll. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and for everybody in the comments, no this is an Orthodox <laughs> Christian, by the way. Wow, again, Christian uh, Yeah, love. Orthodox Christian. His complaint made no yeah. sense. You're Don't affecting people's will Christian by love. talking. You're affecting people's <laughs> will. Wow, what a jerk. <laughs> you said that people don't have freedom of will, they have freedom of choice. What do you, what do you mean by they don't have freedom of all in that case? <laughs> Okay, I better bail from that live stream. <laughs> uh, I better bail out. <laughs> better bail. Better bail. <laughs> I mean, they were going to kick me anyway. Might as well go out with a bang. <laughs> it's a magical prattle. <laughs> you got to bail. Go, go, go. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was funny. <laughs> wow. Who right. who would ever agree to go on willingly and say, oh, yeah, by the way, my chick gets plowed by other dudes and I just really like it because I want to make Brian some extra money. Does that even that doesn't even make sense, man. So what's going on with Bevo, Brian? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I was. Uh, yeah, the dude's a f liar. Um, he actually wasn't even scheduled to be on the show. We had his girlfriend scheduled to be on the show, and he came with her asking to be on the show. And initially, we told him no, and we actually turned him away because uh, he wasn't scheduled. And typically, you know, the panels are predominantly made of women. Sure. And then we had like one flake, like one no show or something. So we're like, all right, you know what? Whatever. We'll throw him on the show. Nick goes down, brings him up. We. He signs the release real quick, just jumps on. I don't even talk to him. There's, an, I don't even have a conversation with him. Nick goes down, brings him up. He signs the release. We get him seated at the table. Nick does all the pre-show stuff. And uh, we, me and him never even have a conversation before the show. We have security cameras throughout the whole <laughs> studio. Mm -hmm. I would imagine if I were to even release that, he would say, well, it wasn't Brian. It was Nick when he went down to get me. Nick was the one who... But he specifically said, said he had a conversation with you. Yeah, it never happened. Never even talked to the guy. I didn't say... I don't I don't think I said one word to him before the show. You, you've you seen me behind the scenes. I'm not really talking to people before yeah. the show. He also said that they were going to be paid. They were... There was no... Uh, there, there was no... Either for him or his girlfriend, there were no communications about them being paid. So... The whole thing's pretty weird. He's basically, I mean, it's basically defamation slander at this point to suggest that we are staging things for the show, which we've never done. Sure. So, well, I can it. say I'm with, gonna... um, I can say with 100% confidence that I have never been told, uh, even the guest roster. 
I've never even been told the guest roster. Um, just would you like to guest in on this day or that day, unless there was an actual formal debate. And then, then I was told that information. But other than that, I don't even get told what the guest roster is. Uh, I'm not aware of any conversations I've ever had with you about which way the panel should or should not go. Uh, I'm not aware of any of that. I've never seen any of that. And I've been in that studio many, many, many times. What, what do you think brought this on? Why is he, uh, fibbing? Because you do. You have cameras all around the studio, and uh, people are sitting at the table on the mics, and they're being recorded. So I, I don't know. Like, what's there to gain? This, it, this is clearly um, a fabrication to save face for some reason. Yeah, I mean, so there were a couple things. So I don't know if you were there earlier on in the stream, but maybe you were, but his girlfriend was like started playing with her boobs and he grabbed her boobs on the stream and I told him to stop because that could potentially be TOS mm -hmm. on YouTube or Twitch on the platforms. So that was kind of the first strike against them. Then actually, you noticed this while I was gone dealing with uh, kicking off Cindy, his girlfriend, uh, I think, what's her name? Sophia, I don't remember her name, started playing with her boobs. Even though we told her to stop, while I was gone dealing with that, and you actually very uh, kindly told her to cut it out yeah. because she was yeah. basically doing TOS. So she did it again, and then they left early. They made a f***ing mess. She was like eating some chocolate. This this wasn't on stream. She made a whole mess in our studio. She was dumping like chocolate crumbs everywhere. That's minor, though. That's not really the big thing. Uh, but the primary thing was... Well, it's a big thing for your she, OCD, you know, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. But then, anyway, yeah, so uh, I'm trying to remember. Oh, like, so we didn't put, so they left early. The guy admitted to coming on and trolling. He said, hey, this was a troll, Yeah, which is like, we don't want that on the show because honestly, like, it wasted, I don't know how much time we spent on talking to this guy about him being a cop, two hours maybe. It just wasted a whole bunch of time. I don't want people to come on the show and like make, I, I want people to tell the truth and give not make up stuff for content, but this guy's a fucking TikToker. His girlfriend's an OF chick. So that's the thing with a lot of these OF girls. Sometimes they bend the truth a little bit. They'll fucking lie, exaggerate. Um, but so I was pissed off at him after the show. And uh, they were asking me to put them in the description. I'm like, you guys left early. You, admitted to coming on the show and trolling i'm not going to promote and your girlfriend was trying to do some tos violation shit. uh so i was like we're not gonna we're not gonna promote you guys you guys how are you gonna come on a show admit to intentionally coming on to troll and expect us to be like okay well we're gonna provide promotional consideration for you so it's like Fuck you i'm not gonna promote your shit. and i blocked the guy um and so uh i think he's butthurt because they came from L.A. to, you know, they were already in L.A. They drove to Santa Barbara to come be on the show. They didn't get the promotion they were expecting, even though they came on to troll. And uh, so uh, I think he's just basically revenge. Yeah, he's revenge. Pure, pure, unadulterated revenge, right? So is yeah. it also possible that they weren't trolling? Because here's the thing. It was really bizarre to me that he seemed highly invested in the narrative to the point that he would get that upset about being challenged on it. And then it was only as he got up to kind of um, self-righteously leave that he came back and said, oh, you know, by the way, I was just funning about this entire thing. But if your girlfriend is on OnlyFans and she is doing that type of content with men, how's that not an open relationship anyway? The whole thing is really bizarre, and it seems like it's face saving rather than a um, like a, a truth statement. He said in the video he's in a closed relationship. Yet his girl does OnlyFans. It doesn't seem like a closed relationship. Huh. Yeah, I mean that that also crossed my mind. Is he in an effort to save face? He, uh, I don't know. He, oh, I'm just kidding about yeah being a cop 
So yeah, I'm just funning. So, but you, but for sure, you had no. Um, and I, I said this the second I was watching that stream. Yeah, f-ing right. Uh, Brian never said that to him. But you are are adamantly stating, of course, you never you never told him to pretend to be a cuck on the show for views. That never happened, right? Never happened. Okay, so he's lying never. through his teeth. Yeah, he's he's absolutely lying. I'm gonna go through the security camera footage, uh, and uh, sometimes it can be a bit spotty, but I'm yeah. gonna pull it. And I mean, if my recollection serves me correctly, I mean, I do these shows twice a week well you're always running around like a chicken with your head cut off you're setting up cameras you're you barely have time to talk to anybody um because of how much you're kind of doing the behind the scenes work getting everything moving it it seems difficult uh for me to believe that you had some type of prefabricated arrangement with bevo the cuck to make him pretend to be a cuck on the show uh for the purpose of views and by the way there's other problems with this too. Like, here's a problem: who the f- would ever agree to that? Who right. who would ever agree to go on willingly and say, "Oh yeah, by the way, my chick gets plowed by other dudes, and I just really like it because I want to make Brian some extra money." Does that even that doesn't even make sense, man? It it doesn't make any sense. Um, and I'm trying to think here. I'm looking, I'm trying to actually find the uh, original messages because he actually, in the message to me, he admits that, let me, I'm trying to find it. I blocked him. So it's, (laughs) it's hard, but I mean, here's the other thing, right? I mean, if, if my intention was to ever, cause I, I take it very seriously. Like I've had girls reach out and be like, can I come on and do a skit? And I always tell them, no, because we want everything to be, even if it's a boring show, we don't want any sort of staging or anything like that, because it would totally destroy any sort of, you know, people would question, is this real? Is this fake? And that's why we'll have, you know, I mean, no offense to the girls from yesterday. uh, The show was kind of dull and we had a big guest. We had Rachel. If I like, if I wanted to just, be purely pushing out like the most controversial content. Like one, I could think of better stuff than him just being a cuck. If we really wanted to stage, like we could stage and we would be doing it every show and we would like have the most crazy and we'd be kicking girls off every single show. So, um, well, I mean, you, you ran a pranks channel for years and there is a bit of setup and things like that with that. So, I mean, if you wanted to, you could do that. You just don't, right? That's the, That defeats the whole purpose, doesn't it? Right, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if, if we wanted to, we could. We could be having girls, like, you know, having girls throw tantrums every show. And But, you know, we have dull moments of the podcast. We have dull episodes. We have lackluster guests. If we really, if we really wanted to stage, then we could trust me, we could stage and I could think of some much more interesting things to do. But this absolute twat is uh, basically just trying to slander and defame us because Um, because he got humiliated. I mean, that's what happened, right? He 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 got humiliated. And uh, because of that, he's coping. And part of that cope is to move the direction of responsibility from him to you. Um, right. It's also equally possible that he came up with this entire insane thing himself. He said, we'll go on and we'll troll as like, um, you know, a cut couple. And um, this will make us some viral clips. And then when that ended up not working out very well for him, uh, then he decided to shift that from that was my idea to know this was all Brian's idea. Very, very bizarre um, that somebody for free would drive out to Los Angeles and pretend to be a cuck um, because you asked him really nicely to. That just makes no f- sense to me at all. That's um, And I'd like to see some evidence that that is true. And uh, has he provided any evidence at all that that's true? About about you involved. approaching him and, and telling him he no. needed to no, no, he would think that there would be something, but of course, 
in in this narrative, the way that the narrative is set up, oh, I can't prove it, but that's what really happened, right? So there's nothing that anybody can do about it, right? It's just an accusation, absent evidence. But I doubt he realized that the entire studio is wired up. But now he's stuck with the story of before the show, Brian told me to do X. Uh, yeah, I would release the studio footage and make him look like a fool. I can give you the stats. I can give you the stats right now. Andrew, I don't care. You don't Andrew, care about facts, I know. I, Andrew, I am a stabled woman. Did you need me to answer to the prompt? Uh, age first, um, and yes, please. It, yeah, it, um, I'm, yes no. so I'm 40 years old. The answer is no. Okay. Yeah. So, on that so I can, yeah, I can give you my reasoning here. Um, no, I think it's totally appropriate to, to date women who are younger. So, uh, my reasoning is two, two pronged. Uh, my first reason is that I believe that most of this comes from a place of jealousy from older women towards younger women, that they feel very, very threatened by younger women getting a lot of male attention. And as they get older, they don't get as much of that attention. And then the second argument that I have is that to date, I have not actually heard a single argument from a woman for why it would actually be immoral for a 40-year-old to marry a 21-year-old if both of them decide to do it. Okay, so Andrew, can 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 we just rewind it a little bit more? Sure. Um, okay, so you use the word jealous. Mm -hmm. and let's dissect that. Sure. You said that older women are jealous of younger women because they get more attention. Nope, nope. Hang on. Let me let me clarify so that you understand. Yeah. I think that the older women specifically who uh, kind of focus on this as being some kind of problem because they believe there's exploitation going on. I think that that is actually a mass. They don't really care about exploitation. They're upset because younger women are getting way more male attention in the demographic that they would normally be going for. Now, do, and this is based on what? Well, this is an observation I've uh, I've had after talking with hundreds of women uh, on programs like this, where we discuss these issues, and they can't actually give me an moral argument. They just end up saying, "Well, they just think it's icky." But then when we kind of dive down, we find out that well, there's actually a lot of attention that younger women get. And they feel quite threatened by that attention because they're after the 40 year old men's men because that's in the age bracket that they're in. Okay. So I think you're under the impression that, as most, because a lot of people are coming in here and assuming, making an assumption. And when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of yourself. This comment right here came from a man. Mm -hmm. This is not nothing that a jealous older woman came up with. Not at all. Not That's at a all. man's opinion. Yeah, but why would that why would why would that matter? Okay, because because you stated that we're jealous, so this is why I'm bringing it no, back. No, I didn't say you were anything. This is what you're saying. That's what this, you what said. You said. this is the narrative you stated. <laughs> no, I so. so I'm speaking directly to regardless of which sex made the argument. It doesn't really okay. matter. But it, it does matter because you have this narrative or mm -hmm. or understanding that older women are jealous of younger women but what makes you think that the that's not my argument women, though that's only part of it can you tell you can you tell me the rest of the argument what makes you think okay mm -hmm. that what what is the assumption because the younger women are getting attention <laughs> that's why we're we're jealous no so i'll tell you again so that they want the 40 year old yeah. men that are accessible of shit right now like what what part are we jealous about yes yeah, so i'll tell because you attention because attention i do get attention so i don't understand why any woman yeah but you don't get more attention than younger beautiful women every woman is beautiful so every woman is going to get some type of attention i want to understand like where does the jealousy part come in <laughs> well i'll explain it so so unless you can give an actual moral argument for why it would be morally incorrect for a 21 year old woman who wanted to marry a 40 year old man not to why you'd say that's immoral that shouldn't happen they ought not do it then the only objection you can have to it is ick so what causes the ick well the ick is because younger women tend to get more attention 
uh, from the age demographic that older women are interested in. You're still not explaining what are we jealous about? Well, here, so so let's so well, I guess we can take it we can take it a piece at a time. So we'll start with the last part first, so you understand. Yeah. So, can Andrew, you give Andrew. a single moral objection, an no. actual moral Andrew, objection to why it's wrong? That and you go into the moral again. Explain your reasoning why you came in here, and your first statement was. Women in their 40s are jealous of 20 year olds. No, the argument that's is the question. that's Don't not the argument. I won't pull it to morals. I'll answer directly to it. Mm -hmm. it yeah, it's, I won't it's pull it to morals. Wrong. Okay, so I won't. It's well, okay, I'd like to hear speak, justification speak for that. But yeah, jealousy. okay, fine. So we'll speak to that first. My argument actually was not that 40 year old women are jealous of younger women. That's what My argument specifically was that women who object. To age gap relationships, they're generally jealous of younger mm -hmm. women. That's the argument. You keep leaving that part out for convenience. No, hold on. Okay, so I'm I'm in my forties. I have a twenty four year old daughter. I have a twenty one year old daughter. Mm -hmm. And in no way, shape, or form will I allow or be okay mm -hmm. with my child, my girls, dating a man in their 40s because one and, and i'm not saying all men you know not saying that there's not 40 year old men that can't take care of a 25 year old i'm not saying that morally it's wrong okay man, so it, now we can dive into this finish. oh sure let sure 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 i didn't mean to cut you i'm giving you a reason now let me finish go ahead my daughter is 24. my other daughter's 21. my kid's father is rest his soul was in his 40s when he passed i would not want my daughters dating someone their father's age because you guys don't have nothing in common yeah but that's not a moral argument but morally it's wrong yeah but but that's an assertion you have to actually give me a moral okay. argument do you have children? okay do you have children? hold on andrew do you have children yes do you have children yes how old are your you children do? Uh, my How oldest, old my oldest is twenty three, and my youngest, I think, is uh, fifteen. You think okay. is fifteen? Yeah, I can't remember. Okay. She might be fourteen. You know, like I, I've got a lot of kids. Okay. All right, all right, okay. Andrew, time out, time out, Andrew. Um, so you said you're single or you're married? I'm married. Okay. Um, if you were not married and you were 40, mm -hmm. you're okay with dating a 20 year old, you're yeah. on basically. Yep. Right? All right. I can't so, see a single um, moral argument that's ever been made against it. I can't think of a single one. Okay. So, um, what is your reasoning as to why you would even entertain a, a 21 year old? And again, we're not putting religion, morals, or anything like that. It's a simple fucking question. Because she loves me and I love her. Because she loves me and I love her. That's why. Okay. So what makes you think, again, this is a question I've been asking all of you men. What makes you think that a 21-year-old wants to waste her youth on your old ass? But assuming that she did, <laughs> assuming that she was 21 and did, what would be the objection okay. to that? What, what, What's the objection if she did? Okay. Well, if there's no objection, then it's not a moral. It's not a problem. It's not then it's a not a problem. <laughs> so once again, <laughs> nobody has said anything about bashing any women dating old ass men. Nobody has said that. Narrative. No, she did. She said that it's okay. immoral. Her, she literally she said just said it's immoral. Yeah. No, she I literally said just said it's immoral. You need to listen. She. I that's literally what she said. What I, first of all, the morals are you as a parent. That's, mm -hmm. that's not what morals are. You as a parent you as can make parent, immoral decisions all the time. If your child was in that age gap of a 21 and you come home with a 24 year old, you what does that look for you? And the way your child looks at you. What does that have to do oh, with the uh, with the option of a man who's 40 marrying a 21? What does that year have old? to do with the uh, with the option of a man who look, look, look. Andrew. So hold on one second. How, how old I don't are, even uh, get like, to talk to him. Anybody like, else want to get cut the because that's the type of time I'm on. Hold on, <laughs> <Nina>. <laughs> be arguing with nobody back and forth 
and with morals and religion and all that extra stuff because everybody don't believe in the same thing, okay? But do you need to have some morals with your children as a parent? Yes, you do. You're not going to tell me otherwise, okay? I will argue that argument with anybody. You as a parent need to have some goddamn morals for your children, okay? Especially I wanted... if you have a 21-year-old and you're do- dating a 24-year-old. Like, you're not trying to change the narrative. You're just being like, I'm a man and I can Like, shut up. Hello, for everybody I, that's I, in the comments saying that she's triggered, this has nothing to do with being triggered. Do with it was completely it off topic. It was completely mouth. off topic, <laughs> and this is not the first person that have that has come on this panel and has said something that had nothing to do with the question. Now, Gee, being was- that being that you've got multiple women on this panel that are over <laughs> forty, and I'm guessing that most of us choose to be single. Because the men that we do date are the <laughs> options that we do have. But to come on this panel and say that the reason being is that we we don't agree with men dating younger women is because older women are so jealous because they get more attention than we do. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what kind of women most of you deal with, but this is not a panel full of pick me bitches. You understand what I'm saying? So when you're dealing with pick me <laughs> animals that that are, are thirsty for attention, that's not what this is. This ain't that. Okay? Now I've heard of him before and he's a great debater or whatever the case may be, but we don't run disrespect on this panel. So what you're not gonna do is come up here and try to, to change the narrative. The question is, as a forty plus year old man. Would you date a woman half your age? That's the question. There's no other, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Would you date a younger woman? That's it. Okay. That is it. When the, when the, when the, who are 40 plus who date younger women, because I'm 28 years old. And right. um, if to, to me, men who are 40 who are date uh, younger women, I wouldn't necessarily say that they're weak. I understand why they do it. I don't know if I would do it or not because I'm nowhere near close at age. And it's been it's been almost alarming to me. It's been almost alarming to me. (laughs) Y'all bring Andrew back up because I wanted to talk to him. Yeah. Well, first of all, first of all, Uh -uh. um, I feel like most of the people that we be bringing up here been mad disrespectful. So right now, I need a timeout. So so, uh, I don't. I really don't care about the views right now because people are so intertwined on on fucking (laughs) answering the shit with. Morality, so spiritual, uh, Bibleness, like everybody don't believe in that. People I wanted to, add, I wanted to get into his. He asked two, he asked three questions, and I hate to break it to you, ladies. Nobody answered his question. That's questions. right. So I wanted to answer his question. Answer it, Sabrosa. He can sit where right he answer, is. You can answer. Uh, it. How can you answer a question with a motherfucker that's shouting? I'm not about to have him come up here shouting. All right. So if, if, if he could come up, but I'm not about to do this shouting match back and forth. It, uh, it, a cause of the debate. This ain't a debate. This was a simple, a simple question. We're not gonna go here with the hooping and hollering back and forth. Right. The problem is, is that they're coming in here and they're being disrespectful. Like right. his first statement was, "You women, you older women, are jealous." Because of the younger no, that's not you, what he, he said. Say listen to me, listen, listen to me. Yeah. I was listening. Listen, guys, please. I've been quiet for a really long time. I've been listening to everybody speak for a really long time. Let me cook. Andrew came up here and he asked a series of questions. He he said it, women in their 40s, he can't come to any other conclusion. He said he hasn't come up with nobody has come up with a moral argument as to why women in their 40s um he he's come to the conclusion that they're jealous of younger women and he said that he hasn't came nobody has came with a moral argument but and then, he don't yeah, got actual facts okay right. but nobody nobody and like nobody got into those questions is they what can't. i'm nobody saying nobody could even get into it because he was as i was trying to speak my piece kept cutting me off nina tried to jump in he did the same with her First you of all, 
it ain't about triggered. Once again, this is my damn page. This is my life. You are here on my life. So if you do not like it, you guys can actually go to another life. It's and simple it's that. Just because you know, a person when I get triggered, I get triggered by people being disrespectful. And I don't have to allow it on my panel. Hey, Nina, what did he say that was disrespectful? I was and hollering in the shouting match. You what guys was... don't understand that. Then that's okay. You can drop down the exit. <laughs> I'm not about to be bringing up more people, and the next three people that I bring up is going to be disrespectful and shooting and shouting. I'm not going to deal with that respectfully. I don't understand how adults can't understand what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> Andrew could definitely come back, but Andrew, we're we going to have a civilized conversation, Andrew. Okay. So, and thank you for bringing me back. I was not trying uh, to be disrespectful. I was. Um, you can you can understand when it's very contentious that that may be how it seems. I certainly don't mean to be disrespectful. Um, so thanks for bringing me back up. It's much appreciated, but Sabros, I actually wanted to answer your questions. Yeah. So, I, so oh, the hi, question hi, is, I um, hi, I haven't actually heard an, a real moral argument against an age gap relationship. So uh, all I can ever get out of uh, the women that I talk to is ick. I, they just think it's icky, which is fine. You can think it's just icky, but that's not a moral argument. And that's that's all why right, I come so to the conclusion that I feel like um, the, the people who object to this uh, mostly object to it because they're not getting the the attention from that younger women are getting and so they're uh they're they're maybe a bit miffed or jealous well i don't okay all right so I, i'm gonna get into this with you but i'm 32 just to add some context so i'm in my 30s i'm 32 and i don't necessarily i'm not um totally opposed to it like i mind my business but it's not an ick for me it's more so of <laughs> How do I put this? It's more so of a man and the thought of a man, the like the mental manipulation and the the way that men rather um, date someone that's less experienced or has less um, just knowledge of relationships, knowledge of the world, knowledge of how things work. And sure. it, that's really what I feel like women talk about it maybe as an ache, like, oh, it's a turn off. It's an ache. It's like, mm -hmm. it's, it's unattractive maybe because they don't know how to elaborate that. It's more of like, I feel the men, women are coming from the space of like, it's, it's more of a mental manipulation that men, they'd rather deal with somebody that's naive versus a person that has more experience is more established knows what they want in the world and it's more of a disappointment and i feel like women don't want to vocalize that they don't want to say that you know um that they're disappointed or that you know oh maybe i made the wrong decisions when i was younger and now oh you know, I'm kind of stuck with this demographic of men to date. And you, I'm in my 30s and I'm single sure. and I don't have children. But that that really so doesn't, feel, um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. So I feel like the argument is more so that it's more of a, because we're emotional creatures, so it's more like how we feel. So I guess it's more like we're feeling for the women. We're like, uh, they, but, they but have you would agree, to um, do better. You would agree that any... What, what the heck? We got now, somebody's bleeding through their mic real know, bad. Kind of you're not echoing. Uh, somebody, your uh, brother, brother Jose has to mute himself. He's, he's bleeding through. There you go. Uh, yeah. So to to dive into this, though, you would agree that any relationship where there was manipulation would be bad. So that really has nothing to do with an age gap. Just any relationship where there was manipulation would be bad, regardless of their age. Well, so hang on. Hang on. Let me finish have... the argument. Hang okay, on. My turn. Ahead, Let me finish the argument. So, yeah, um, any any relationship. So I'm specifically looking at if you could see into a person's heart and know that a 40 year old man loved a 21 year old woman and she loved him back. You, you got to mute yourself, dude. Um, why? Why would that actually be immoral?
it's not immoral. It's more. It's more of like right. Why is immoral. that men's? It's not immoral. I mean, I'm gonna be honest. It's not immoral. Right. It's just more of um. Yeah, it gives you the ick. It gives us the ick. It, it's not. It's not. It the gives ick. you the it's ick. Come the on, ick. it does. It, gives, it does. It gives it you the gives ick. It, it gives, it, me the, it gives me the ick, but it's just not okay, too. It's not okay. Like, it's just not, you know, it's just not. It gives so you the ick. So, on, so hang on. on. So, because it gives you the oh, ick. We've been those because young women because we've been those young women you before. Keep so, saying, you don't know because you're a man. Right. No, no, I get it. I get it. But it just gives you the ick. Us, That's, hold on. Can oh, I sorry. Speak? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I'm sorry. Can I speak, Andrew, please? Sure, sure. More than that. You keep saying that there's not morally wrong. Yeah. But it yeah. is. Prove because it. a 25 year old mind frame mm -hmm. is not developed enough for a growing. I, I, I think the question would be is well, then why if that's the case, so yeah, 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 let her finish her argument. Can you guys let her finish real yeah. quick, please? So, you guys are going for these younger women because they're more vulnerable. I'm not saying, and, and to the younger women that are in the comments. I'm not saying that you guys are vulnerable, but at your age, and not all of them, because there are some mature ones, the majority of the women at the ages of 20 to 29 are not mentally, how can I put this? <laughs> Equipped to have that relationship? So, yeah, it's more like a manipulation sure. thing. Then why do you let them vote? Then, then why do you want to let them vote? I'm saying it's more yeah, of a we don't talk about politics. politics. Uh, I think we're getting uh, no, no. It's not. It's no, not a sidetrack. Hang on. It's just. It's just the, testing the logic. So what I'm saying is, is that if if you don't believe that these women are mentally equipped to have a relationship, why do we let them participate in society as adults? That makes no I'm sense. I'm not going to. I don't think it's. It, they're mentally equipped to have a relationship with a man who's 20 years older than them. But they're equipped right. to participate in running a nation. Isn't that up to the individual though? Like, yeah. It really, it, 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 that's if up to you the look two in people. the comments, if you look in the comments, every twenty-five-year-old woman on here that is dating a forty-year-old man is stating the only reason why they're doing it is for financial security. They're not. The so they they're not allowed to make that choice. Own. Yeah, they're they're more than welcome to. Then what's immoral well, about it? You guys to yeah. take advantage of a younger girl. Is the that, moral? How's that? No, a, how's that taking that's, advantage? That's, Hang on, she's taking advantage of him. That's the currency right there. That's the currency exchange. She so she's taking advantage of of him for his money. Like like the dude said earlier. Remember, he said it's basically an exchange, a meal for a, a meal for. A, yeah, no, like, it's, it's, it's not a. F it's it's. Men, it's just that, that's just the way that he explained no, it. I don't listen, want you to get out of pocket. That's just the way that he explained exactly it. What he but said. she's being honest. Like all the women in the comments are saying, you know, don't be jealous, ladies. The only reason that we really go for them is because they are, you know, stable money wise. But then what happens? The I've same reason you go for them. Question, but the, I, well, I don't. But you know, know the question how old that i want you guys to... date like how old are like how's the what what's the but, but if i'm just saying 40 year old women are going after men for the same thing they want stability no, so they not. yes no, they not. still they, they that's they the number are. one reason to all women so hold on because i did add in some new people in here that i want to give them the opportunity to say something but again um those are not facts. They are facts. I can give them to you right no, now. They're not. No, they're not. I can prove it because there's polling Andrew, done. There's polling done Andrew, where they're asked this question. Andrew, you cannot put all women in Stop that being so triggered. Andrew. Calm down. Let's just no, talk. You can't. You can't help. You're going to spurt. Listen, you're going to spurt. Listen, listen, you're not going to tell me. What yeah, I know you're going to do. spurt. Don't tell me to calm down. You're I'm a strong so. woman. Just calm down. You cannot put all women in that category. Okay, Andrew. calm down. Listen to what I'm no, saying. I can I'm give not. you the stats. I can give you the stats no. right now. Andrew, I don't care. You don't Andrew, care about facts, I know. I, Andrew, I am a stabled woman. I don't need right. a man in for his funds. I would say let's focus so on the conversation, You're not going to give me a statistic. I can't give you're you a statistic. all women in their 40s. I didn't say all. Well, that would be a monolith. Andrew. Oh, my goodness. Andrew, Andrew. Andrew, That's exactly what you said. Andrew. No, it's not what I said. I'm talking in generality, so I'm saying. This is not all about 
you okay, go and give other people on, a chance Andrew. to speak, man? Because there's four Stop women crying, in this dude. Calm down. Stop crying. Stop, stop crying. stop crying, dude. Stop crying. You're good. Stop crying. Are you, dude, stop crying. Aren't these strong women? Aren't these strong women trying to talk? That's why I'm here. Is to cry? We can't talk. Now you're being condescending. Now you're being condescending. You're condescending and you're gaslighting. You're being oh, condescending. Oh, you're <laughs> condescending and you're gaslighting. And first of all, my name is Freedom. I'm coming in here now because what he did was gaslight. He did. When someone says someone is mentally naive, that does not mean they are mentally naive in all categories of life. So therefore, yeah, they, they should still be able to vote. That's gaslighting. That is not mutually exclusive. That is not applicable. 